It's almost more for the bot than anything, but... Now, if I was playing adventure mode, then, um... I would be in adventure mode. Also, why do people keep calling it adventure mod? I will never understand that. It's M-O-D-E, not M-O-D. Oh, that's that's not good. I can't end well, Bastet. It's funny because the first time Chatter's the one throwing shade. That's kind of an ironic thing, I don't know. Hi, YouTube. There you go, Clockworks. I'm wondering if your human's gonna show up again. That's something that very much can, like, has me curious if uh, the named human who never actually joined the fort will show up. All right, skip tutorial. We don't need none of that. Choose origin of civil civilization. The Emerald Irons. All right, well, Queen is still the same Queen, so that's good. Um, the fortress is still here, so that's also good. Um, I want to, I want to be in the same general vicinity, I think, because you know there, there is, you know, these, these areas here. Um, this area, okay, we got untamed wilds. There's absolutely no usable metals. Okay, silver and copper. What about down here? Oh, the shrublands. Iron, silver, copper, as well as flux. Iron flux. I know that there is, like, you know, stuff like this, right? Oh, that's just got gold. Well, that's not very useful. Hmm. Oh, that's funny. There's a kobold site. Two days travel to the east. It's a goblin fort. Did the kobolds take something over? Two days travel to the east. A speck of dust on my monitor. What could they have taken over? It's not the tomb. It's not the human hamlet. Hmm. They must have taken something over. There's also like these kinds of areas, like these very weirdly secluded. Like this whole area just is kind of neat to me. It's like this really big kind of valley thing. I'm always like intrigued when there's just a big valley. In cave could be. Yeah. Probably is actually. Okay, so white sharks is a really good name for a brook. White sharks, the brook of white sharks. What do we have up here? Could also just do more of this same joyous wilds. Ben, thank you very much for the 13th month. And just to Drago, by the way, thanks for the brand new prime. I missed that one. Oh, I see, because they popped 13. up at exactly the same time. <laughs> That'd be why. Um, and also thank you to Black Plump and Imperial Phoenix for the primes at the exact same time. It's prime o'clock, apparently. These subs are all prime numbers. <laughs> Somebody logged into all of their ults and made a bunch of free trials. <laughs> but uh, jokes aside, thank, thank you very much. It's a cute little freshwater lake. Temperate woodlands and temperate woodlands. Wait, are the elves hostile now too? Oh, I see. They're hostile now at war. I get it. Crypt beer. Moose Moose, thanks for the 15th month. I'm doing all right, Russ. We're just starting up a, uh, a a new fortress. Just trying to decide where to go. Ooh. This is Sparta! Hmm. This is kind of a neat spot. I haven't been on just a sand desert in a while. I mean, there is scarce tree coverage here too. Those are just temperate grasslands. What's this? This is a only si okay. Cuz the this mountain range has iron, silver, copper. Hmm. 
by the 50-something zombies charging at your fort. I think you already answered that three question. And eight of your best month. Death Sokan, thanks for the three bucks. Thanks for the 38th month. Damn jalopy. It's like a goddamn long time, man. I mean, so my problem with this, the adorable desert. <laughs> Neurokeys, thanks for the two bucks. My problem with the adorable desert here is that it has no metal at all. So, that is a bit problematic. Um, we could go partially onto the mountain where it has iron, silver, and copper. So I could do something like this. Sand weapon traps for the win. You mean metal, like glass weapon traps for the win? I'm just going to um, do a thing real quick. All right, that is an ugly as hell embark. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, you know, uh, let's just look at how it looks. Nah, that's that's, that's ugly as all hell. Ugh. And this is why you check first. <laughs> looks like moldy bread. Ugh. Did they make a change to where creatures? You had a goblin where a chameleon just uh, watched an elf play when transformation. Sounds like they were a visitor. Visitors do that sometimes. And usually don't realize that they're a were creature unless something aggros them. Because they're not attacking your fortress. So no, it's it's been like that as long as I can remember at least. Person who named it the Adorable Desert. It's probably an elf. Probably had levels in the comedian skill. Yeah, true. Getting chased by bat men. Any nightmare forests? I don't. I don't really want to play on a haunted biome. I, I realize people think haunted biomes are fun. I'm not one of those people. Like I will if an area very much intrigues me, but it's not a priority. The area has to intrigue me. Trading for bits of metal, but you have to agree that that's one of the ugliest maps you've seen in a minute. Yeah, no, I mean, it has to not be ugly looking. If I, if I don't want to look at it, I certainly don't want to play it. The Rack of Lobsters is still just a funny faction name to me. I mean, like, if we want to do a desert, there are other deserts here. Like, there's, like, this, right? There's this whole area, which is also, like, this one's largely wilderness. This one is all untamed wilds if we wanted to just do a desert. But uh, thank you very much for that little hype train. Six dollars in bits and uh, six gift subscriptions, or six subscriptions total. Not necessarily gifts, but... How long do I usually stick with one world? This is an unanswerable question. <laughs> there is no consistency. Sometimes it's multiple years of real time, and sometimes it's one fort. <laughs> I... <laughs> this one I'm planning on sticking with for a while. Because the game is better if you stick with the world for a while. This one's got silver tin and lead, lead which I can work with. Um, it needs to have some metal. If it has nothing, I kind of want to see what this area is like. Is there any elevation here? No, it's all flat. Okay, duh. Let's see what this looks like. The, the problem is, is like, if I'm going to settle on a sand desert, I want one of those like, no trees sand deserts. And these ones are all like scarce, which means they're likely going to look like the last one. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, ooh, the, actually, I quite like the way the red sand looks. That is a ginormous tree. The, th the thing is, if you're going to make a world to sink 100 hours in, wait until the next patch comes out, or do it on the experimental branch, 
because there is some issues with the current version that make goblins really, 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 really weak. And that's going to be fixed in the next patch, which hopefully will be out in the next week. So do one of two things. Either jump up to the experimental branch, generate a world, and then go back to the current one. Or wait. For as long as necessary at the time. Yeah, I think it's probably act exactly as long as I want to <laughs> is actually how long I keep worlds alive. Weak. Well, I mean, weak equals boring usually, right? Because weak means they attack you for not a very long period of time and then stop attacking you pretty quick. Generate and jump back. Quit without saving. It's everybody's best friend. I mean, you could just keep playing on experimental. And then just go back to the, um, what's the, what, what's the word? You, you could play on experimental and then go back to the main branch after the fact. So you could absolutely do that, yeah. There is quite a few deserts here. I'm just kind of, see, this is what you want. If you want a desert, you want no trees. Also, this is quite the location. Guys, if we want to do a desert, we, we could do a desert. And it's certainly close enough to my home faction, which is like largely right here, with the same sieve and everything. Because you want no trees. Because when, here, let, let, let me just show you what I mean. Oh, there's actually some elevation here, too. I like right here. Play now. Oh, I don't care about no wood. No wood is a non-issue. All right, that could do it. We could work with this. Yeah, no wood isn't an issue. I know what I'm doing, so... No wood is not even remotely an issue. I could work with this. I could work with this. Absolutely could work with this. That's a little bit jaggy for me, but... Yeah, because, like, white sand's a little hard on the eyes. Yellow sand just, bleh, kind of looks like piss. But red sand has a really nice color to it, and there's some laminate right there. It's got a cute little waterfall. Uh, you can't, because they don't consider minecarts pathing. Minecarts are, are a way... They're like a wheelbarrow. It's a way to transport items. They are not a way to transport dwarves. How do you deal with no wood? You dig to the caverns and chop down wood <laughs> because there's wood in the caverns. Or you import it. Yeah, those are your two options. But yeah, no wood is a non-issue for me. It's like, I understand why, like the last fort we did, we started with no seeds, no anvil and no food. And we were fine. I mean, as long as you have like five beds, that's not really an issue. Ben, thanks for checking out another gift. Appreciate you, mate. I mean, hope that there isn't a welcoming party waiting for you in the caverns. That doesn't really happen because cavern creatures on the first cavern layer aren't really an issue. And the things that attack you in the caverns don't start attacking you in the caverns until you start chopping down trees and causing issues for a consistently long period of time in the caverns. So I don't consider the cavern creatures to be a threat in that way. I mean, maybe you do, but I don't. So that was right here. There's also like this spot right here. Let's try this little spot. This also has, this is also untamed wilds, um, iron, copper, silver, lead, nothing on the surface, just sand. How often do I use minecarts for goods transportation? Most forts. Okay, that's not as exciting. It's just kind of a more normal valley. Still looks nice, but I think I like the other one more. Why do I keep clicking the top one? I'm 
But yeah, I'm kind of just leaning Untamed Wild's big animals right now. I, I don't really feel like dealing with zombies. I can, I really have like space in my mental capacity for like a haunted fort maybe every six months. <laughs> and it's like, we did one, we did two in October. And I'm still kind of like, I don't want to do another one yet. <laughs> We're getting there. We'll do one soonish. Yeah, if you're a party of seven dwarves just trying to get wood, yeah, no, you're not going to have issue with things in the caverns. It's just a, a non-problem. All right, I think we found our spot, chat. So the only other area that I could possibly look at would be like around here or like these areas. But that one has platinum. Okay. Do we look at the platinum area? <laughs> Iron, copper, silver, platinum. Oh, uh, never mind. It's, I, I, I don't want to do it. And the reason I don't want to do it is it's scarce. If it's scarce, I don't want it. I don't want scarce trees and vegetation because those are so ugly. Also scarce. This area down here is all none. Just looking at materials and seeing what else is around. Oh wow, there's actually a heavy aquifer down there? Damn. I don't see those very often. Alright, so I guess like right here is the spot with the this elevation shift right here. So basically. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize this. this elevation shift here? That that is a heavy aquifer. So that would be a pain in the ass to get through. That's weird to see a heavy aquifer on a desert, though. Where does it start and end? It's like down here, basically. Any elevation drops down here? There's an elevation drop right there. Which is right... Hmm. Wow. I found a cache from Dune. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that, though. <laughs> They're just really annoying to dig through. Would I ever do a heavy aquifer embark? Mate, I only did heavy aquifer embarks for like 10 years, and then they nerfed them out of the game, and I was so happy, and I kind of never want to go back. <laughs> Do I know when DF needs sandworms? I'd be okay with... Well, I mean... Hold on. Let me double check something. There are not giant worms in Dwarf Fortress. There are, however, giant magpies. What? Um, chat room, can I, uh, can I get an exclamation point enter in the uh, Twitch chat over here? Because uh, Moose Moose is giving away five vile force of mugs. Five of them. Five whole mugs. You would like a chance to win a vile force of mug. Type an exclamation point enter into the chat. So yeah, I don't really want to do the heavy aquifer, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, I mean, I, I could, but... Well, let's just peek around and see what else we have. Just what else we have as options. Because that was that other spot that I embarked on temporarily. As long as it's none and none, I could do just about anywhere around here. So let's look at this. Ooh, that could be interesting, actually. Just curious to see what this looks like. Giant worm burrowing through your fortress? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think they'd be burrowing in and out. 
You know, I don't mind like a tiny bit of this in here. That looks okay. And this is a nice elevation gain. Let's just unpause the game for a second. I love how it starts in autumn, actually. That's really annoying. What animals are here? Creatures is what I want. Other oh, giant sparrows. Oh boy. <laughs> it's always birds. Why is it always birds? It is kind of pretty. Um, so scrolling up, uh, Ryan Katsu, Jangles, uh, Andy Dandy, Derek Blake. Oh, it's good to see you, by the way. Nameless. And uh, if you guys click that uh, redeem link in the chat, you can like redeem your mug. Giant worms. Turns out they only eat sober dwarves. Drunken ones have <laughs> uneven footsteps. I mean, Caves of Cud has sandworms, although they don't call them sandworms. They call them sand krakens. Uh, if you missed the link as well, if you just type an exclamation redeem into the chat, you just need to verify your Twitch account and then you can get your mug. And thank you very much, Moose Moose, for the giveaways. No, unfortunately, the giveaways only work in the Twitch chat. Even if I wanted them to work in the YouTube chat. I can tell you right now they wouldn't. Needs worms from Tremors? Technically, the beak dogs are supposed to be Tremor-like. In their, like, squishy, fleshy... existence. Needs the worms from Trevor's and I don't know about all the evolutions. It's gonna be your new kit lab coffee mug. Hell yeah. I can confirm they're good mugs. This is one from Jesse's store. I just realized that the audio is way louder than I normally have it. Not down. Let's see what else is around. I realize I'm doing a lot of exploring, but yeah. Sometimes you just got to do a lot of exploring. Don't want to see scarce trees. No trees or nothing. Gross. Could also just go further up here. In the red sand. Like somewhere like up here maybe? small one and the big one a while back and use both depending on how much coffee you need. I respect it. It's also ended up with a little bit of this. I really like this red sand desert. I, I think I'm just going to plop us somewhere down into this red sand desert. Because it's got good materials. As long as I'm not on a heavy aquifer, I don't care. And it gives us all the sand. And it's, it, it is really pretty looking. And um, I'll try and make sure we don't end up with any of this crap on here. Because I'm... I really kind of don't want any of that. And if I unpause, red sand makes you go faster. I will note this. That's a mosquito lady. She bugs me. Red sand is on theme for today. Same with the blood sucking bitch in the corner. I mean, what? Um... Definitely wrong topic for the day. Fort comes with built-in vampires. I mean, I don't see the problem. Most men's like. Mosquito lady, Alt F4. I'm out. Red flag in the relationship is all I gotta say. Narthir, thanks for the second month of Prime. Welcome back. Are they forgotten? I mean, they're still in the fortress. Bone doll. Or they're still in the faction, rather. If you would like that save file, you can go grab it um, on Discord. Now, the, we completed all of our goals with the fort, and I wasn't getting any migrants. 
So it was either let the fortress slowly fade and die or build a new fort. So I decided to build a new fort. Uh, Darius, thanks for the fifth, or not the fifth, the five pack of gift subs. <laughs> Appreciate you, mate. While eating popcorn, also doing, also being on a work meeting. So are you the person in the top corner of the work meeting in the Zoom call just eating popcorn going, keep going. <laughs> it's the worst HR conversation is when HR joins the call eating popcorn. So yeah, I guess we'll we'll, we'll just pl plunk down somewhere in here because it's got iron, silver, copper, lead, which is fine. As I just don't want to be on that heavy aquifer. I guess the question, chat, is do we park on the river or just on the desert? We have to dig regardless, so it's not actually going to change the gameplay too, too much. It's just if I go down here, there's like a relatively decent chance we get heavy aquifer, which I do not want. This is interesting. The fruity mead. I don't really want to be on a normal sand desert. Rivers are pretty. River's not going to change the fun at all. It'll be about the same. Okay, so we tried settling down here. Let's just plop one. This will be my final test and bark, I think. Let's just plop one right here and see what we think. I'm gonna go up on the side. Right there. Why is it so jaggy? I don't like how jagged it is. <laughs> That's a very like 2007 Dwarf Fortress River. can build an adventure mode bridge over the river. It's very easy to just walk around rivers in adventure mode, but yeah. You can also fast travel over most of them. Unlike this one with a decent adventure, you could just jump that. So they actually suck blood. I think so. Mosquito people. I know giant ticks do. Um. <laughs> hmm. Nanam. 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 <laughs> Nanam. I wonder if that's more trainable. It's literally like right next to the. Okay. That's what. That's what I. I'm, I'm guessing not. Probably. But I don't know. I need to look at them on the wiki. Very natural river formation. Let me just see if I can find one that looks nice. The problem is, is once I realized that I could just quit without saving and just, like, test as many embarks as I want, um, <laughs> it kind of led me to this problem of now when I embark, it's just, like, this constant loop of just, like, embark, eee, re-embark, eee, re-embark, You like the curve at the uh, top of the river and the double V-shape is cool? I, I, I guess. But you're glad that you're not the only one who's just like... Well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm basically, like, plotting out a location, Tor Torpin, uh, for, like, potentially hundreds of hours of gameplay. It's not really save scumming. It's more like resetting, you know? Save scumming is like trying to overcome a crappy thing. Resetting is just like hitting the reset button constantly, which is more what I'm doing. Yeah, because this whole desert here is just scarce trees, which I, also it's all gold. Let's 
Let's try this corner right here. Like that. Less warnings on this one. Ooh. Now this I like. That I'm a fan of. I was just in that good zone, Slippery. Like, that was where my last fort was. Was in the middle of that joyous wild. Let's see what critters we got. Pike and raven. And an alligator. <laughs> alligator is like... Challenging my fortress to a duel. It's an old alligator. Doesn't feel like... Already in conflict. Well, that's a good sign. Um... That's a, that's a, that's doable, I think. Although I do like the creatures in the other one more. Um, my or uh, they could get taken over by goblins. Uh, it'll actually it it greatly inflates the population of the sieve, but it also makes those locations no longer like settleable. I'm curious maniac. I'll sometimes like settle and or embark and retire like seven or eight forts to like rebuild a civ a little bit but i'm not trying to do that right now i'll also when adventure mode's out a really good way to move time forward is just spawn in random adventurers into the world because every single time you start an adventurer two weeks move forward and every single time you abandon an adventure two weeks move forward so you could like pump the game up forward by a year or two with like 12 adventures and it's just random dude in the wilderness dies Perfect way to get through, uh, marking mostly bad papers. School teacher, I'm assuming. Oh, that's the reclaim button. That's a different button. There's also this tiny ass desert up here. Ooh. What's, what's it with these deserts having heavy aquifers? Huh. <laughs> Something weird about that. So this was the corner we were on. I just realized it's called the Blanket of Compassion. I'm trying to see where that heavy aquifer starts. So I could do like... You captured four goblins. Is it possible to store them? You're making vertical bars and a lever. Store them. Not really. I mean, you could keep them. You could just keep them in the cage forever. Seal two dwarves into a wall. Find a farm plot and some plump helmets and seal them and just turn the FPS up to like 2,000. Why wouldn't you just like infect them with vampirism or something? All right, I think I may have just found the embark. God damn it, why is it a fucking... Grr. <laughs> why does everybody, like, have... Why is everybody so, like, concerned slash perplexed with wood? Wood grows naturally in the caverns. You, you dig down to caverns and you chop down mushrooms. It only requires you going down, like, 30 Z levels and you, all you need is a pickaxe. I hate zigzag rivers. They 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 irk me. I hadn't thought about that, Russ Ames, if I'm being honest. Um I mean, I'll tell you this. You can throw things into a pit using the pit pond zone. Um this is just for chat real quick. Make a pit pond. Uh well, actually don't don't make it that big. Uh, just go one on one on one side and one on the other, and uh, set it to a pit, and then you can put the prisoners into the pit that way. If you would just like to put them somewhere, you could. I don't think uh, you can also assign them to a chain, um, but uh, throwing them into a pit is more, is more fun. You can make them like fight the cavern creatures or something. Caverns are scary, maybe for you. 
Forever bought brought to you by McDonald's. Congratulations! It's now worse. I didn't think that was possible. What are the creatures on this map? Common snapping turtle. Okay, well this one has giant otters. The a lot of these fun creatures though are like only in the rivers. I just I do really like that embark area though. Does cutting down the cavern trees piss off elves? There's a very specific word you said in that question that answers your question. You said wood. That answers your question. Trees is trees, exactly. I know Tarn has talked about uh, because caverns are less friendly than they used to be, maybe making them not count as much or making them not count, but no, they do count currently. Nah, elves are fine. Wood isn't as important as a lot of um, players make it sound. Wood is useful. It is not required. If anything, I would almost say wood is optional in a lot of embarks. All right, so that was this area right here. Was there like noticeable elevation change there? Oh, there is a little bit of an elevation change. I mostly just don't want it to be completely flat. Like this could do right here. This could do right here. You know what? I think I might just say, screw, eh. I This is my fifth final <laughs> embark test. Ooh. I just want a river so that I'll get things aside from birds. <laughs> You can make rock pots. You can make metal barrels. Two humped camels. You know? I think this will do it, chat. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't show you in the manager screen, but yeah, you can make rock pots. You can also make glass pots. You can make clay pots. Rock pots are made at a craft dwarf shop. I think this is it, chat. What do you think? Lots of nice little elevation changes. Tiny little corner creek. You can make a metal barrel. Jeefen, you don't need a wooden barrel for an ashery. You can make a lead barrel. You can make a copper barrel. Nameless, thanks for continuing the gifts up. They added a new icon for that in the dashboard. Converting the prime into a tier one. Appreciate you, dude. Lead barrel sounds awful. Crop for a dwarf. All right, that's our spot chat. Forgotten beasts made of mud aren't bothered by magma. Almost no forgotten beasts are bothered by magma. Unless they get their internals set on fire. Unless they're made of fire. If they're made of fire, then they're, it's impossible for them to get damaged by lava. But if uh, I have had cat forgotten beasts catch fire, but only once their guts are spilled. If they have guts, that can be spilled. Insane in the membrane, Capyara. Uh, also safe for humans in Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress doesn't have any of like that kind of poison conversion. And there are some people who are like, I want infectious diseases and I want like poisons in, in Fortress mode. I don't think you actually want that. You might think you want that because it sounds cool, but trust me, I don't think you actually want that. Now I'm trying to remember where that spot was, fuck. I'm going back in the VOD and looking. <laughs> Uh, where exactly was that last embark? The tiny little bridge. The 
tiny little creek. All right, got it. Tails right here. So, chat one tile of creek or two tiles of creek. If it has a zigzag, I won't cry. I'm not going to make the map bigger. One tile of creek, creek or two tile of creek? One tile of creek or two tile of creek? That's saying two? Okay. Also, apparently I'm near a necromancer's tower. Where's this goddamn tower? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Now I'm even more confused. Might need to become pumped out or carried away. Why was it saying I was near a necromancer tower? That's... Did, did I misread it? Anyway, we'll do two tiles. I don't actually care if there is. I just want to know if there is one. <laughs> I, I'm a firm believer of internet time, Elfie Bean, over in the YouTube chat. Internet time is when you log on. Morning is when you log on. It could be the end of the day and you could have just gotten home from work. It could be the very beginning of the day and you just woke up. If you just logged on, it's morning. Yeah, it did, it did say that there was a necromancer tower the last time I clicked it. Oh, well, that's slightly suspect. Not gonna lose sleep over it though. I'm just gonna click down here. I'm gonna click over here. There it is. Okay. So there is a necromancer tower up here. So I mean, I'm that, that's okay. I'm just kind of concerned that the warning isn't popping up every time. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Eh. Can't find my zombies username checks out more than normal right now. What's up, Cameron? How you doing? Stealthy tower, yeah, stealthy tower. All right, so we are going, did I select the correct faction chat? I think I did. I just wanna make sure I did. Emerald irons, I'd click that first. Can necromancer towers be underground? Wouldn't that be like a necromancer trench or like a necromancer tunnel or like your average American missile silo? <laughs> Head cannon now officially. Necromancer, inver an inverted necromancer tower is just a billionaire from the pre post apocalypse who bought a missile silo. a pit? Sure. Necronukes? I mean... <laughs> Catacombs? I mean, an inverted tower? Yeah, it's like a spire. Yeah, like like a certain slayed spire that's been thrust up from the underworld. Okay, so go to Civilizations, the Emerald Irons. This is the same faction I played last time who still has the Gorlack Queen. My location is right here. With two tiles of creek. Emerald irons. Location correct. Boink. Prepare for journey carefully. So now the fun part. What do we name the fort? Sand pile. <laughs> I mean, I, I could call it sand. Sand fortress. Sand castle. <laughs> no, that's, that's a beach thing. Sand 
Sand Spire. Or I could go like... Love balls! Like, be with the season, you know? Um... Be the opposite of Anakin. I'm not calling it sand balls. <laughs> no. Sandwich? Is, is witch a word? It's called sand wicked. Sand whip! It's the Miracle Whip knockoff nobody wanted. Love Spire? Oi. <laughs> That's worse. Dusty Mound? Ew. As soon as you get past 50 dwarves, all your dwarves fall apart. You just can't ever get ahead of managing industry. Any tips? Uh, you can limit your dwarven population in the, option, in the game options. You can set a population cap. So if you're having trouble with too many dwarves, you could lower your population cap until you get quicker at... Um, Keeping up. Although I will say, not every single dwarf needs a job. All dwarves need is a place to socialize, occasional work, and, like, a bedroom. And food. And alcohol. That's all that dwarves need. So the only thing that you need to keep those 50 dwarves, like, sane, is a tavern, or some meeting zone, where they can socialize, uh, probably a temple, where they can pray, and a dormitory where they can all sleep. You only need like maybe 14 beds for that many dwarves and active supply of food and drink. So the only industry you actually need to have functioning is food and drink, basically farming and cooking and brewing. So don't worry about every single dwarf working if that's what you're trying to do. Crimson caverns, crimson's a good word to start with. Love Crimson. Mm. Just shout outs to the OGs. One of the greatest bands of all time. 21st century schizoid dwarf. I do like the word Crimson, though. I just want to call it Crimson King now. <laughs> Actually, what I really want to do is I want to end the stream. I want to go into the other room and I want to put on my copy of uh, uh, the King Crimson's first album and just listen to that. That's, that's actually all I want to do. Anyone here got a book, a good book series to read after reading The Expanse and Children of Time? It's not a series, but I highly, 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 highly recommend everybody read Doom Guy if you like video games which is um, John Romero's memoir, which is literally just his life story growing up and then the making of Doom and just, uh, or like all of the id software games basically that he worked on, uh, all the way up from like the beginnings of id software through Quake. It, it is worth reading because if you have any interest in video games, it is a phenomenal book. If you like any kind of biographies, it's a phenomenal book. And it's also just a well-written good story. So I would recommend that. But I also don't take book recommendations from me. Jay Bay, thank you very much for becoming a YouTube member. I realize you're just, like, requesting every single thing that sounds like nuts, Hog Jockey, and you're hysterical. Now, everybody point and laugh at how silly Hog Jockey is. Because <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> God, I read Ender's Game a bajillion years ago and never read any of the follow-up books. I've never built a fort around prison stuff. 
No, it, it operates the same way as other stuff. Uh, Coast Camp. It's, it's exactly the same as other places. Crimson Dunes a good name. Could roll with that potentially. Crimson Dunes. The the sorry sorry the but reading this sentence just sounds hysterical to me as somebody who read the first Ender's Game book in high school. This is a comment from YouTube chat Twitch for reference. The Ender's Game is The Hobbit, and the follow-up books are Lord of the Rings, but way more adult and in-depth. I didn't get that vibe in the slightest from the first Ender's Game. <laughs> like, not, not even close. <laughs> but okay. Crimson Doom? Crimson Doom's a pretty cool name. Also, a Twitch chat between you and me. Uh, the the Aragon books are Star Wars, but bad. <laughs> Implying Star Wars is good in that sentence, by the way. Crimson Stronghold? Ooh. I kind of wanted to go with, like, Crimson Prism, but Prism isn't really a word. So, Crimson Rock. Crimson Boulder? Crimson Crypt, that's two C's. Crimson Beard, the Crimson Mob. Ooh, that sounds like a gang. Crimson Vault is pretty good. I really do like the word Vault. Crimson Dive, it's the bar that has alcohol for $1 cheaper than all other Dwarven bars. A Fort of Crimson Glass. But there is no red glass, though. And I can't guarantee I can do Crystal because... I can't guarantee I have rock crystal. I could do clear glass. Vault of Crimson. I mean that that would be like the 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 group name because I, I refuse to name things thing uh thing of thing for the name of the board. I could name the group the Vault of Crimson. Crimson Pebble. Crimson Iron Crimson Window. How is Aragon bad? It's just a terrible book. It's just really poorly written. Uh, just Aragon is bad. That is my hot take of the day. You guys can argue amongst yourselves. It was not a good book. I mean, it's not quite 420, but Crimson Blade. <laughs> I don't want to put Pyramid in the name because then people would actually expect me to make a pyramid. Somebody actually left a comment like four months ago on my second YouTube channel that I never responded to, which was like, why are pyramids bad? Pyramids aren't bad. They're just really, really, really difficult to build correctly. And I've tried a couple times. And, um... They're not fun to build. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Like, ooh, how about this? Crimson Splatter. Eh? Eh? Uh-oh, same, same thing there, Martin. You just ruined it. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> Carnage. Crimson Carnage. Eh? The problem with this whole thing is my Nate, my brain is still stuck on King Crimson. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Good news, Diamond. 
The gremlin became the captain of the guard. How about the crimson nest? King Crimson is a wonderful band. Neil Kai. Also, Diamond, the, the save file is still available. You, you can still go download it, even though I've retired that fort. Crimson Cactus? Crimson Nests? I mean, I the thing is, I'm like, I, the, the, one, the name I think I'm the most tempted for right now is the Crimson Prison. Yeah, we've retired the fortress. Diamond. <laughs> I think this is the one I'm the most sold on. Can't kill the meme just yet. Oh no, the meme's not dead. I mean, it's obviously my goal. Like, my overarching goal with every single fort I will ever play Diamond is to tame a gremlin and get him in the fort. That, that is just going to be a going thing. The score is currently one. <laughs> and we've been doing this shit for four years. We've got a score of one. I have tamed and recruited one gremlin into a fort once. I had a second tame gremlin, but they didn't join the fort. Only one of the two gremlins actually joined the fort. Ca Captain of the Guard is mayor. I didn't have a mayor, but I did have Captain of the Guard. I had a gremlin join the fort. That's all I said was the goal, not make a bear. I just simply said that's the goal. Get them to join the fort. So we're gonna go with the Crimson Prison chat. And uh, I'm going, so rules for this fort. And now that I've called it the Crimson Prison. I have to assign a sheriff as soon as it's available. I have to make a dungeon master, uh, a captain of the guard, and a hammer as soon as they're available. Sound good? Most important noble in Fort is cop. <laughs> we shall rule with an iron fist. Or shall we say a crimson fist? The vault of... Sand? Make a low living standard prison block? How about this? Every dwarven bedroom has to have bars and a chain. Nah. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, motherfuckers! <laughs> Bars and chains work. <laughs> so just like your bedroom, got it. Hey, 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 whatever you're into. Supermax prison facility? Yeah! But it'll probably end up actually being in the caverns. That or I should... Mm. Trying to think, how could I, like, incentivize the making of change? There's nothing BDSM-like about this. We're all about obeying the law, and those dwarves are going to admire the beautiful chains, Martin. You don't need to make it weird. <laughs> Stuff them with gems and sell them? That's what she said. <laughs> okay, we're just like degrading into delinquency. <laughs> How about the, the vault of chains? Remember, we're still at war with goblins that tried to rebuild a sieve, so I can't like just go totally absurd. Um, Dwarves can't make whips, so I can't guarantee that. Let's just go with hammers for right now and work our work forward from there. So we are the Vault of Chains, Ubil Nykat, of the Crimson Prison. 
We need to show the goblins his boss. I, sure. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Vault of Obedience is pretty... yikes. How about... So the funny thing is, is this fort's gonna go on for like, I don't know, at, like at least two weeks, right? Probably, unless it dies in the first week, which would be weird. A whole Z-level of prisons? Nah. I like never fill a whole Z-level with anything, because that always ends up just looking ugly to me. I started this... You're not wrong. Um... The funny thing about this is, like, let's just say... <laughs> Chains of obeying. Chains of obedience. Uh, it, 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 if this fort goes on for, like, two weeks, and people are going to tune in in a week and a half and be like, wait, why is your name this? And I'll be like, we started it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, happy Singles Awareness Day. Yep, which is why it's just like, well, life sucks. <laughs> I just came from watching movies with friends. I'm happy you have friends. It's funny because like I'm actually, ironically, by the, by the way, I should I should mention this. I'm planning on today being a really long stream. Just a heads up because tomorrow's only going to be eight hours because I'm going to go see um, Fit for a King and Devil Wears Prada tomorrow. Hey, so, although I'm I'm actually probably gonna leave when Devil Wears Prada comes on. I'll probably, I'll watch one or two of, the, I'll watch like the first 15 minutes of their set probably and then leave. How dare you, a curious maniac. Yeah, Shrot streams, exactly, Diamond. You're seeing them on Saturday? Hey! Except the guy. Devil Wears Prada is fantastic, except the guy. So not fantastic. Take them down and mark. They're, 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 they're great. How's that? That's how I felt when I realized I was going to a Suicidal Tendencies show. Russ Ames. The Travel to a The Ragged Astronauts by Bob Shaw. Hmm. Just that description is giving me mental images of, um... Treasure Planet. You know, two of my favorite animated movies. Treasure Planet. This is a band that I'm talking about, yes. <laughs> Um, there, 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 there's, there's two, no, I'm not talking about the movie. Bad dwarves suffer more. What about, hmm, <laughs> okay. What, what about bad drothless? I obviously, like, haven't updated the goal yet. Missed the end of River Depths. We retired it. It didn't die. But most of the military died. So if you were in the military, you're probably dead. <sighs> probably leave for uh, the Devil Wears product. Yeah. Yeah. That's likely the way that's going to happen. I, I will report uh, prob on Friday. And be audio if you peek into the, you, into the music chat on Discord on how it was. Your improv two movie night started to cheer up a friend who broke up recently, and you you ended up watching Pirates of the Caribbean for five hours. How okay? Did you watch it on repeat, or did you watch multiple Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Because in my mind, you just watched Curse of the Black Pearl on repeat. So, Chad, we are now officially the Crimson Prison of the Chains of Obedience. We're here to beat these goblins into submission. Ew. 
Um, all right. <laughs> Curse of the Black Pearl, but every single time he says, why is the rum gone? The movie slows down by 10%. <laughs> I actually doesn't say it that many times in that movie, I don't think. I think it's like once or twice. Maybe every single time he says rum, the movie slows down. Should have called it Goblin Sparks. Is that even an option? Okay, so there's no goblin word. Spank is not a word. I could call it slap face. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's not a, a bad description of how I'm sure a lot of people's Valentine's Day will go. <laughs> I, I suddenly just want to call it slap face. Just throw the whole theme up there. Chat room, can we please t just take this, can we take this name and like put it away somewhere for later? <laughs> because that is too funny. I, I. <laughs> like just, just save that in the internal memory, maybe next for it. Only wrestle squads, wrestle squads, and shields. Although crimson face is pretty good too. Crimson face is like after you've been slapped. <laughs> you chat, you twi Twitch chat, YouTube chat, like slap bottom. <laughs> The jokes do write them <laughs> Because, um, bottoms is a word. So you could call it slapped bottoms. Same. Hold on. Since since we're on on this on this list, oh damn it! Oh man, I can't I can't call it like heartbreak in. Dang it! World's most mature streamer. It's Valentine's Day. Nothing about this day is fucking mature. Oh, this is pod racing? I mean, we're settling in a red sand desert, so. Oh, no. You could, in fact, call your fortress power bottom. Yeah, you could do that. Or, even better... Powerballs! Isn't that like a baseball thing? Powerball? <sighs> yep, you could call it power top. Or power slap. Or power slaps. At this point, I might as well just name this Fortress Will Smith. Neokai, okay, thanks for the dollar. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> actually, hold on. <laughs> hold on a second. Oh. 
Oh my god. I don't think I can call something the slap. <laughs> I can't call it the slapping of rock. I don't really want to make a fortress that is just straight up calling out a real life celebrity, but <laughs> this really is just the best game. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> My sides hurt. <sighs> this must be fun everyone's talking about. I mean, this is just... Shooting the shit with streamer. Oh, boy. Read the top of the screen. I don't get it. Am I missing something here? Oh, for somebody who just tuned in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I basically we, we were joking. So for, for a little bit of context here, we're starting a new fort, right? We were joking about like different fort names and I wanted to make like a prison based fort. And so I ended up making like the group called the the Chains of Ob Ob Obedience. And then, then people were just like, yo, this is a BDSM fort. And then we were joking about different names that you could name things. And then somebody pointed out that you could name a fort Slap Bottom. <laughs> Um, and then I was like, well, at this point, I might just, I thought I was joking, we were, like, laughing around about, like, different various names of slaps, ba names based around slapping, and I said, I should just name the Fort Will Smith at this point. And then two and two clicked in my brain, and I named the Fort Will Smith. <laughs> um, so... Blue Owl, thanks for gifting a subscription. Um, I don't want to name the Fort Will Smith. I'll name the group Will Smith the onslaught at slot of slap slapping, though. If we really insist on doing that, and then maybe name the fort like something less derogatory towards the celebrity? I I don't know. <laughs> oh my chest hurts. Jaden is, I can guarantee, I mean, I could, like, yeah, Jade is a word. My SEO. As if that will help. I'm not naming the Fort Power Bottom. <laughs> I just, I don't want to deal with the questions for the next two weeks. Will watches the stream and is deeply offended. You know, what's funny is I, I, I have a, a, a person I don't directly know, but there is a person I know in the industry whose name is Will Smith, and he has Will Smith on Twitter, and whenever Will Smith actor, unrelated to Will Smith game developer slash streamer podcaster person, um, does something stupid, his Twitter explodes, and um, if I just go to... <clears throat> 
X.com uh, and look up Will Smith. Um, you get this guy. And he almost always has to like, whenever Will Smith does something dumb, he has to pin something that appears stating, hey, I'm not that guy that you're looking for. <laughs> but he, he has actually at Will Smith. Um, and you know, obviously not the Will Smith people think he is. Uh, so, you know. Looks just like the celebrity Will Smith. I mean, he in, in my mind, he's a celebrity named Will Smith. As a giant hot dog? Yep. Happy 26 months. Hope day going good. And he says to this day he can't refer to things slapping on Twitter as, like, a positive. Because if he says the word slapping, then people start yelling at him again. <laughs> Not realizing who he is. Oh, um, apparently, apparently he, he actually sold an Instagram account to actor company. Um, but no, he's not, they didn't want his Twitter account, which I think is kind of funny. But he sold them the, his Instagram account because he also had that. Apparently he just, he made the account before Will Smith actor broke big. Because Will Smith actor didn't really blow up until like 20... Like, the late 2020, like, aughts. And it took a little bit for, like, when it comes to the internet type deal. And he also had a major resurgence. I mean, he had some big movies in the 90s, sure. But anyway, I don't want to just talk about Will Smith now. Um, <clears throat> so what do I, what the fuck do I name this fort, chat? With Tame Cave Dragons? Ooh, go for it. Tele, thanks for the 26th month. And hopefully the laughs. Time to steal some livestock, yeah. It's now a Will Smith stream? Oh, God. How about Slap? Slap Arches is also pretty good. Slap Crimson! The... Slap Rock, the Will of Smiths. I can't get around this, can I? <laughs> I like, because... <laughs> the Will of Smiths, and I, I, I could just... I, 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 I mean, I, I could... I, you know, Slap Rock... It's completely unrelated to a certain actor and a comedian. <laughs> you know, honestly, I, I like this timeline, Elfie. It started off as like a prison slash sort of kinky fort name. And now we're Slap Rock the Will of Smiths. <laughs> the Fresh Prince. <laughs> Hold on. Can I actually call it the Fresh Princess? Fresh isn't a word. I could call it the flesh princess. <laughs> nope. Nope. I, I, I could call it the flesh primitive. I honestly, I think the will of Smiths is better because it does actually sound like... A dwarf thing. It's just, it's not a word in the game that I can use. How's that? I mean, believe it or not, soap can't be readily made and is just as complicated in real life. We've just made the societal t decision to make it readily available and to make it constantly. And in large amounts. And that is a for officially chat the, the name of the fortress of Slap Rock. The Will of Smiths. I'm still sticking to the to the like to to the theme though. Of 
building a prison fort where I have to have all the prison nobles satisfied at all times. I would actually say silk is probably harder to make in real life, but... You wish it... I, you can import soap, can't you? I mean, I mean, if, if we want, we could call it potentially. There. The Crimson Will of Smiths. How's that? So we're now Slaprock the Crimson Will of Smiths. Unrelated, I'm taking a screen... I took a screenshot of that dumb fort name I didn't use, and I'm sending it to Kit Fox's community manager. <laughs> I need her to be aware of the crimes that you can commit in, in this video game. Which one? Um, Will Smith, the onslaught of slapping. <laughs> I, I will, I will screen, I, I will, I will, I'll plot the same screenshot in, into the, the 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 DF talk talk room if you guys wanna. No. Use the fort name. <laughs> so that the, there's there's almost always this person who comments on the vods whenever I take more than like 20, 30 minutes to embark. How long is it going to take to actually embark? I think for that person, for this VOD, for the first time in my stream's history, I'm going to put a timestamp where embark happens. Don't forget to grab some logs. I will probably grab some logs, yeah. All right, so first off, log. I will take some nether cap. Say 20, just for beds and stuff. Um, Because every, everything else I can just make pots for. Make it a wrong time stamp. I should, I should put two, one which is Embark, which is actually just me realizing that I could name the Fort Will Smith. And then the second one will be something unrelated. And it'll be the actual Embark one. Hmm. pre-embarking character creation. Oh, that's not uncommon. I mean, like, embarking in Dwarf Fortress is, like, RPG character creation, right? It's like the, the person who spent... It's like, you know, that, that first day that... Um, it's it's like the first day that um, little indie games, some of you may have heard of, a Baldur's Gate 3 was out, and then there was people who it's like eight hours later they were still on the character creation screen during streams. I'm gonna bring five dogs... And two other dogs. One with one symbol, one with different symbol. And I'm going to train them all to bite thing good. Uh, as far as seeds go, I will bring an anvil this time. I don't need no wheelbarrows, don't need no stepladder. So that saves a bunch of points. I will actually take an extra crutch and an extra splint. I realize that's behind my camera, but I'm taking an extra crutch and an extra splint because gosh darn it knows when I'll actually be able to make one. Um, somebody actually pointed this out the other day. Why do Prepare Careful come with quiver but no bolt? Why 
what, like whether or not we end up naming the fort Slap Rock. Blazing Iceberg. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I feel like Copper Bolt... Well, actually, probably, you know what it is? Is... Not all dwarves have access to all things. I always use the model prison based off Revel's End from the D&D &D movie. Haven't seen it. Are you talking about the recent D&D &D movie or one of the old animated ones? Just skimming the YouTube chat right now, I think that, can chat be too horny? No, if everybody is horny. If it's a running joke that everybody's in on and it's just like everybody's laughing hysterically, that's, it's totally fine. It's when it's one person with no context for no reason or one person with no context in an inappropriate situation, that's too much. That, that's my take. I've got nothing wrong with horny in the right situation. Horny is great. But it wasn't great. Yeah, I don't know. I I just I am completely indifferent to the existence of D and D, so it doesn't sell me or unsell me on a movie, and I'm not really like a fantasy adventure movie kind of person. I'm trying to decide if I should bring bolts. I mean, like bolts are easy enough to make. I I just might stop bringing quivers. I guess. Although quivers are harder to make than bolts. Same with crossbows. I don't know. Um, I should probably bring some sort of weapons with, though. Maybe an extra pick, at the very least. Bring a single splint. I have four splints, actually, and four crutches already. Here, I will add another splint and another crutch, in fact. We're, we're, we're now at uh, five splints and uh, five crutches. I'll bring an extra bucket, too. So we can bail out all of those goblin tears. Oh yeah. No, they, they, they fixed archers more or less, or they fixed, cro archers are not a dwarf thing. Crossbows are a dwarf thing. Um, they fixed crossbows, I'm gonna bring. Are those individual bolts or stacks of bolts? Does anybody know? Because if that's individual bolts, 10 bolts is like nothing. If that's stacks of 25... Those are single bolts? Huh. I'm just realizing I don't think I've ever actually brought bolts with me and prepare carefully. I'm just going to skip it then. <laughs> um, what instead I'm going to bring is uh, some very important useful things. Really? You telling me, game, I can't bring chains? That. I mean, I guess I guess I can bring ropes, but like, game, no, let me bring chains. I'm not doing cages. There's a lot of things I don't normally bring with me. I'll put it that way. I could just, like, bring a bunch of ropes. But, um, I don't know. I mean, I already have ropes. Uh. Hmm. I could also just bring more animals. I had a bunch of peacocks last time. What else do we have? Chat, what animals should I bring? I got points to spend. 
Um, I was gonna do bars and chains. Sorry. Water buffalo. Hmm. Geese. We had geese last time. Duck. Quack. Bunnies. No! I could just bring cows. I don't think I've ever actually had, I don't think in this entire version I've had like an active cattle industry. And two cows is like the points that I have. <laughs> As they can be sheared, totally. But like, okay, so if I were to bet, we're going to end up with some, with some more yaks. I only need one extra point to bring an extra yak. So why don't I go over here and I get rid of something useless like, um, like a rock nut. I don't need those rock nuts. Valentine's Day ain't that important. Um, and then, uh, boom, there we go. 20 bunnies. No. I have a personal vendetta against bunnies. And I will use that to buy two extra beers. Um, and then for the dwarves. Yaks on a desert. They'll be in the caverns. We'll, we'll be, like, literally in the caverns very quickly. Why don't you just call them the nuts of balls then at that point, Hog Jockey? This isn't a new world, Airsoft fan. This is the same world. Same faction, even. Because um, we weren't getting uh, migrants at the other fort, and I, I completed all my goals. I'm just going to read this um, very detailed guide in YouTube chat on how I should play the video game. Remove all buckets and wooden crafted items and bring more wood instead and craft it. No. Uh, pig, big, big, big tail bags, because you misspelled pig. Uh, remove two ant threads, better grow pigtails. Remove two ant threads to better grow, grow pigtails. Okay, no. Uh, and threads and bags useless, you craft it soon enough. Enough. Um... No. No, I mean, preparing carefully, I could embark with none of this and we'd be fine. With the exception of a pick. As long as I have a single pick, we're good. XD yourself. This is why, like, I one of the reasons I prefer Twitch as well is because I can have the no backseating tag. Instructions unclear. Stabbed face with pencil. I mean, what? <clears throat> Did you type it? Yes. You always bring turkeys. That's kind of a power game move. Well, I mean, tur bringing turkeys are kind of like bringing yaks, right? Because turkeys, they, they give meat, they give leather, and they give eggs, right? Whereas yaks give um, shearable stuff, and they, they give wool, and they give, um, or yak hair, I, I guess. I, I don't think it's called wool. Anyway, they give yarn, and they also give milk, right? So it's they, they're like a multi-product animal. New Fort, yes, Kaz. You missed um, one of the worst, greatest names of all Dwarven history time, which I didn't end up using. And we committed crimes this morning. <laughs> we did, however, in end up naming the fortress Slap Rock, the Will and the group is called the Will of Smiths. Um, so, as for dwarves... <sighs> What do I want to go with? I want to start off with some really useful skills, like chemist. I don't really want... Mm. Starting with glassmaker is dangerous. 
Specifically because then your first mat, like, glass, uh, then specifically because your first artifacts are gonna be glass. Dungeon Master isn't a skill. I mean, Dungeon Master uses, um, what is it like in all of the speech skills? It's like intimidation and such. Yeah, it's like intimidator and judge of intent, these two. So, I mean, we could start off with a dwarf that's a, comp a proficient intimidator, judge of intent, and let's say, I don't know, appraiser. That's it. Uh, we also have, or we're, we're going to start off with uh, persuader, negotiator, liar. An intimidator. Uh, this dwarf is going to be a wound dresser, diagnoser, surgeon, doctor, Doctor Bomrek. Like I said, I'm starting off with very important skills. Competent <laughs> swimmers and plant extractors. Those are useful skills. If you want to truly be like a useless start, just be like chemists. <laughs> They're like a chemistry astronomer. Uh, critical thinker. I have made Dolmas into a nerd. Seven cheesemakers. Now that's actually useful. Speaking of useful, I am going to give some of them useful skills. Uh, we're going to start off with a... Uh, this is for the weird ones in the crowd to make jokes out of and meet and roll my eyes at. We're gonna have a, a milker slash cheesemaker. And I nod, you can be <laughs> park without trees. There's going to be trees. They're just gonna be in the cavern caverns. Sheesh. A few points in weaponsmith, and uh, the rest can be lying. They're lying about actually being a good weaponsmith, and um They'll cut you and give you stitches. And, uh, no, because there's no trees. You'll only get cactuses if there's sparse. But there's, I, I don't think there's any trees on this map. Watch this, you know, honestly, we've spent so much time here. Watch it crash when I go to embark. <laughs> Ooh, I need a schemer. A scheming fluid engineer. Who's a dancer? In her spare time. Now the last and most important thing. The Vault of Obedience. Oh man, the Vault of Obliv Oblivion. The Vault of Obedience is gonna be the name of our symbol. And our symbol is going to be a human, a goblin, oops. A dwarf and an elf. Slapping isn't an option before you guys ask. And they walk into a tavern. Mm hmm. And they sit down and they see on the TV Will Smith slapping Chris Rock and they go, wow. Oh, even better. Even better. Our queen. But Gorlak is laughing. Can I... Hmm. The <laughs> cheeks of receiving. Oh, no. Uh, 
a diamond. The diamond is the diamond is striking down the goblin. Coin. The coin is striking down the human. Hmm, it's like fire not a thing. The wave is burning the elf. Oops, no, actually, I did that wrong. Uh, shape, wave, uh, burning. Oh, I put the wave in twice. All right, well, the wave is burning the elf. I will delete the first wave. Okay, so this is an image of a human, a goblin, a dwarf, and an elf. And Imo Frozen Dive, the Gorlack. A diamond, a coin, and a wave. Frozen Dive is laughing. The diamond is striking down the goblin. The coin is striking down the human. The wave is burning the elf. What's the dwarf doing? Cringing, maybe? Laughing, admiring. You know, actually, that, that's that's the right thing. Um, the 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 dwarf is admiring the Gorlack. Mm. Neat. Ooh. Meat cleaver. I'm a frozen dive is raising the meat cleaver. I'm a frozen die is cooking the prepared meal. Let him cook and suffer in prison. Ah, uh, well, we'll, well, we don't need every single reference to the previous four in this one, I don't think. Expensive to keep them happy? It's not hard to keep a fort happy without missed generators. It's just a matter of having av availability of all of the major activity zones. So that's our symbol, which once again is called the Vault of Obedience because I needed to make that name in there somewhere. So chat room, now all I have to do is click the embark button, but there's one very important thing that I need to do first. And that's to remind all of you, every single one of you, that we're also streaming on YouTube, all right? And um, because we're also streaming on YouTube, the, the YouTube stream, unlike the Twitch stream where people just tune in and watch, which is wonderful, um, it requires interaction. I mean, it's the closest thing I got to obedience. Obstinance. Yeah, you are correct. Is obedience an option? Obeying. Vault of obeying it is, then. <laughs> it's the closest I got. Um... Five minutes make it two hours since starting DF. I was going to run an ad and, and refill my coffee, actually. But uh, because YouTube uh, lives and dies based on likes, if you guys could pop over to the YouTube stream and leave a like on it, that would be very, very helpful over here on Twitch. And to those of you on YouTube, if you want to help out the, 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 the Twitch stream, what you can do is you could click on the Twitch stream and open it up in another tab. YouTube, if you want to help us out, you could... Uh, oh, would you you'd like the first dwarf? We can do that. Wet pet. Wait, we could absolutely do that.
And wait, what happened to the other fort? I retired it. I'm going to run an ad break here on Twitch, and uh, we will get started in about 90 seconds. I'm going to go top off my coffee. Whom do they obey? The law and the queen. And the will of the queen, obviously. Back in a minute. And Van Ori, thanks for becoming a YouTube member. You have enough for duck? Well, you got to get here at the beginning of the stream, then. All right. Well. Are we ready for some quackery, chat room? Thanks for bumping the uh, likes count on the YouTube stream from 40-something to 74, by the way. Greatly appreciate. Ad break is done. It's time to strike the earth. You need to go back and watch it. Well, fortunately, it ain't going anywhere, right? That's so come. That's what VODs are for. You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. And your party of seven is to make an outpost for the gory, gory, glory of all, Sardin Datan. There is almost no supplies left, but... With stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you. But it is spring now, enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place. Sezukid. Slaprock. Strike the earth. And I'm just going to have a peek. I'm curious about how River Depths is doing. So River Depths is doing quite quite well, I would say. Um, peeking at news and rumors really quick. It appears that um, the trenches and beyond was no, the denial might help was no, 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 no. I was curious if they've done anything. It appears Yeah, we're just actively, we're still actively inv invading uh, the Deceiver of Crumbling at this Goblin Fortress. So, this Ray's Ores is still what was once my mountain home. This is obviously a new fortress now. This is where those cave dragons are. Hello, Audio. How are you doing? It's good to see you. So us and our desert dwarves, yeah. Um, we've got our wagon surrounded by puppy dogs, which is adorable. Um, all right, I need to do a thing. Uh, tutor so if you go to DFHack, by the way, and you type in hide tutorials, it'll just get rid of all the tutorials. The other thing I'm going to do is disable overlay, because I don't like actually using DFHack very much. You've been engaged for war for 20 years, trying to lessen the numbers of 10K. Yeah, it's so hard. They're also, like, multiplying, right? So this is our embark. I did move it slightly this way from the initial test embark. So let's see how the stream looks. You know, honestly, I could work with that. That looks nice. I like the little creek. It's pretty. Can I name the puppies? Uh, the dwarves will name the puppies. 
But uh, I have to name a dwarf. So, um, wet pet. Well, pick one. <laughs> Which one do you want? Although I do owe somebody a dwarf from yesterday. I owe True Freak a dwarf, so we have to wait until True Freak arrives for me to do that. That or I, it'll just be dealer's choice. Chat, what dwarf do you guys think wet pet gets? Any dwarf will do? All right. Chat, what, what dwarf do you guys think wet pet should get? I'm thinking... One of the peasants. Uh, I, I mean, I was kind of thinking the farmer, too. Name the Zantamp zone after them. Name the duck after them. Wet pet, the farmer. You disdain cooperation. You're strong, and you have a high willpower. You're a member of the elder. El, el, uh, you're, you're, you're a member of the elder. The Emerald Irons. I can't speak today. Uh, of course, you worship the cult of ghosts, which is the religion of death, or one of the many religions of death in this world. You have poor spatial sense, you're inclined to abstract, and you strongly prefer ideas and of abstract concepts over handling specific practical issues. He, he finds most, he finds humor in most situations and tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others. Uh, and he finds obligations confining, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He takes off for helping gifts without feeling particularly grateful, and he is brave in the face of imminent danger and can easily lose focus on the matter at hand and always tries to say nice things. New Fort Day, yes. Walnut bag. Uh, he personally views, and yes, the fort is named Slap Rock. Um, and the group name is the Will of Smiths. Just like me, Casmero. Uh, he personally f find, views cooperation as a low ideal, not worthy of any respect, views loyalty as a negative view, uh, and has a negative view of those who exercise power over others. Values loyalty and has a negative view of those who exercise power over others and dreams of creating a great work of art. I'm sure you will love it here. You like horses for their strength and backpacks. So the theme for this fort, I guess I should set up the goal now that I got that dwarf name. That I've got that dwarf name. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go goal. Edit this. So, goal is satisfy the prison. Um, I just had a resub go through that I wanted to pop. All right, so goal for the fort is to maintain all law-related nobles, which is, you know, um, captain of the guard, hammerer, dungeon master. Base fort around prison theme. And... What's wrong with... Why, why do you have... What, what do you have against elves? We're not even at war with elves, man. <laughs> why don't I just kill you every time you visit and see how you like that? And, uh... I literally never do that, so I'm not going to do that in this fort. In regards to what Zwari just said. So anyway, uh, the, the, the command's been updated. Gulag Fort? Yeah, I mean, suppose. It's more of, um, less of a, less Gulag and more... How do I word this? Less Gulag, more... Fantasy dungeon? <laughs> I don't know. High security prison? Eh. Trying to figure out how, where I'm going to put the front door. I kind of like this spot down here, actually. It's a resort spa with very strict rules. Sure. Ooh, 
Who are the prisoner candidates? Um, nobody in particular. I mean, they're, they're, we'll, we'll have to set up something where we end up with crimes, right? It's more just a theme, you know? How's it going so far? Pretty good, Captain Suds and, and yourself. Keeping all Sudsy. That could work for the entrance. This could also work. Fantasy Dungeon sounds wrong on so many levels. Or right on so many levels. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy bullshit fake holiday that, holiday that nobody in their right mind actually cares about. Day, <laughs> but You know. There we go. And also, just because I was shutting out the YouTube stuff. I do, of course, pr prefer if you watch on Twitch, because Twitch is the chat that I pay attention to and the, uh, my primary platform for this type of content. But as long as you're watching the stream, I don't really care all that much, to be honest. Well, we certainly ain't going to be doing no fishing. So, at least not right now. I'll turn that off. And uh, give these two peasants picks. Get to it, dwarves. Let's see who our expedition leader is, though. Our expedition leader is Digal Borg Manor. <laughs> Finds himself to be quite hopeful about the future. Well, that's your first mistake. Uh, he does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. He often feels envious of others, is grateful when others help him out, tries to return favors, and often feels discouraged. Gnaws on his cheek when he's annoyed and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Um, I'm going to give this dwarf to the one that I owe it to from yesterday. I'm going to screenshot these and send them to him via DMs. Because I had somebody redeem a dwarf yesterday right as I was, like, about to retire the fort. And I was like, I'm just going to oh, do an IOU on this one. Like, silver tube, agate, and crystal glass, giant puffin tooth, and the color dark tan, bracelets, and hippos for their strength, and the sight of the wondrous sister, which is a dance, uh, prefers to consume apple cider and absolutely hates leeches. We're going to have to be importing a lot of food, probably, actually. You're an adequate poet. Uh, you know the willpower and the songs, which is a poem authored by Locum. It is an example of the stranger of pricing. The work has no particular subject, uh, but the writing conveys a moral lesson regarding the value of self-control. The writing has a very serious tone. It's not awful and not very good either. Hello, Buntiku. How's things? Need to buy flowers and gifts and spend your money on for Valentine's Day? Eh. What are your best guilds halls set up beside early armor smith, weaponsmith armor and engraver? Whatever you want, really. I mean, whatever you're trying to do with the with the fortress in particular. Like, if you're trying to. Basically, the, the best guild hall to set up early is the guild hall that you're trying to focus the fork on, right? If you're trying to focus the fork on, like, combat, you might want to do a ranger fort. Because, uh, hunt like, rangers uh, teach dwarves ambushing, which is one of the harder skills to teach dwarves early. Just to throw that out there. So, we got mudstone. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to start hitting stone pretty soon. Let's just, let's go a little deeper. I, this is going to end up being a deeper fort than this. I'm just doing a little bit of digging off the start. Thinking we go up to here. And then have a little room here, which is the way down. So let's do like. Something like this. And I'll dig out a little room in here. And this can be our first meeting room. Probably where we do trading stuff. And then this can be the stairs down right there. So let's do priority three for the stairs down. Actually, how deep does this go? 
129, okay. Let's just go down to elevation minus five. Maybe she can make sand forts. I think like clay is probably the closest to something like that that you can do. Oh, sweet. We are hitting mudstone. I was hoping we would hit mudstone because then I can do this. I have a stone worker. And let's see what's on the map, actually. Got a sea lamprey and a common snapping turtle. This is untamed wilds, by the way. We've also already hit metal. I'm going to make um, a pen pasture right here. I'm just going to assign all of the animals to it right now just to get them inside. Right next to that, I'm also going to make a animal training zone. Just a single tile. And I'm going to go to pets and livestock. And we're going to war train all of my doggos. And I'm going to, well, let's make Wet Pet my animal trainer here. You can train all these dogs. Um, I'm thinking we do clear glass, actually. It's a little bit more annoying with some extra steps. I'm pretty sure you need pearl ash which is one of those things that I always forget how to make. Eh, it's not that many extra steps. I mean, it's mildly annoying, annoying sure. Let's do two rock doors. Let's do three rock hatches. Four, actually, sorry, not three. Um, and then let's do table, table, prone, prone. Isn't all, ass, all, isn't all glass clear? Clear is a color in Dwarf Fortress. Ermalak. In other news, uh, dummy, you forgot uh, how spicy Cajun seasoning is. Oh! Well... I, I, that seems in, that seems like a good decision by me for for me, but um, you know. The next thing I'm gonna do. Uh oh. The common snapping turtle is fighting with a sea, ra sea lamprey. Quick shout out from Germany. Lots of misses. Thanks for the 14th month, Doctor Linden. Hope you're doing all right. Can I stockpile arrows in bins near your Marksworth training area? Yes. You can use bins. And they won't have any issues. As long And as long as you have a trench, um, they will reuse them. It's been a minute. Yeah, Lyndon, what you been up to? Playing other games and such, or just off the internet for a while? Random weaponsmith. Let's see what else is on the map. I really hope we get those giant snapping turtles that were showing up in the other map, but... Yeah, there's lots of not completely opaque glass, if, if that's, like, your definition of clear, I suppose. Then after all that is done, we're going to do rock blocks on repeat. Um, if you, knock it, if you go to labor standing orders, and then click on sieges and forbidding... Forbid used ammunition is the default. If you click that once, it says forbid used ammunition during sieges. If you click it again, it says claim used ammunition. So if you want no forbidding, claim used. Uh, forbid used or forbid dur just during sieges. But if you do this and your dwarves are training when the siege starts, just make sure you jump down there and unforbid them all with the click drag unforbid tool right as the siege is starting. Or right as you tell them to go station or send them off to go wherever they're going. And this way they won't try and go get ammo from underneath your enemy's feet. There's a speckle on my glasses I can't get rid of. What the... Okay, I got it. Bit of dust or some dandruff or something. So there you go. 
I think this is actually maybe one of the biggest problems people have with Mark's Dwarves is like they just have hunters or whatever running at all times and then they think that they have no ammunition ever, but when in reality they do, it's just forbidden. <laughs> and then also if you want to mass unforbid it, um, I can't really do it right now, but if you just go to the stock screen, the top one just says ammo, you could also just like click, 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 and unforbid all of them if you don't know where they all are. Yeah, like I said, as long as there is a trench right in front of what they're shooting at for training, they'll fall down into the trench and just go pick them up. I'm actually just going to make a single rock block, and then I'm going to move this to over here. All right, so we now have... A whole bunch of trained war dogs. And I'm going to go to creatures. And we're going to go to pets and livestock. And I'm going to go to the first one. And I'm going to assign this first war dog to True Freak, the expedition leader. I'm going to assign the second war dog to Wet Pet. Assign the third one to. Eh, you know what? That's enough right now. The named ones can then be removed from here. Why the new fort? This is the same world, lazy man. Um, no, I wasn't getting migrants, uh, which is a problem. And I hadn't gotten a migrants in about three years. And I'd achieved all my goals. My goal was to get the queen into the fort, which we did. Um, get the gremlin to join the faction, which it did. And, um, what was the other goal I had? Got the Gorlack in the fort, tamed the Gremlin, fought with Goblin. Can't remember if there was any other ones. But anyway, anyway yeah, I, I'd completed all the goals, and so we ended it on kind of a cliffhangery uh, Helm's Deep situation where I lost a good chunk of my military, and I was like, well, I think now's a good time to retire it, let the fort continue running. And, and st because, like, I'll, I'll basically what I've done was, did both of them join? No, only one of them joined, but that's more than enough for me. Um, we had a, this fort had a gremlin cap captain of the guard by the end, which is pretty good. Um, versus, like, just doing what I've done with the last, like, four or five forts I've done, which is just grind it all the way to the end and, like, eventually dig too deep. I just didn't want to do that this time. So, um, instead I decided to, um, go in a completely different route with it. Which was retire it and start a new fort. Besides, uh, getting gremlins in the fort, I think, is just going to forever be... Uh-oh. <laughs> Doggo is fighting with common snapping turtle. Yep, dog scratches common snapping turtle on the left front foot, denting the scale and bruising the muscle. The war dog scratches the common snapping turtle in the head, tearing the fat and bruising the muscle. The snapping turtle has been knocked unconscious and clearly started puking a whole bunch. Oh, there it is. Now a seriously injured common snapping turtle. Relatively close to my dwarves. S slowly gonna become a threat. Um... You literally didn't follow DF at all for the last months. Have there been any big, uh, have there been some big game changing, uh, changing updates like doors getting destroyed by big baddies? Uh, goblins actually are threats again. They fixed trolls and vampires. Um, UI is now searchable. Um, although this is all in the experimental branch right now. Uh, adventure mode is coming out in April and there's a trailer for it. Um... I think those are the major ones. Typically murdered by elephants, oh boy. A floating coffin, sure, actually, you know, not wrong. It's just like a plane is a giant, like, airborne cigar. Speaking of the cigar pff, jokes earlier. And um, this is Slap Rock, Fortress of Slap Rock, um, which I just started like an hour ago, not even. Uh, and we are the Crimson Will of Smiths. Turtle soup soon? 
still not dead, so no. Not just yet. How have goblins become more of a threat? So goblins haven't been able to tame animals in the caverns. So the way goblins are supposed to work in world gen is goblins are supposed to build fortresses and they're supposed to build pits. Pits are basically like surface forts. They're like dwarven helixes. Their fortresses are supposed to burrow down into the world and connect with the different cavern layers, right? When they invade you, they still do the same thing as they do normally. However, now when they invade you, they don't just invade you with goblins. They will actually invade you with beak dogs more consistently, first off. And they also now have the ability to invade you with trolls, uh, blind cave ogres, um, cave dragons, um, mineras, um, any tameable, war trainable creature that lives in the basement. Um, now, they used to do this before, but some of the animals are new. Cave dragons are new, as an example, but ogres and whatnot are not, so... Elephant rampages are back. Those never left. You just need to settle in an untamed wild biome that happens to have elephants. All right, there we go. Found the aquifa. I need to dig through this now. At least I'm getting shells. I mean, I would have to butcher them, so I'm no, I'm not, in fact, getting shells. Ooh, sandstone. It's a fun material. New fort indeed, yes. You just discovered the game yesterday and you're hooked. I'm always amazed that people still discover this game. But no problem. The, uh, fortunately, I I don't make the best content, but I make a lot of it. Well, there's our flux. We got chalk. All right, so right in here, I'm just going to real quick make a meeting zone. I'm just going to make it... Five worshippers, two worshippers. So I've got two dwarves worshipping the god of luck, gambling, and games, and five worshipping the god of death. Well, the willful learning will just make this a temple. And I will remove all the dogs from here so they don't go hang out outside. I still don't get what you're doing ramp wrong with ramps. Ramps aren't that complicated. Which also actually means that I have a really bad I do a really bad job generally of like explaining to people how ramps work because I don't think they're that complicated. I'm just gonna let them finish mining out this stuff. Which is mostly being done here for aesthetics. think you're getting there? I'm sure you are. I have faith. So, a wet pet is now meditating on death. Excellent. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, to, to me, like, Minecraft exists, so in my silly, like, I guess, brain, my mind just feels like because Minecraft exists, people should just be aware of the connections between this game and Minecraft, but clearly they're not, so. I actually need two blocks. And I'm gonna do those first. And the reason I'm gonna do those first is because I would like to make a carpenter shop so I can make some beds. As in, like, it inspired the world generation for the game that Minecraft is based on and literally shouts out Dwarf Fortress and Dwarf Fortress sayings on the main menu of Minecraft. Like, praise Armok and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, in, in, in my dumb brain, I just assume that more people are aware of it than they are, I guess. 
And Minecraft was originally of, of a fork of a game called Infiniminer, which literally used Dwarf Fortress's world gen as direct inspiration for how it generated its maps. Granted, it was a first-person shooter made by the guy who ended up making Space Chem, but... <sighs> I mean, Terraria is a very different game. Let's just start making blocks. You can finish making those things, and then I'll deconstruct you. You'll make bed. Oops. Bed. 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 One, two, three, four, five. We'll just do five beds. And then jump down to here. Has that water dried up yet? God damn it. Grr. <laughs> we'll just stick down anyway. All right. Well, that's round two. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that that's more what it is. That's actually a really good, de like, description. It's, it's, uh... What one person considers common knowledge is, like, a mystery to somebody else, right? Yeah, webs plus poison are a brutal combination. That's like just straight up offensive. Like, heck, what? Why? Why are we being so mean to Dwarfort and also, like, all indirectly derogatory towards Rimworld? Like, all you're really gonna do with that statement is start fights. So, but no. I, if anything, Rimworld is Dwarf Fortress if it had a lot of the under the hood mechanics removed and replaced with tower defense and combat mechanics. It's kind of like, you know, my current statement and every now and again, this starts arguments in my chat. So please don't. And if you do, I will just time people out. Um, but Rimworld owes all of its success to the existence of Dwarf Fortress. That's just a fact. But the way I describe the two is Rimworld is like StarCraft and Dwarf Fortress is Crusader Kings. And um, if you're just here to troll in my chat, please cease speaking. When you have something like logical and adult to say, you feel free to speak. Or like go to the YouTube chat or something because <laughs> I just, I, I, don't, I don't need trolling in my chat. It's not why I stream. I stream for discussion. Go to a chat that has Pepe's and Keck W active if you want to troll. Lots of people do. Just like lots of people like Rimworld. They're very different games. I also like Soul Calibur, which is what I think of when I see SC. <laughs> Not that I was ever any good at it, but... What are most of these dwarves doing? Eating. Got it. Uh, it in instigates trolling and just being mean to the streamer. And I have a thick skin, but I don't want a community that exists purely to make fun of me. If I wanted a community that existed purely to make fun of me, I would stream on TikTok. <laughs> Thanks, Silver Chief. The pills help. <laughs> Same with the therapy. Yeah, it's because it's stopping the rock from leaking water. Because these, this is an aquifer. Apparently these two aren't, for some reason. But I think it's because, like, part of the reason I have a weirdly low tolerance for that kind of behavior on Twitch, Mallet, is I've been streaming on Twitch for 10 years. I've been doing this way longer than most people. Um... I remember almost every era of Twitch. And I remember, I'm crotchety old man in some ways when it comes to Twitch. And so I like communities that hang out and talk. I don't know. Hi, Stormwolf. Ah, no, you're fine. I mean, I, I, I saw you in YouTube comments yesterday. 
You actually did catch the stream. Hello. Unless you're a different storm wolf, which would be funny. Not impossible, though. I mean, here's the thing, right? Feel free to troll, right? But if you're going to troll, I kind of have, like, two unspoken rules. Be funny and be good at it. A lot of people just take the term trolling and they go, be mean at person, I laugh. They, and they think of that as trolling. Well, just remember, one of the most mentally unstable and also heavily trolled streamers on Twitch ended, it, uh, ended his own life, right? As somebody who's very mentally unstable, I can't handle a lot of that shit. Gremlin Fortress is done? Yeah. Uh, the save file is available on my... Um, on my Discord, though. So, yes. It gets very, very, like, real very quickly, but wreckful. Airsoft fan. Be funny. If you're gonna troll, be good at it. Wreckful. Apparently chat needs their hearing checked. It's okay. Um, mostly just patching stuff, making stuff work properly. You have blue blood in your, f and uh, you, you are, f are, what? I have no idea. What, what are you? A sea? I'm trying to think what has blue blood. Uh, s as those crabs, but they're not fuzzy. I don't know. What are you? A troll? Uh, they have more turquoise blood. I, I don't know. I think of that kind of blue as like turquoise, but. You found a dwarf who pre 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 prefers to consume cave dragon. I, I found dwarves that like, I once saw a dwarf that preferred to consume live spiders. Just spiders. Like, not cooked. No particular part of spiders. Just spiders. So, like, when it, when it comes to dwarves that like to eat funny things, it's like, oh, boy. I like that wriggly feeling when they go. <laughs> it's like when I was, like, yawning while riding my bike and ate a mosquito when I was a kid. Uh, there's syndromes, but there isn't diseases, no. Syndromes are not, are not diseases, and diseases are not syndromes. But you can contract syndromes. And um, has Tarn talked about it? Yes. He thinks it would be extraordinarily unfun. <laughs> Just like it is in RimWorld. Extraordinarily unfun. And at the scale of Dwarf Fortress, I mean, maybe you could have, like, a small sickness, but would, what would probably happen if there was, like, I don't know, a flu that would occasionally kill dwarves is people would just be mad on the Discord and leave negative reviews about how dwarves are dying randomly. <laughs> it's more likely. If anything, I think illnesses are something that would play better in adventure mode. Um, maybe, like, a super under-the-hood thing that's barely noticeable in fortress mode. Ad, uh, this ad made you crave Reese's. I have no idea what ads are playing. I just know that there's ads playing. That's playing. Um, no, they, they they are the same. It's just different colors of sand. I think some dwarves can like prefer red sand, but okay. Let's see how the drying up of the basement is going. I just have to dig through it. I don't want to, but I have to. Do not be too hyped for any video game ever because that just simply equals uh, inevitable disappointment. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you want me to tell you a little bit of history about myself, my life? I'm bipolar. 
I have chronic depression. And I didn't technically finish high school. <laughs> Until a few years later. So, you know, it's not exactly a super infrequent situation for a human to be in. Honestly, it was pretty good, but I was uh, not living up to the hype. Every, I, there was a lot of people that were really excited for that game, wasn't there? I never fully got why people were so excited for it. Runs in the family, Stormwolf. I mean, I don't know if I want to just turn the uh, start of a new fort into like a mental health discussion about why this industry attracts chronic loners um, with broken brains, but it kind of does. We're all craving the next WoW. Maybe you are. I wish they would stop making MMOs. <laughs> But, like, I guess two kinds of people. Locked doors are still largely unbreakable, yeah. Just don't lock them if you want them to operate the way they used to. It's kind of the way I've been running it as of late. I hope this isn't too thick of an aquifer. This is what? One, two, three, four, five. Seems to be all the sandstone layers. But I need to wait for it to dry up again. Otherwise, I'm going to start losing my yaks and my horses. I may just have to butcher them. They're <laughs> so goddamn annoying to get through. So disable them in your game and don't complain about them and preach about how much you hate them. I don't care to hear, hear about how much you hate them. That's fine if you do. It's actually one of my least favorite things about disabilities is that people like to brand themselves as their disabilities. It's like, there's plenty of things wrong with my brain, but I'm never going to market myself as that. I think it's just healthy to be aware of them. Arende, hello. It's good to see you. No, it doesn't. Aimless. <laughs> because, uh, simply put, n no, it doesn't. If you dig up from underneath them, they don't cancel the digging, though, pro tip. Mm hmm? Just like many things. Forks are incredibly useful. Sometimes they can be very irritating. I don't know why one would be irritated by a fork, but some people are ir probably irritated by a fork. Is not acceptable ammo? Okay. I don't agree. Can we change the subject now? <laughs> I don't care to keep talking about this. Like, if, if I'll go back to talking about being bipolar, if you like. <laughs> this is, I, there's nothing I can do about it. If you don't like it, disable aquifers in your world and shut up. <laughs> and then com complain to the devs, not me, because I... <clears throat> or use InstaDig and DF hack, or, like, disable whatever the fucking DF hack. Like, just, I, who cares? I can't help you, man. <laughs> Hearing about how much you hate something and how unacceptable it is doesn't do anything. You gave your five-year-old a fork yesterday and she demanded chopsticks. Oh, wow. Pretty angry about the fork. What Were you eating, like, Japanese food? Because if so, perfectly valid, legitimate demand on behalf of your five-year-old. Aquifers add tension because they force you to dig slowly in a biome where, yo, there's danger on the surface and I'm running out of food. I enjoy that. 
you don't, that, that's fine. I, I don't care. <laughs> In the cave, uh, in cave, in caven traps, does the the force grow if I drop a solid layer of rock rather than a floor? Floors like explode when they hit the ground. Solid layer of rock um, will just completely eviscerate anything it lands on. I was cheating a thirty-five layer deep aquifer. Cool. Next question. Cannot use chopsticks. It's, not, it's a pretty simple, like, finger movement. I learned how to use chopsticks a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, yes, dropping a solid wall is more effective. Uh, are, you, are you talking about, like, dugout walls or, um, like, built walls? Because built walls and built floors are the same. Or for schemer. Which one did I give schemer? <laughs> that's, that's the next question. I don't know which one I gave Schemer to. You're a proficient liar. It's not you. It wasn't Wetpad, was it? Well, it's not. Probably not you. Ermalok, thanks for the five pack of gift subs. We've been watching as much in the last few weeks. Did I finish Creature Keepers? Yeah, I'm done with it. I still need to upload that save, though. I don't know which one I gave this. <laughs> Maybe it's you? Chemist, astronomer, critical thinker. I have no idea which one I gave Schemer. I can't find it. <laughs> there one down here, maybe? Where is the last dwarf? Not the doctor. I already selected. I already checked you. Maybe? No, it's not Rith. I already selected you multiple times. I have no idea. Which one do you want? <laughs> Just pick one. Uh, to quote my sister-in-law, since this conversation is continuing, um, having a disability is an explanation. It's not an excuse. Dr. Cap. Slippery John is a competent speaker. Yeah, I, I, I do not know which one got schemer, if I'm being honest. Um, is greatly pleased by, his, by her own looks and accomplishments. Is brave in the face of imminent danger and tries to do things correctly each time. She has an active imagination. She can sometimes act without deliberation, and she... Uh, tends to act with a little... She tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. She tends to avoid any physical confrontations and works to square this natural tendency with her respective martial prowess. And she likes to take it easy, is currently more rude, and has, is and currently is more confident, and currently is more shameless, and currently is less private, and mutters under her breath when she's angry. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Up in the temple is just contemplating it. I mean, we do have a god of gambling, so that does check out. She dreams of creating a great work of art and for, personally finds maintaining decorum a simple, silly and fumbling waste of time. Sees working hard as a foolish waste of time. And believes it is important to conceal emotions and refrain from complaining. Sees competition as wasteful and silly and does not care about fairness. She likes chromite and sterling silver and dementoid and linen fabric and the color red, purple, and earrings and buckets and yaks for their shaggy hair, giant mantis for their predatory nature, and the and chestnuts for their smelly catkins? Are they smelly? I I know that they have catkins, but like, 
are they smelly? Uh, the words of the the wild fell and the sight of the wondrous sister when possible first consume Nautilus and maize beer and whip wine. Whip vine, not whip wine. Uh, you're in love with wet pet. So Slippery John is in love with wet pet. This is a problem. <laughs> and you're annoyed after having a drink uh, without a goblin cup or mud. Uh, a dementoid is a type of gem. I, I had that exact same moment when I first read the words Dementoid. I was like, what in the world is a Dementoid? Uh, to finish dumbing, and anyone else wanted to watch it in the Japanese to finish subtitles, and she kept on complaining the whole movie uh, that the Japanese was the original voice track, and it sounds hollow and devoid of feeling, which made the whole movie miserable to watch. Yeah, it sucks. Also, I'm building over the floors here to um, remove the, what's the, water, the word, the water quicker. Um, I can't say I've ever had that experience. Excellent. I also realized that it would be wise to unpause the game. That would probably speed things up. It's probably not actually going to go that far down. Nope. Kept okay. still in the aquifer. I just had to start that water drying or it wasn't going to dry. How deep do light aquifers go? I have no idea. Light aquifers is not a guaranteed depth. It's usually in one type of rock, so it's however deep this sandstone's gonna go. So people always ask, is um, light aquifer, how, how deep is a, high, is a light aquifer and how deep is a heavy aquifer? It's not the depth, it's the amount of water you get out of it. So like a light aquifer could be like 10 Z levels tall. It could be 30 Z levels tall. It could be 80 Z levels tall. I don't know, <laughs> and won't know until I'm done digging it. And he the only difference between a light aquifer and a heavy aquifer is the amount of water that comes out of the aquifer. It's got nothing to do with the, like, how, how tall it is. I was just waiting for those to get finished being built first, so that I don't have dwarves not mining, because I need them all to do this at the same time. I also can't sell today, don't worry. Hey! Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> How ironic. First cavern layer is one I hit with no trees. <laughs> is that, are those bats? Or an owl on the surface. <laughs> It's also all sandstone. Um, so the reason there's no trees on this layer is because this is still in the aquifer. Cool. Desert cave in the desert. Yep. Yeah. Let's check out. What a terrible place this is. This won't be too hard to uh, block off, though, so that's good. Although I can't do it on this bottom one because then I won't be able to dig down. 
There's also coal down here, so that's good. Not that I can mine much of it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You can't dig through a heavy aquifer. You re it requires pumps and other things. But like I said, this is easy enough to block off, so I don't care. And then if the obsidian cube is safe to harvest, it doesn't even have a red dot in the middle. So yeah, probably. I would just like to try and find some, like, unless the game decides to be kind and give me moss growing, which it isn't, so. Chat, the game's being mean to me. What do I do? Keeps going. <laughs> Thanks for telling me, game. I really wish that DF Hack would stop turning that feature back on every time it updates, which it has been, and I'm greatly annoyed by this fact. <laughs> You want to try and make a fort in a heavy aquifer, but you don't want to hate yourself enough to do this right now? If you do it on a volcano, the edge of the volcano um, won't have the aquifer. The obsidian around the edge of the volcano won't, will not have an aquifer. So breaking the aquifer right there. This is a pretty deep aquifer. It just keeps going. No, not really. I would kind of describe a volcano start as largely an easy mode start. Because it's like an unstoppable defense, um, infinite like metal smithing resources. I, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're, uh, uh, volcanoes largely just make the game easier. Yep, still there. So I have a feeling we're now in conglomerate. So it's a whole other type of stone to work through now. What does smoothing the stone do? It stops the water from dripping from the aquifer. Otherwise, this whole pipe would just be full of water. I wouldn't be able to keep digging if I wasn't smoothing. The smoothing stops the aquifer. Um, very quickly. <laughs> I, I mean, I, as I as I literally just said, this this would be more than seven deep already. Speaking of bugs, this was actually a bug in the game, smoothing the the aquifers, but it's been left in. In fact, I, in fact, I think it got patched out for a bit. And they were planning on in adjusting it? Yep. The, he also said that, like, years ago. So. <laughs> I don't know. I will keep using it until I can't use it anymore. Eventually, it's a feature. I mean, there's plenty of things in this game that eventually became features. I need to do two other things. I need to deconstruct this. I need to make a craft store shop. 
I need to make some mugs. I can deconstruct you. Start cutting gems. We're in late autumn, so I'm not going to get traders for a while. So I don't really need to worry about this. People like that room for some reason? Is it set as a meeting zone? Like, by filling cracks in the walls? Yeah, it's not a bad way of putting it, actually. Is the Dragon's Fort done? Yep. Your, your dwarf died as well. Uh, the reason that, that that fortress is done is um, I wasn't getting migrants at all. Ever since I got the queen in my fort, we just stopped getting migrants. Uh, the, and this is the same faction in the same world with the same queen. Uh, the fort is technically still alive. So what I did was we had a very epic final battle, basically, uh, where we just barely defeated a massive goblin army of like 600 and then um, called it. Retired the fort and the fort's still there. Although I need to check it every season and see if the goblins have taken over it. I have a question. What is it with Mac users that make Windows software work in wrappers, naming them after diff different types of alcohol? Because I know about wine, but YouTube chat over here just mentioned something called whiskey. B what? <laughs> Software naming conventions. I I don't understand. <laughs> wine is not an emulator. I never said it was. I, I, I know what you're saying. I get it. Yeah, let's go all the way doing. Well, also, I need to fix these stairs. Yeah, but they still called it wine. Did the gremlins make it? Yes. One of them joined the faction. And, um, oh, guess what, chat room? We made it through. And guess what? We made it through into Quartzite. I'm going to go one more layer down. Fun fact, if you mod the game, you can do literally anything. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, duh. Is Quartzite good? It's pink. What's special about Quartzite? It's pink. Two elephants just pulled your wagon uh, and they were a breeding pair. Mm. I don't know. Ha ha happy Valentine's Day? Mm. So I don't really know where to go now. I still need to get to caverns. So... I can either just dr dig straight down or I could hollow out a little space here and then dig straight down. What do you guys think? You guys want me to just keep digging? Or do you guys want me to start building in the pink layer and then dig down like, I don't know, over here somewhere? Because if we just keep going straight down, we're not going to end up big, dig digging in the quartzite. Well, the layer above it, well... Well, two layers above it is conglomerate. Chat's saying dig. All right, we'll keep digging. Let's go down to layer three. Whoops. Wrong tool. The animals do need the moss. This is true. Otherwise, we'll lose the yakables. They haven't had food since we got here and we're in early winter. I actually I don't know how long they, they have before they start dying. But we found Galana and tetrahedrites so far. 
Uh, there's also Lemonite up at the top. Hurry out the Quartzite layer? I mean, we could absolutely do that, yeah. It's also probably got uh, Tetrahedrite in it, because Quartzite usually has Tetrahedrite in it. Yelena, your beloved, for all of those, le all that lead furniture. I actually really like making lead furniture because it kind of looks like iron. Okay, we've hit Gabra now. I don't think. Oh yeah, no, the, we've got chalk further up as well too. Wait, is quartzite? Quart is no quartzite isn't a flux. But yeah, no, we, we have chalk further up. I wish that there was blue and purple stone. Friend, meet Kimberlite. Meet Jet. Meet uh. Chat. What are other blue ones? Because Kimberlite's kind of blue. Microcline's blue. Jet's dark blue. Is there a purple one? I guess Jet is kind of purple if you squint at it. Cobalt, yeah. I mean, I was going to put the barracks up on the top layer, but you know. Lead furniture makes beefy holder haulers. I I would say it makes moving in slower, but <laughs> uh, last fort maybe might might be what you're looking for, or goal, Gonzo Gorilla. How did I manage to do... Okay, this needs to be stopped. There we go. Almost accidentally screwed up my own staircase. That would have been kind of annoying. Uh, because chat complains when it's too fast. Curry fat. And I get... I start getting complaints if I go... Ooh, more Kimberlite. I start getting complaints if I go faster than... Imitite? Ooh. I generally get complaints when I go faster than um, 80. I mean, I know a, a streamer when she streams this game, not often enough, Sag Face, uh, she plays at 30. So, for the same reason. Uh, no. Because I think Valentine's Day deserves to do one thing, which is cease existing. And I felt this way when I wasn't single. Because at the time, I worked in a restaurant, and it was hell. Valentine's Day is worst fake holiday of the year. Poor guy got rejected? Mm. Careful. It's literally a shitty holiday. It's just... Reminder to, hey, maybe you should take care of your partner and be nice to your partner. How about you just be nice to your partner? I always thought it was a Hallmark invented holiday, but... Yeah, we, we talked about this earlier today, pun intentional. New Fort, yes, New Fort. Storm again. V-Day pay, payday in the restaurant? I guess it's only payday if you uh, worked in a restaurant that actually got tips. I worked in fast food. So, pfft. no, not really. It was just significantly more annoying and busier day than normal. Trying to link a lever to a floodgate, but the action keeps getting paused. Any idea why? Uh, something is causing the job to cancel halfway through. Um... That's my only explanation. You have to figure out why the job is canceling. So find the cancellation in here, and it should tell you. What Nimlark said. Yeah. 
It's your wife's B-Day? Well, that's way more important than Valentine's Day and completely unrelated to Valentine's Day. <laughs> My dad's birthday's on 420 and he hates weed. Speaking of stupid fake holidays. <laughs> So the real question is, when are we going to find that next cavern layer, hey? Because there was so many people dating. I just don't celebrate my birthday, but... Dwarf sonar? Cheat all you like. I don't cheat. At that point, you might, even, you might as well just type in reveal. All. Whoops. Although it would help if I spelled reveal right. Which I'm not going to do. Possible. Ra uh, raging cave. Speaking of stupid fake holidays. You see, I'm not a cheater, Loomis. If you, if you want to go cheat, you can go cheat all you like. See, March 14th, I can get behind. I can eat a pie. You know, it's funny because I, I do all this shit talking about fake holidays. I, I really like Halloween. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of a double standard. Uh, just go to my YouTube channel and look up Dwarven Sonar. It's an exploit that's been in the game as, old, as long as the game's existed. Came in at the right time, Pi Day? Sure. Hello, Talon. before playing for five to 10 hours. Okay. Remember how I said, if you enjoy cheating, go nuts and enjoy your game. Play play the game exactly the way you want. I don't care. <laughs> Nor do I want to hear about it in particular. That's just shit that actively ruins my gameplay. The only time I will use the exterminate command is to see how many goblins is in a siege. Or if my frame rate goes to zero. For some reason. You like Saturday? Saturday's pretty good. I, I'm actually, like, a, a pretty big fan of Thursdays. All right. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up. Where was that? On this side. There it is. I'm going to tell the dwarves to auto mine this. Next to the Kimberlite. Thanks, Fraga. See, that's my secret, I suppose, enemy, is I'm always at work. If I have an internet connection, I'm at work. This is all just me trying to save my wildlife. Or my my horses. Your lappy did not like the fire. Fortunately, fire burns out pretty quick. As soon as you get, you know, some rain... Fire, go away. But that's got nothing to do with your laptop. That's just the game in general. Ah, that was my suspicion. Found it! Layer 82, apparently. Ooh, and it's pretty. It's not that vertical, but it's nice and open. Water over there. Not that we don't have enough of that already. All the way down to layer 92. Now the question of where do I start building? It only took me a season and a half to find the first cavern. The first cavern layer with stuff growing in it, rather. Although I may have missed one. Mm, no, because the, the bottom one is purple, so. Very fluffy cavern. Yes, this is true. Ooh, I like this. I like this plateau up here. Oh, 
I mean, okay, so here, here's kind of what I'm thinking right now, just looking at this. We build inside of this. Inside of this pillar here. Um, I could wall this layer off. I can remove all of these stalactites here. Dig those down. Dig them down over here too. All the way down to the base of this. Build most of the fort in this layer. Build combat shit on the top and put the prison over here. You know, here's the thing, right? When, like, when you designate it away. I mean, that's not cheating, right? Like, I, I don't consider that cheating at all, Benchy. Like, here's the thing. If you're using a tool like DFHack to fix your game, or if you're using an exploit to make the game more en enjoyable for yourself, it's not cheating, right? I will call things cheating if Chad is actively telling me to make the game less enjoyable for myself. Does that make sense? So if something happens in the game that makes you mad and you go, I need to fix this, that isn't cheating. There's nothing cheating about that. That is absolutely understandable and you should do that because you are making the game better for yourself. But if Chad suggests something that I don't want to do that makes the game easier, that lessens my experience with the game, that's cheating. I know it's like, Massive amounts of semantics, but that's how I feel about playing games. So, as an example, if Chad is just like, I'm gonna check what all animals are on the entire map, I would say, I would joke and I would state to you that that's cheating, or I consider that cheating, because that would lessen my experience with the game. If it doesn't lessen your experience in the game, just go nuts, do it. You click on a pit zone and assigning anything crashes your game. That's weird. Let me test that. Just, just, just let me real quick, quick save so I can <laughs> test that and see if. Uh... And let, let's let's see if I can crash the game because if that's a repeating crash, we need to report that. Would I try to reach a vault never experience? You mean like in fortress mode? I haven't settled on a vault in a very long time. I don't really see the point though. That's more of an adventure mode endgame thing. <sighs> I mean, I know some people who consider mist generators cheating. Right? I know some people that consider... I don't know. Using drawbridges as a defense mechanism is cheating. Have I smelted coins lately? Uh, did, uh, about creature keepers? <laughs> Let's just go up to here. Pit pond. Animal. Set it as a pit. Funk. Does not crash my game. So. Is the game updated since I started playing? <laughs> I do not have a patch since I started playing. I, I don't know what's going on then. Um, I would take your crash logs and chuck it into the bug reporting room on the Kitfox Discord if possible. I'm using the mouse is cheating. How else would you... Oh, right. Um, you must be one of those people who plays on Windows 7 and uses a touch screen on a Surface. Okay, perfectly understandable. Yes, of course, you're playing with your finger. Oh, sorry, no, Windows 8. My bad. How could I possibly be so insensitive? That's what I'm talking about. That's what. That's more or less what we're gonna end up doing here. If I do a single line, I 
I mean, I've had people yell at me and say that the game is not incentivizing them to do those things that I mentioned that are in the game, right, Denshi? So, I think cheating is a personal thing. What I consider cheating isn't what you consider cheating. You can use Legends mode to find vaults. Um, in Fortress mode right now, the there are two ways to find vaults, which is making them exposed when you generate your world, which I don't like doing. Uh, the second way is by... Uh, using DF hack, you kind of need adventure mode to find vaults. Mm -hmm. Dogma is correct here. What are vaults? Spoilers.tm. Uh, vaults are kind of like uh, the end game for adventure mode, but um, they are basically surface towers that uh, angels live in alongside of demons. Um, not really. They're kind of they're they're basically like prove that you have mastered adventure mode end game thing, and if you know specifically where they are in fortress mode, or alternatively. Um, go to the artifacts screen and skim through it or use the DFX search function or whatever the fuck uh, until you find slabs. Um, then you can raid the, the for the slabs because if you click on these, you start a mission to try and get the item. Um, so if you can find a slab in here, which I have to get through all these books to then find it because they're usually at the top of the books. But um, if you can find slabs in this screen... Um, then you can click raid. They're almost, unless it says that they were held by a, like a character or something, they're almost always uh, in a vault, and you can actually raid vaults from fortress modes. But uh, keep in mind, you will be attacking randomly generated creatures. They don't generally fight back, like they won't attack you. Um, at least I've never seen that happen. Maybe I can, I don't know. Um, and then you can steal their stuff. A slab is either in a necromancer's tower or a vault. Both of those things are possible, but it's more likely in a vault if when you're hovering over it, because on the overworld, when you're hovering over a thing, the screen centers on its location, right? So if it centers on literally nothing, then it's very likely. Give me crafts. That's funny. It's Then it's very likely that it is, in fact, not in a necromancer tower. It's very likely that it is either, uh, like, owned by some sort of mega beast, but it'll say that it was owned by a mega beast. There you go. Here's one. Metal slab. Uh, it was uh, last held by the Etten. By an Etten. So... Uh, this is a crashing metal slab. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. Uh, it reads the secrets of life and death. So this is a slab, um, which was last held by an Etten. So it's likely just an Etten. Uh, or in a that that pit there. Because that's what was in the center of the screen. Let's see if I can find another one. There's another one. Uh, Phantom Bone! Last held in Vise Dumbrash, the Ashamed Deep. So that is probably a vault, unless, um... Nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. No, nope. yeah, okay, so it's somewhere in here. So that's probably in a vault. Found a vault. <laughs> yeah, I've seen giants and Ettons with slabs many times. It's always kind of funny. I'm trying right now so hard to just get down here so that I can pen and pasture my animals right here. Come on, dwarves. Although, there's probably some stuff growing down in here, so they're probably not entirely starving to death anymore. Nope, not yet. <laughs> Come on, dwarves! Dig! My animals are all starving! Or build, actually, not dig. Lots of sprinting. At least you're feeling fondness when speaking with a friend. 
Keep digging, dwarves. Just need this one to get done. Why can't they just eat sand? You know, I've been asking them that since we got here, and they, they, they insist that that's not an option. Yes. There are some mushroom patches on the sand. Well, it's okay. They will be fine now. That man, let them eat. You know, honestly, let them eat sand is uh, very dark. <laughs> just, just especially combined with like right next to um, let them eat cake. That is a very dark sentence to read. <laughs> hey, we did it. I could have just dug. That would actually be faster, but look at you. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Look at that happy little yak. Okay, so now I need to start. Well, I, I need to start doing two. No! Pony died. Rip pony. Come on, yak. You're on layer 60. You can make it. Yeah, it starved. Uh, my two-humped camel also starved to death, but we saved the yaks. I'm just gonna go up to here real quick and just make a place to put the bodies. <laughs> just, 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 you know, just, just get rid of those. It's, it's fine. Man, the camel almost made it. That's a shame. Okay, first off, I'm just gonna real quick make a butcher shop just on the off chance that, like, I can butcher them. I, I doubt I can, but just on the off chance I can. I almost guarantee you it's not gonna let me. Not gonna let me. So no, no, no reason to have that. Um. So in that case, let's just go here. Let's go giant cockatiels. Holy shit. Um. Standing orders: refuse and dumping. Gather outdoor refuse and vermin remains and all that shit. Is there a reason they don't want to haul those bodies? Oh, I know why. Cyan refuse. They may already be considered refused because they're so dead. Nope. I mean, okay, there we go. <laughs> Is there a particular reason you guys are insisting on not doing this? True Freak's got it. Thanks, True Freak. Um, let's just make some rock mugs real quick. Few mugs, that'll be plenty. Going to make a mechanic shop. And I'm actually gonna jump over here and I'm gonna go to object now. Labor, stone use. I always have a hard time finding this menu for some reason or another. I don't know why. Anyway, we're not gonna use um, chalk for constructions. I really, speaking of, I really hope somebody, like, clipped the Will Smith thing earlier on. I was laughing too hard to actually notice <laughs> if anybody clipped it. Okay. So now that we've done that, thunk. Now, where do we begin? I'm thinking... I'm going to have to be pretty careful when I build this because I'm going to agitate the cavern creatures pretty quickly. I guess the decision that we need to make is do I nerf the cavern invaders or not? 
I have been doing that about half the time. I don't know what kind of cavern creatures we're going to get in the cavern invasions. So I don't know. If we don't nerf them, how do you nerf them? Uh, you go to settings, you go to difficulty, you click custom, and then you scroll down. And then uh, this is their population scale. So they show up initially at 10, and then they can have maximum 50 per layer. Or 50 per layer per two chunks spawned. The reason I say this is because either I nerf the cavern invaders and buff the surface invaders, or we leave it at default. Oh yeah, you can do that at any point. You can also, like, um, if you go to your difficulty settings, you can just straight up, like, turn off invasions of any kind if you want. Um, you can also just turn them off in here. Um, economy just makes stuff more valuable. Required. Could bu should buff you should buff the cavern dweller spawn rate. Did I say that was an option? I mean Kappa indeed, but like geez. Let's not be hasty. <laughs> default. Leave it default and see what happens. I mean I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's uh start off by harking down. Well mm, let's not hack down the trees just yet. We'll dig first. So I need to pick what layer I start on. I kinda wanna start on this layer. Let's just unk, 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 and dig into here. I kind of just want to hollow this whole thing is out. Oh, what is it? It's Cabro. So this layer can be like storage. I mean, I think every single fort I've done in recent memory has just had cave swallow people. Except for one that had, like, fish people. I think that you should build exactly the kind of fort that you want to build. And if anybody says anything is sacrilege in Dwarf Fortress, they're missing the entire point of the video game. I, for me, it varies wildly. Sometimes I do cavern forts. Sometimes I do close to surface forts. Sometimes I do surface forts. Sometimes I do tower forts. Sometimes I dig all the way down to the magma sea and build with the lava exposed. I, the last fort I did was practically, a, it was like a, a shallow surface fort. So like it was built in a canyon. The one before that was technically not a surface fort, but it ended up being a giant tower built in a weird mountain shape. Uh, the fort I did before that was a, like a surface glacier fort. Uh, the fort before that, I'm starting to get hazy. I think that was a volcano fort. And then the one before that was a tower. I don't know. In-game. Or hysterical. For a fortress overseer. Do I prefer coke or lava? Uh, Pepsi. I think they have different use cases. I mean, you need one of... You, you don't need coke... You, you don't need lava to make steel but you do need some sort of coal to make steel so i think they have different use cases so asking which one i prefer is like well that's kind of a silly question and also i don't like pepsi <laughs> for clarity's sake i just wanted to make the joke i think both coke and pepsi are kind of gross actually You're a Dr. Pepper person? I don't think I've ever actually had Dr. Pepper. And if I have, it was like one of those things where I had it when I was younger and then decided I didn't like it then and then never tried it again. It very well could have been one of those situations. Ah, I see, I see what's happening. I, I'm just not a pop drinker, really. It, which, well, actually, that's kind of not true. I drink uh, sugar-free Rockstar. But that's about the extent of it. And I only do that when I go to the dollar store. The rest of the time, if I'm going to drink a fizzy beverage, I drink this uh, caffeinated carbonated water stuff, which has no flavoring in it, which I really like. I wouldn't say Rockstar is delicious, but it gets the job done when I 
when I don't feel like making coffee and I'm out and about. It's a bit too sweet, actually, and could do with more carbonation. That's actually my complaint about a lot of soft drinks is they're not hard enough. Do I care for tonic water? I don't drink straight tonic water unless you mean, do I drink soda water? I do drink soda water sometimes, yes. How do I take my coffee? Black. Okay, so I need to hotkey some layers. This is going to be default hotkey. Um, or in an ad break. I'm going to put one at the... Oh. Let's put one right here. I'm going to be mining in this layer. Let's do one here. Let's do one here. Do one here. And one here. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Tea is good. I like tea, but it has to be good tea. Don't forget to milk them yaks. Thanks for the reminder. What if dwarves invented their own soft drink? How many casualties do you think there would be? I don't really understand why it would cause casualties. Um, we're in an ad break at this exact moment, which is gonna last for another 40 seconds. I will be right back. Actually, there was a time Dwarf Fortress had soft drinks. I'm making headcanon for an old bug right now. There was a bug in the game ages ago. Um, I don't even remember when this was because I don't think I was actively playing at the time, uh, which was shortly after they added stress. And what the bug did was it made it that if you were euphoric due to inebriation, you... No, they can't, Nevik. Dwarves cannot read slabs. You can in adventure mode, though. The second you became euphoric due to inebriation, due to drinking alcohol, you permanently gained euphoric due to inebriation, which would landslide you all the way up to maximum happiness, and you'd be stuck there forever. Then Tarn removed it from the game, <laughs> because it was a bug. Um, and I think that was the one time Dwarf Fortress had soft drinks. Yeah, in fort mode, you need a book. The the act there's actually a reason for why dwarves can't read it, as far as I know, and it's it's in a different language. <laughs> the slabs are not in the dwarven language; they're written in a different language, so dwarves can't read it. This mushroom will change your life. Damn right it will. <laughs> We just drink our sadness away all day, every day, forever. Yeah. This is going to be where I'm going to put levers. And then I'm going to jump back up to here, and I'm going to deconstruct this. I'm going to deconstruct this. I'm going to deconstruct this. This is going to be such a slow start to this fort, I'm just realizing. Oh, also, um, I completely missed a dwarf. Nickers bought, got a dwarf. Um, so, Nickers, what kind of dwarf would you like? More like Dwarf Katraz.
Uh, exclamation point goal. King of pudding. We'll always tell you that. Could you be Dolmas? Whoop. Uh, you already have a lover, too. Snickers. He is a pessimist. He tends to avoid crowds, and he lives a fast-paced life. He is brave in the face of imminent danger and finds obligations confining, though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. Literally every single one of my starting dwarves would be a good military dwarf, which is kind of funny. He often feels envious of others and is slow to trust others, and is quite anxious. He talks very loudly when he's excited and snaps his fingers repeatedly when he's excited. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at bad weather. So, hmm. Trying to decide where to farm here, actually. Let me just jump back up to you and finish reading your description, because I'm sure we can find out more. You're satisfied at work? You feel love when caught up in a new romance. Well, I mean, it is it is Valentine's Day, after all. Uh, you, you, feel, you felt fondness after speaking with a friend. Probably about said relationship. Um, he dreams of creating a great work of art and personally finds blind, blind honesty foolish. Another interesting thing about this faction, I haven't seen a single dwarf in this faction with the goal of dreaming of mastering a skill. Not one. <laughs> You're a proficient chemist and a skilled astronomer, by the way. Uh, you're a member of the Gilded Faith because you happen to worship um, the deity of gambling. Is saying great dwarf like saying great Scott, but dwarven edition? Um, well, it is a desert biome, but this is going to end up being a cavern fort. Um, I was going to go for first caverns, but first caverns are full of an aquifer and also uh, have no soil. So, um, because of that, it, it is a ca it's going to end up being a cavern fort in the desert. I just think it's really funny that Wet Pet and Slippery John are a couple. <laughs> that's, that's maybe my favorite, like, dumb side thing in this fort right now. I'm not saying that either of them have or are a dumb side thing, but I just think it's funny. Um, Snickers, you get a, a pet pupper. Your dogs experience trauma, apparently. So I am going to do a floor, please, a floor, please. Or a floor piece, a floor piece, a floor piece, a floor piece, and a floor piece. It doesn't matter what they use. I'm just going to deconstruct them anyway. You guys are going to keep digging. I'm also going to queue this up. Actually, I have two options for this area, chat. Two options. Dig the whole thing out. And then fill it up with pink, pink quartzite. Or dig out rooms. What do you guys think? Dig out the whole thing and fill it up with quartzite or dig out rooms? You cannot remember what it was, though. Uh, it was the, 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 I wondered if, uh, if Bastet realized the name of her, like, uh, artifact. <laughs> Which was Lust something. It was, it was named Lusty something. The something Lusty. Anyway, rather disturbing, if you ask me. Yes, with something luster? Yeah. They got rooms and do some building? Some building once told me the dwarf was gonna roll me. I don't know why this keeps coming up. We'll dig out a little shed down here. 
The steamy luster. Yes, that absolutely sounds correct. I love this, like, trench over here. This looks like a gate to me. What do you think, chat? Does this look like a gate to you? Because that's got water there. But this looks like a gate. We are officially becoming a gated community chat room. This also looks like a gate. It's going to put that there. And then I think I'm just going to go along this side here. And now I realize I'm blocking them off entirely when I'm saying the words gate. They, they are going to become gates, don't worry. Mostly just marking them right now. conglomerate for those two. And this one needs to be blocked with something. Um, there's also these going up. And this going up. Ooh, I like this, pla 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 this plateau as well. <sighs> Why do these all look so good? Mm! I could build like a bridge going from this to that. Mm, that's beautiful. I love it. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to wall this the top of this off, I guess. Have I ever played Adom? I beat it in 2009 and I will never play it again. Oops, I did that side the wrong way. Perfect Forgotten Beast meat grinder waiting to happen. Oh yeah, no, this fort's going to be an absolute meat grinder. I'm going to have to go all the way up alongside of either of those with stairs and seal them up all the way to the top. Oof. At least there's water on this side. That, that makes some things, some parts of this kind of easy. Easier, I guess. This is going to be for seeds. Why that? Why am I never playing it again? Actually, hold on. Are you asking me the original Adom? Or are you asking me about... Um, Caverns of Chaos, the awful, awful, awful sequel. Um, there, well, Adom largely ceased development around, oh God, <laughs> I don't even know what year anymore. Uh, it ceased development a long time ago, I guess is the easy way to put it. And when it ceased development, um, Eventually, it finally, long story short, it returned, did a Kickstarter, added a new expansion pack, and released on Steam. Um, and then the developer was like, I'm going to make a sequel eventually, and made one of the worst roguelikes I've ever played. Um, and the reason I won't play the original again is I liked it at the time, and I tried to go back... I don't even know how long ago. I, I could say a year, but I'd probably be wrong. I tried to go back, and uh, for me, most of the reasons I liked it is rose-tinted glasses, and there are just games I like more now. That's the easy way to put it. That game is designed to be awful and hard. Um, it's designed to be unbeatable. It was made by somebody who didn't know how to make games and made a game based on what his fans wanted and not what is actually good game design. For its time, it is a fucking incredible achievement. As a roguelike in 2024, I, yeah, I don't ever want to play that game again. And also, like, the developer kind of directly made me retroactively dislike it by making one of the worst roguelikes I've ever played with its sequel. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. 
Um, to give you an idea, like you could be 90 hours into that game and step on the wrong tile and it doesn't matter how much of an invincible elder god you are and you instantly die. Like that's, that's that game's idea of balance. <laughs> Uh, we'll do cave wheat, cave wheat in the summer. This one I'll do plump, plump, pigtail, pigtail. Anyone know how many uh, cows a water buffalo can impregnate at once? So you're, you're talking about Dwarf Fortress, right? Just for a wee bit of clarification on that statement. <laughs> um, they just need to be in general proximity of each other. There is no, like, specific limit. Adam's creator should have played more NetHack? Hey, yeah. Um, I think Adam would have been one of the greatest games of all time if... The developer of Adom hadn't talked about open sourcing it. Because when he talked about open sourcing it, he almost immediately started getting death threats from his community. I shit you not, this was like 1990s internet though. Death threats from his community because he hadn't open sourced it yet. So instead of open sourcing it, he walked that back and never open sourced it. And I think that that is one of the biggest shames in the like roguelike community of all time. So, and this is a game that he was developing for free, by the way. And now he's like he he works he's like he's a German dude. He, he works in um, software development and has a very successful software company. So, I I mean who knows? Uh, no death threat is good. There is no like acceptable amount of death threat. So. There is no, like, oh, this person had it bad, or this person had it worse. Like, it's not a contest, and it's a silly thing to even suggest, but there is no amount of death threat that is acceptable. I think the internet was also just a very lawless place in the 90s. But you need to remember, like, there was a very brief period of time there where Adom was getting more downloads every month than Doom. Adom was one of the most popular games in the world for a minute. And that's because it was free and it could run on anything. I've fucked up really bad. <laughs> I've got them doing really, 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 really long distance jobs. Um, so I'm actually going to just go to T and I'm gonna go pause, 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 pause. Let's just get all this food done, do a bunch of plant gathering, and get food sorted because currently we we we're causing myself some problems <laughs> and um i'm also going to go right here make a stockpile uh for just seeds let's go whoop um seeds done right there uh except i'm actually gonna go no and just say plump elements let's say cave wheat let's say sweet sweet pods let's say pigtails and let's say what am I forgetting? I'm not doing dimple cups. Cave wheat, pigtail, plump helmets. Oh, we're done. Cool. Oh, I'm not doing dimple cups in this stockpile anyway. If I do them, they won't be in this stockpile regardless. And then I'm going to go to planters, and I'm going to say you, you, and you. We'll just do three planters. That's fine. Because turns out I need the rest of you guys to go <laughs> gather food, please. Almost never. Uh, it adds a slight value boost to it. King of Pudding. Your favorite DF song is coming up. Uh huh. Was that Death Spiral?
Oh, winter entombs you. Oh. I mean, we're in late winter. So wait, why would winter entombs me? Come on, then. Oh, there's plump helmets. You know, cave swallow on cave weed zoomed out looks like a weird demonic goat. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Looking for plump helmets. That's what I'm doing. I need plump helmets for the noms. Or the horde. You know, whatever. Oh, there we go. Let's just make this slightly bigger. There you go. All the way down here. Uh, that would be excellent until a single dwarf stood underneath the chute and then spontaneously exploded. <laughs> um, because a sock falling at terminal velocity can cause a dwarf to explode. Um, so, I mean, that would be fantastically funny, I guess. Um, I'm more likely to do some pretty elaborate minecart set setups in this, actually. I might make one from here going down to lava to get rid of trash. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder why that dog went missing. That's not a cat. Dropping something down a hole is not a catapult. Dog de decided to try and fight a uh, full size. Um. Oh, that's why my food disappeared. <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. Because I, I actually, I, I had like 20 food or something, and then suddenly it all vanished. I was like, what happened? I guess they must have eaten it. I kind of just like in my brain chalked it up to dwarves can't count or whatever. I'm just going to put a metalsmith down here so nothing runs off with my metalsmither. Uh, you don't need a petition to create your own headcanon, friend. So I really, really, really just need to get a stockpile down here. Uh, don't need wood. Well, actually, no, let's put wood in here. I don't need stone. I'm just going to delete this stockpile, by the way, in a minute. So I'm going to make it until everything's down and in here. And then I'm just going to get rid of it. Because I just I just need dwarves to haul shit down into here. So many diamonds have been discovered. Fortunately, those plump helmets are growing pretty quick. Oh, I also shouldn't put bricks in there. No bars blocks, please. These are what I need. I need like the everything else's. Can you ever do the classic medieval move of dumping pots of boiling fat on people? Tarn's talked about that a couple of times as, like, something he'd like to see in the game in the future, but can you do that right now? No. Crocheting a blanket? That's going to take a while. Don't want any barrels, even though I've been told they work now. Yes. Same world, same sieve. Slightly north in the desert. We are currently right here. This is the old fort. Which um, still has the same queen. Telenartho is still the duchess. 
And uh, I would assume the other Gorlack is still an overlord. This is going to take a while. Oh, you're hauling the dog's corpse, right? You're hauling a mug. What are you investing? Nothing of value. This is the problem with sort of building a quarter fort and then suddenly digging all the way to the bottom and moving. <laughs> Takes a billion years to move everything. I love receiving emails intended for other people. It's very funny. Happens a lot. It's usually addressed to one of my teammates and it's just like, oh, I see, you can't read. <laughs> you can't read like descriptions of where the email's going. That's smart of you. I mean, you have to see how many you have. King of Pudding. You earn them over time. They used to be the way people would pay for song requests in this channel ages ago, and then I got rid of song requests ages ago, and chat wanted to keep it. It's basically just channel points. So you type in exclamation point tickets to see how many you have. Keeps track of your hours and the, the number of tickets you have, which you earn some every hour. And uh, you see how many you have, and then you can gamble them to win more, and it's all bragging rights. Some people have goals, some people don't care. One person in the chat has my bot muted, so they never see it. <laughs> so, you know, do, do what you want to do. Ignore it or care about it. I, I don't care. It is not a big dealio for me. It's just a thing that my chat does. It literally is just a system that predates channel points. That's all it is. Uh, back in the day, or back in my day, every single Twitch channel had some equivalent to this. There we go. We we're getting some, br some brewskis made. Just let that run until it hits 20 or something. Paul dwarves very slowly haul stuff down. What is the choose a duck redeem? Show up in the first hour of the stream and I'll tell you. It's something that gets redeemed in the first like 90 seconds of every stream. Yeah, I still, I personally wish that they never existed. I, I'm not a huge fan of channel points, honestly. Quite literally, King of Pudding, yep. At least the, the brew a drink thing is probably actually just bringing barrels down. Yeah, that's how it is. I was like, I don't know if I need to be brewing drinks. For oh, okay, never mind. He's bringing barrels down, so. This fort will speed up significantly once everything is out of the wagon. Also, it looks like my first round of plump helmets have sprouted, so that's good. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't like them. I don't like channel points because to me, channel points are literally just Amazon being like, so uh, we really, 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 really need Twitch. Twitch, please hate Twitch. 
Twitch, if you have Twitch, could you, Twitch, could you please set up some sort of system so that we can see exactly how engaged people are on the platform so that we can, you know, um, sell ads for higher amounts of money? That's all it is for me because that's how it was explained to me by a friend of mine um, when they first came out. So that's all that they seem like to me is it literally just feels like, oh, it's a, it's a way to gauge engagement. <laughs> and I will never be a huge fan of that, but... You know, it's the same reason that, like, I'm mildly saddened or not saddened, but bothered, I guess, probably would be a better way to word it. I would pause the game, but we're literally just hauling the stuff, so I will, I will, like, just let it run during this ad break. But um, it's pr part of the same reason I'm slightly bothered by the little heart button on the YouTube stream, because it's exactly the same thing. You click the heart button. Yeah. You're saying you shouldn't click on the chest? No, you should because it indicates to Twitch that I have more activity on my chat, which indicates to Twitch that Twitch should promote me. I recommend it to people. <laughs> like, no, unfortunately, it's there now, so we have to, we have to, obey, we have to obey the uh, algorithm and uh, engagement lords. Um, do I personally care? No. I mean, sometimes I just named words, but... Also, um, chat room. Shadow Observer wants you to post beers. I gotta say that the video I put up this morning talking about f like frame rate in Dwarf Fortress is uh, my most disliked video I've uploaded this month, uh, which means instead of having a like to dislike ratio of 99 to 98, uh, it has a, dis uh, a like to dislike ratio of 96%. <laughs> I'm kind to a virtual chat room. <laughs> they don't like me spitting the facts. Hey, look, puppies. Onigiri is fun, but making tasty onigiri is hard. Okay. Rice filling rice. I remember like a very brief period of time, a friend of mine trying real hard to make onigiri and failing repeatedly and burning one of my pans in the process. Wasn't... Wasn't I wasn't thrilled. <laughs> Putting it that way. I was not thrilled by this. You know what's weird and also kind of out of character for me, chat room? There is a part of me that kind of wants to play Helldivers 2. That game looks mindless in a good way. I never played the first one. I did play Magicka a billion years ago, though. I'm just going to make one set of quartzite blocks. Vampire Mayor is now an iron vertical bars prison. Ooh. That's good. Well, as long as he keeps having meetings. That What you need is you need some airlock system to let people in and out of the vertical bars prison so that you could, like, give them donations. You know? Because hey, dude's got to eat everything. Do I have a favorite game that isn't Dwarf Fortress? Uh, Tetris. I traditionally would say Tetris, of, like um, Game Boy Tetris, but these days it's Tetris would be Tetris Effect. I'm very happy that there's sand in these caverns, by the way. Um, have you seen any, um, I would, I would make, make the prison over, make his prison cell his office, like make an office around his prison cell, because what you want to see is you want to see your own dwarves that are kind of upset at air quotes, attending meetings. And if you're seeing that, then things are going well, basically. <laughs> they can have lunch meetings. I mean, I don't know if I would recommend that, but.
I'm still like on this, I need to build ramps for everything kick for some reason. But yeah, you, you want to at least like try and pretend to keep your dwarves happy. I mean, there's meetings not to be confused with snack time. Those are two very different things. Very important things, but very different things. What are we hauling? An almond wood barrel. This might be one of the boringest starts I've ever had to a fortress because I'm just kind of accepting that the next like 40 minutes is going to be dwarves transporting stuff. <laughs> Also, for, for reference, Helldivers 2 is literally just, like, co-op Starship Troopers. But by the magic of devs, so it's, like, a lot of slapstick comedy built in, basically. Goofy, goofy, goofy video game. Chatroom, do you have a favorite game? I will not be offended if you don't say it's Dwarf Fortress. However, if you say World of Warcraft, I might question your personal judgment. Fallout New Vegas, okay. Bloodborne, Mass Effect 2, Halo 3. Portal 2, good call. I prefer Portal 1, but Portal 2 is very good. Rimworld, that's offensive. Brothers of Tale of Two Sons, word, I like that one. Which Pokemon? No, Bastet, that's cheating. That would be like me saying Final Fantasy franchise in brackets. CNC Generals. Ah. Dark Souls 1. Gotcha. League of Legends. I mean, even people who, like, play League of Legends for a living hate League of Legends. What, what, what is your favorite game, Fire and Ice? Well, then uh, that's not your favorite game, then. That's your game, favorite game franchise. That's cheating. Past that. Although, that or you're just self-reporting that they are all the same game. Which I think maybe is more telling and better, even. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the difference between these games. They are the same game, every single Pokemon game. Or D and D, if that can count, I'll allow it. True game freak hasn't put effort in in ten years. I've never played a Pokemon. Uh, that that's not true. The only Pokemon game I've ever enjoyed was Pokémon. No, Pal World took off because it was a meme. Also, I'm really happy that we now live in a post Power World world where people who don't give a shit about Power World have stopped talking about Power World, and people who do give a shit about Power World are just enjoying Power World. <laughs> it's so much more pleasant for everybody. Do I like any anime? No, not really. I like film and media. And sometimes an anime is a film that I enjoy or a piece of media that I've enjoyed. Do I like anime? Do I intentionally seek it out? No, not at all. Um, yeah, Dwarf Fortress probably in regards to the desert. See, it's either Dwarf Fortress or some version of Civ. Yeah, exactly. Or like Ghost in the Shell. The movies. Or um, Akira. Some of the best films of all time. I don't like anime. 
Your poor PC. I hope that your PC is feeling okay after all of that palling around. Remember to give it milk and juice. Um, two wheelbarrows on this. Uh, there's quartzite. That's the only one that I want. So everything else. More kid stuff for kiddos. It's just cartoons to me. Like, yeah. Asking somebody if they like anime is kind of like asking somebody, do you like movies? Or do you like television? Yes. But do I like anime specifically? No, not really, generally. I've actually seen this show for Cowboy Bebop. It's good. Never seen Berserk. The reason that I have such like a stalwart sticking point with, ironically, a lot of some people don't, past it. Um, also, why did we have to go to horny prison immediately? <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Um, no, the the reason I, I have such a sticking point on anime is because uh, there was a peri very long period of my life where I lived with a person who uh, was an active cosplayer and um, largely made me dislike a lot of people that describe themselves as weebs or fans of anime. And that made me not particularly interested in engaging with the subject matter for the rest of my life. Also, yeah, if I was stuck on a desert island, I wouldn't want fucking video games. I would want food and, like, water and, um, you know. You know, Bastet, I'm just going to time you out for, like, 600 sex seconds because you just need to shush. I would say that anime is... like any fandom, right? People that are a casual enjoyer of a thing, generally lovely. People that are self-described as a fan of a thing, generally pretty uns insufferable. She is an optimist and very ambitious, always looking for a way to better her situation, likes to take it easy, and isn't given to flights of fancy, generally acts with an arrow focus on the current activity, and tends to only form tenuous emotional bonds with others, tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things, and when she's thinking hard, she has a habit of licking her lips. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't mind working outdoors, at least for a time. Should you make the area also cover the walls? It'll be more valuable if you make the area cover the walls. Dreams of attaining a rank in society and personally uh, finds the idea of competition obscene that doesn't particularly respect commerce. You're in love with knickers. You're a member of the cult of ghosts. Rank in society is fun. Just remember that the word fan is derived from the word fanatic, and fanatic is an insult. <laughs> Unless you're talking about the brand name. I used to. In regards to getting overwhelmed while playing Dwarf Fortress, but not so much these days. Just played it too much. Long time lurker on YouTube. Glad to catch your stream. Well, cheers, dude. Catching up with the YouTube chat a wee bit. I'm glad you picked up a good game, our whole. On how to breach into a cavern. Uh, you use a pickaxe. There really isn't like... It's it's not like you're playing Rainbow Six getting into a cavern. It's, it's not like you're going to immediately get assaulted by an onslaught of unstoppable monsters. Like, that's not really how caverns work.
I feel like most people end up being unknowingly vegetarian dwarves, just be, be using nothing but plump helmets. Flashbang and rush. I, you know, if I knew more about Rainbow Six Siege, I would just start quoting where Rainbow Six Siege. But I, I don't know much about Rainbow Six Siege, so I can't really do that. I'm just going to make two wheelbarrows with this guy. One of the other problems is because I don't get traders until fall, almost like literally the start of year two, because we started in fall. <laughs> Terrorists win. Also, yes, wrong game. Are your primary food methods? I would say livestock and farming for me. Pig farming is your MO? Yeah, I'll do her. Speaking of. Something else I need to do soonish is I need to make a farming shop and then start actually, you know, farming. Uh, Ash is coming down here to build this. Eggs, pe peacock eggs and meat. Yeah, that'll do her. Think of what's on the surface. It's still just giant burps. Nope, just ravens. Uh, wheelbarrow. Two of them. That's going to start getting this hauled in, too. Um, you can feed an entire fortress with two talented fisher dwarves. And by that, I mean an entire fortress of 200 dwarves. Fishing is... I don't fish for two reasons. I don't fish because I don't like how many shells you get from it half the time, and I don't like using shells for crafts. I know that they inflate the value of things. I don't like using shells for crafts. Just period. Um, and uh, I, I don't also do... I also don't do it because I, I find it's too easy. At least seeds have some management. Um, I sometimes do it as like a side thing for fun, but... Uh, meats are just in the anonymous strange food distinction. Or eggs, rather, are. I also can now do this. Make this bars block stockpile. Satisfied at work. At least the dwarves are satisfied at work. I also just realized I kind of screwed this up. I wasn't really planning on that happening that way. This is going to turn into like a plateau anyway. Um, so I can just make a... Andy, I, I need to figure out where I'm going to put the bedrooms. I haven't decided how I'm going to do bedrooms yet. But that wasn't really the way I was intending it there. But come on. Uh, let's jump up to the surface here. And connect this to that. Kill this. Get rid of this. I should also probably just get rid of this. And uh, drop down to here. And maybe just make it into here. This is going to end up being seed storage, but move that down there. And um, let's just do a chair. And a table. And this is going to be the world's shittiest dining hall. <laughs> Just so that we actually have a table for the dwarves to eat at. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I will sometimes use um, fisher dwarves, but if I'm using them, I'm using them as a form of theming for the rest of the fort. I just, I, I find them uninteresting. That That's my biggest issue with fisher dwarves, is I just don't find them to be particularly interesting. Is that a fisherman all alone in the corner of his farm? That's another thing, like, um, like you know how I'm, I, I often complain about um, a lot of newer players, or not newer players, but older players giving people bad information about how the game used to work instead of accurate information about how the game works right now? You know how I sometimes complain about people like that? Well, you got to remember that I am also one of those players, right? So when I talk about hating Fisher Dwarves, I'm also kind of 
subconsciously talking about the era where if a dwarf gets rained on twice, they go insane. So, are you talking about rain or water? Because water can't drip through a floor. Uh, that wasn't really an era. That was like a month, but a bubble rouser. I mean, aquifers uh, can come can go through floors, yeah, but water doesn't. <laughs> I guess I maybe I'm just like confusing two things. Well, the thing that you need to realize is how time works in Dwarf Fortress. Thirty seconds is like a day. So let's just say, um, Antronarch, if you are told by your boss, go stand outside for the next two months in the rain. You're not allowed to move from that spot until you've caught at least 150 salmon. Would you go nuts? That is true, Rabble Rouser, yes. It is legendary, but... Does making the floors wood overwrite the stone for dwarf moods? I have no idea what you're even asking. <laughs> Are you asking, like, if is making the f wood... Uh, one second. I, I, no, I never mind. I do not know what you're asking. I don't understand the question. Um, corporate culture in Japan is just hell in general. Kata Knight. Dwarves don't like being in stone. That's a player thing. There's, like, no benefit or issue with building outside of stone. Like, literally, there, there is no, like, material benefit in-game to building outside of stone. Aside, the main reason I always recommend you don't do that is it is a lot of new players tend to go one Z level down and build flat. And then trees punch through the ceiling, and then you chop down the trees, and then you have holes in your slate ceiling, and new players don't notice, and then something gets in, and blap, everything's dead. <laughs> no, not an old guard myth. It's more just like a meme, if anything. I guess you, I guess you could call it an old guard myth. I'm trying to decide if I should make these stairs go all the way down into here. I mean, I, I will go around stating that you can tell a new dwarf a new dwarf fortress player based on where they're building. If they're building in dirt, they're new. If they're building in stone, they've probably played a couple times. Because you're benefited by not building in dirt. And the reason you're benefited by not building in dirt is you don't have to build floors to increase the value of a room. You can just smooth them and engrave them. So it's much easier to get a fortress going in a competent fashion by simply just smoothing and engraving floors. That make sense? Okay, well, I need some more mud mudstone for that. So let's do blocks. And we're just going to say... Quartzite. Repeat. Until I ran out of quartzite. See, that that's not even true in the current version, Mighty Moon. Because... Speaking of things that are bugged in Dwarf Fortress, um, dwarves are supposed to start puking if they stay underground too long. But for some reason, ever since the game released on Steam, they don't do that. I don't know why. Um, kind of makes me sad. I, I miss the mechanic, but um, cave adaptation hasn't worked in a very long time, which is the, 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 the name of that mechanic, cave adaptation. And I couldn't tell you why. It hasn't worked. Why is that too elfy? Also, can't you engrave wooden walls? I thought you can. I don't know. You couldn't engrave stone walls up until... Um... Yeah, you can engrave wooden walls. What? Do you think the turn will ever add wooden wall engraving? Mate, you can engrave wooden walls. Um, you weren't able to engrave constructed walls up until version 50. That's a new feature, too. 
I, I have a question. Why is wood so automatically elfy? Sorry, Elfie, if you're, like, going, why is he talking? I'm not talking. I'm, I'm, it's my bad. But, like, there's there's nothing Elfie about building a wall or a floor out of wood. Period. Like, even if we're just talking about, like, bullshit in-game culture stuff, right? There is absolutely nothing Elfie about building something out of wood. And you want to know why that is? The only way it's Elfie is if... Instead of building thing out of wood, you grow thing out of wood. Elves don't build anything out of wood. They simply live in trees. They climb the trees and they live in them. In the trees. They're not growing anything. Or build or sorry, they're not building anything. They simply live in trees. So in order to make a thing out of wood, you have to chop down tree. Which immediately makes it not even remotely elfy. So if we're just talking about, like, BS game game culture headcanon stuff, there is nothing elfy about using entirely wood to build your fortress. If anything, if you are a true weirdo, sicko, who insists on calling out bullshit elven racism every single lot of time you get the op opportunity, which really isn't a thing, but if you're one of those people, the most dwarfy thing you could do is only build out of wood. Because that requires chopping down as much tree as possible. Also, for some reason that, like, I was staring at a weird angle in my monitor that I don't normally stare at. And for some reason now I'm seeing spots and I don't know why. <laughs> I was just very intently staring. Owie. Uh, this is kind of a crazy question, but if you but uh, you've been thinking about it a lot lately. So say you won the lottery, and you and could offer me ten thousand uh, dollars. Would I be interested in scheduling like a week where I have two to four hours a day where you backseat the game? No. No. Just 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 flat no. <laughs> um, if you want to give me money, cool. Um, I am not a work for hire agent. And no, I'm not going to invite you on my stream for money. Because they grow them. So elves have these specific types of magic, a specific type of magic tree, I think called factory trees, that basically just grow stuff for the elves. And factory trees are what they use to... Um, make their stuff basically so trees grow stuff and then when the thing is done growing it falls off the tree it's like fruit trees but for furniture imagine how effective ikea would be if they had that technology we'll see you later planix Cheers, mate. You love the memes about dwarves cutting every single tree they see? Yeah, I love hate them. I think I think they get weird quickly, but I like them when they're fun. He <laughs> is currently reset searching said tree technology. I'm glad to hear it. I'm trying to figure out where I should put my dorm. This fortress is giving me way more analysis paralysis than I usually get. Also, hey, Stout, what's up? Stumbled upon one of those uh, s really sense-making streams where the first thing you hear is how efficient furniture trees are. Logical, yes. How are you doing, Stout? How's life? Only if it could grow laminated wood in shitty particle board in pieces and then could be flat-packed immediately.
Well, I mean, Japan also has a 99% conviction rate, which means they can't be trusted. So. I don't understand why people want everything to be 3D printed. It's like, I thought we we're trying to eliminate plastics. <laughs> and I was like, 3D printed? It's like, but, but what? What? Why? Wouldn't they be, like, beehive-shaped watermelons, then? If it was hive mind? This is more like Minecraft mind. So much plastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 3D printing is called rapid prototyping. It was never really intended to mass-produce anything. Uh, mass-produced 3D printing is called um, Star Trek. Do the underground highway thingies work for getting accessible trade depots in the fort? No. Uh, underground highways are purely an adventure mode feature that you can sometimes stumble upon in fortress mode. I, You know, I always insist that if you actually read, like, a little bit about the elves in Dwarf Fortress and learn a little bit about the elves, they rapidly cease being the bad guys. <laughs> And then if you read about the other factions in Dwarf Fortress, usually the humans <laughs> rapidly become the bad guys. But, you know. So are humans. Let's just, once again, witness the Dwarf Fortress table of ethics, okay? So humans versus elves, right? Killing a member of the same, en same entity, okay? Justified with extreme reason or justified with good reason. So killing a member of the same group, so killing a member of your own faction or somebody from your hometown. Don't start this argument with me, Airsoft fan. It's going to get bad. Um, so it, humans are more okay with murder than elves, right? The killing of neutral sap sapien is acceptable for elves. So neutral people, it's acceptable for an elf to kill them. Human, it's justified if you don't get caught. Killing an enemy is acceptable. Killing an enemy is acceptable. All right. Killing an animal for an elf is justified in self-defense. For a human, it's acceptable. Killing plants are unthinkable for an elf. It's acceptable for humans. Torture, as example, is acceptable for both. Okay. Torture for information is, mis is misguided for elves, but acceptable for humans. Uh, torture for fun is unthinkable for elves and appalling for dwarves or for, for humans. So it's more likely that they'll torture for fun for humans. Torture of animals is unthinkable and shunned for humans, but no punishment. Treason is exile versus capital punishment. Oath-breaking is exile versus capital punishment. Lying is exile versus personal matter. So lying is fine. Vandalism is a reprimand, serious punishment. Okay, these, these ones are like a little bit less interesting. Uh, assault is exile versus serious punishment. So assault is better than in human civs than in um, elven civs. Um, slavery is exiled for elves. And um, it's acceptable for humans. Eating sapients that have been killed in battle is unthinkable for humans, but acceptable for elves. So if you kill something in battle, you can eat them if you're an elf. Making a trophy from a corpse of the same race is unthinkable for elves, but acceptable for humans. Making a trophy of a corpse of, this, of another uh, sentient race is totally fine for humans, unthinkable for elves. Making a trophy from a corpse of an animal is acceptable, but unthinkable. Thanks for the 14th month, Lightning Roger. And then, of course, you know, we can, like, look at all this stuff, right? Um, this is, like, your actual goal of how much they like or dislike something. Um, you can get all the details in here. 
exactly what those mean? The values of ethics? This is my favorite page of the wiki. So. Whereas goblins are just like true libertarians. <laughs> and kobolds are just dumb. They don't actually know what torture for information is because they don't know what information is. They don't like all of these are not applicable because lying isn't possible, vandalism isn't possible, and trespassing isn't possible, and theft isn't possible for them. Um, but they're also like the best when it comes to like all of the really horrible things. And the goblins are are, are like just true libertarians. Everything's acceptable, capital pun, uh, with the exception of treason, which is capital punishment. Everything else is just a personal manner or acceptable. <laughs> so like you know, but also. This is the thing, right? And this is the fun with Dwarf Fortress. Humans aren't evil in Dwarf Fortress. Elves aren't evil in Dwarf Fortress. And goblins aren't evil in Dwarf Fortress. However, goblin factions are evil. Human factions can be evil. Elven factions can be evil. It depends on who's in charge and what that individual's goals are because the king or queen of the faction is who dictates the goals of the faction in Dwarf Fortress, right? So if they happen to have a very kind, anti-war uh, elf in charge of an elven faction, they're going to be very tolerant and nice to deal with. You may have a very war-hungry goblin who ends up in charge of an elven faction, and then they just go on a murder spree. And then, perhaps, that person dies, and then they stop. And then, like, you retire a fort and reclaim it, and suddenly you're allied with a different faction. Right? Stuff like, stuff like that. You wish you could interact with them? You know what that actually is? That's not actually a kobold fort. It just means that everything else is dead there, and there's just a kobold living there, probably. But kobolds speak gibberish. Their language is entirely contextual, which means they don't even understand what each other are saying unless they were there when the word was made up. So... <laughs> kobolds are... L lawful neutral? Or maybe just true neutral? I don't know. But... The individual species themselves aren't evil. But certain factions can absolutely be evil. That's yeah, no, it's that's not necessarily an evil dwarven faction. That they're just called dark dwarven pits if dwarves take over it. Like you could be in like a very good like anti-war faction and take over one of those things and it still still be called dark dwarven pits. It just means dwarves live there. Is the alloys page or Okay, fair enough. I like the Batman page because of the D for Dwarf section. Kobolds are Twitch chats. Maybe an emote only Twitch chat. Basically what I'm trying to say is kobolds speak entirely in memes. <laughs> I'm suddenly like reminded of the metaphors Star Trek episode. Kobolds are Reddit. Sure. <laughs> when the walls fell. That un unironically is one of my favorite pieces of television ever made. <laughs> you know. What does a pit look like? Um, small rooms, basically, like this, that might be stacked a couple rooms high with, like, stairs in between, um, and then just trenches everywhere that are, like, two to three tiles wide, with ramps on either side, usually. Basically, like, small huts with, surrounded by trenches. Has anybody made a parody of that Star Trek episode except it's just like, you know, somebody trying to somebody from the future trying to communicate with a person from the past and the person from the future is speaking entirely in like memes? <laughs> Has somebody tried to do that yet? Like 
That sounds like something college humor would have done by now. So this is going to be tricky. I think I'll throw a second wheelbarrow onto this. Actually, ah, I see, I ran out of quartzite. Um, I'm still kind of having analysis paralysis. Most of Farscape's episodes. You know, I didn't like Farscape. <laughs> I tried. I did try. I, I didn't like Farscape. I need to make a bridge going from here to here though. Okay, let's just let's just do this. Let's get the last of these walls done. Oh. Okay, hold on. Actually. I feel like I'm pretty sure I can go up to here, and the only thing I really need to lock off is this. So let's just do that. Where the aliens were just speaking in normal Spanish. <laughs> Why normal Spanish? <laughs> Why is Spanish suddenly like a, a context-sensitive lang like language based on local metaphor. Because I don't like ketchup and it's a joke in this chat. Hmm. Damn, there's so much possibility with this. Everything is good about it, and just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar, and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit! Stop eating ketchup! It's kind of an in-joke, I would say. That explains things? Or greatly confuses things, one of the two. Uh, who's my woodcutter? This is might be the longest I've gone with before my first migrant wave ever. I feel like this is similar to the like German Dutch discussion. Oh, this is also part of the problem. Oh wait, no, I do have somebody assigned as a woodcutter. I just couldn't see the icon. Why you no chop wood? There you go. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's not that hard. Oh, that, like... Dutch is just German, but like angry or whatever. I pe people used to discuss like the, the the minute differences between Dutch and German in my chat all the time. All right, let's just go here and go stone use. I'm looking for limestone. Gotta be an other. I don't want them cutting up the limestone. This this screen needs a rework, I think, now that we have search functionality in the game. I know Putnam has said that this is like one of the next ones she wants to work on. Oh there it is. Duh. Remove that. Now that I've done that, you can just start making blocks. And I can also just get rid of the stockpile because I don't need it. Uh, to quote my German teacher, more phlegm. <laughs> That's about it. Ooh. 
Less anger, more phlegm. I'm saying Dutch, not Deutsch. Ooh. I need to find one of these with, like, lava in the middle so I could just, like, plop a furnace down on top of it. Well, it's better than only being able to speak in cursive. You have no idea how it's related to Dutch? Uh, if you speak one, you can mostly understand the other. Similar basis is for the language and all that. Well, that's kind of crazy. A rock destroying half the world. Mom was born in Germany? Well then, a lot of my family's German. Kind of like how you can understand uh, Spanish with help, can help with understanding Italian and French. I know nothing about that, but. All right, so I'm gonna remove wood from this stockpile. Oh shit, I just broke this. <laughs> I was doing that on the wrong screen, thinking out loud and clicking the wrong buttons. Oh well, it's fine. So remove gems, and then just make a wood stockpile. Tavern rental rooms. Do the room? Uh, do the rooms have to be rooms now? They don't rent them, but um, if you connect a room to your tavern, if you connect a bedroom to your tavern they will sleep in them if they are already allowed in the tavern. But you could also just make it into a dormitory connected to the tavern and they'll sleep there too. As somebody who isn't Japanese, I have no idea. Well, we got a good amount of booze. Plants is his growings. I'm going to go over to here and we're gonna make ourselves a farm plot. Not a farm plot, a farmer shop, I guess. Except I'm just gonna go up to here and just be like, yo, let's just make you out of, um, what do I have nine of? You know what, I'm just gonna use this tower cap that I cut down. Because I'm gonna move the seed stockpile into here anyway. And this is going to be where I'm going to put my farmer shop, for starters. So let's do that. Let's also go up to here. And slowly continue walling this area off. I can't remember if Gabbro is the same color as mudstone. So I'm just going to simply make this out of mudstone, get over my bullshit, and just make the rest out of it out of Gabbro blocks, because I'm going to have so much of it. Problem is, is there's so many directions right now I could get attacked from if the cavern critters start attacking. And I really can't afford to get attacked at all um, until I actually get some migrants. <laughs> so I think this is going to be where the prison is going to start on this layer. So I'm going to put this on priority number three, dig out all of this, and I'm going to start constructing bedrooms up in here, along the walls specifically. I 
I very much apologize for the slow as hell start to this fort, but it just kind of happened that we started in the fall, which means I don't get my first trading caravan until, like, fall, which I think also threw off all of my early migrants, which has me very concerned right now, if I'm not if I'm being honest. Also, who's the outpost liaison? That's mildly concerning. Hmm. I don't see one. Hope they trade. I should also probably make a trading depot. It's all good today. You're uh, probably your favorite day of chatting with Blind and Wild. Well, cheers. So we're going to go up to here and I'm going to make a farmer shop. I mean, right now I'm just slightly worried that I'm not going to get any migrants, but... Damn, good win, Ash. Three points. Yay! Three points for putting king of the. We're going to milk two of those. We're also going to shear thread. Or rather, shear animal. And uh, spin thread. And um, make cheese. The meme bets are the way to go. What 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 was your meme number that you bet? Two three three nine. Bet one three three seven. Or was it something higher than that? Save the game, streamer. Uh, okay, sure. Cheese for everyone. For everyone. Well, there you go. Mean bet it is. Sheer thread, spin animal, milk cheese, make milk. No, make animal milk cheese. There we go. Also, uh, milk cheese sounds delicious. I once had a single demon, Juzen, um, that had... Uh, about 15,000 total kills. So, you know. Humble brag about weird thing I found in a world once. <laughs> Don't you kind of have to shear milk because you have to, like, separate the fat from it? Not, I mean, it's not shearing milk, but can any of the clowns be good? No. They can sort of be good in, in like, Legends because they, to quote an anime, uh, most demons tend to end up like, yes, by the way, uh, most demons tend to end up along the lines of Dragon Ball Z characters. Because they just end up going around wrestling. And then occasionally random, randomly murdering their subjects. Alright, so we finally acquired new dwarves. Forgot that we called this group the Crimson Will of Smiths. So this is already a dwarf from the last fort. Who else do we get? I'm actually really curious to see if any named dwarves arrive. Wow, that was a small migrant. <laughs> Two of them! So we got a blacksmith and Logan. 
Logum is a high master miner who actually brought her pick too. A nice copper pick, even. Uh, is friends with Xylem? Cool. She had clothes rot off her body in 507. Oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> Certainly not enough for pick me's now. Um, I mean, in order to do pick me's, what I need to do is I need to start the stream without there being the, the, the dwarf redemption command running. Were there any werewolves left in the last fort when I abandoned? Yes. Yes? Yes. So, you know. You know. You know. We'll be okay. We will survive. Hopefully. Oh yeah, it's still alive on the map. It's right here. Apparently it's got 300 population. Uh-oh. They are repeatedly attacking the old mountain home. But yeah, they are right there. Oh hey, shit. Is that new? Or has Whiptone's always been there? I don't remember it being there. Ripped Basin. Dagger Basin? I'm sensing a theme. Are we allowed to redeem dwarves right now? If it, once it's off cooldown, yes. If you're asking, is the command active? Yes, it is, basically. Most of the dwarves, I think, are just hauling shit currently, right? Yeah. But yeah, no, I start naming people on mass later on in the forts these days. The reason I stopped with the last one was because um, I was kind of, well, there was an experimental patch that came out, so the view count was way higher than usual. And it's very difficult to name dwarves anyways on a new fort. So we are just building this structure up here. You see it functionally early too because it's people uh, early on. Apparently <laughs> people die often. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe in your forts. Okay, mudstone is in fact the same color as Gabriel. Speaking of redeeming a dwarf, mm -hmm. what about redeeming dwarf? I'm just sitting here and hoping that that gremlin migrates over here. It's truly all I'm hoping for. Um, I wouldn't call this particularly creepy. I, I would actually say that this cavern layer is probably safer than the surface. Actually. Because <laughs> there's no giant birds in the cavern. Not a Gorlag? Well, they're both royals, so they won't. I can tell you for fact they won't. Napalm side burns. Very different from napalm front burns. Uh, what dwarf you want? Just, just do tell me, please. What's up, Selawik? Uh, one of the Greblids joined the fort, the other one didn't. I, I don't think either of them will, but the one that did join the fort uh, was appointed to captain of the guard and was be giving people beatings when I ended the fort, which is very funny. <laughs> uh, 
I nod the weaponsmith. Yep. One of these starting seven. Napalm Sideburns, uh, Dorothy McBigbeard, uh, is worried after lack of decent meals for too long. I don't blame him. Uh, is prone to strong feelings of jealousy and feels strong urges and seek short-term rewards. He is always tense and jittery, and he doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. He likes to brawl, and he, and he generally acts impartially. He is rarely moved to mercy... And he has a tendency towards forming deep and emotional bonds with others. He's a friendly individual, and he tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. He is curious about the world, and he generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at bad weather. I'm in an ad break right now, so I will pause the game. Uh, he dreams of creating a great work of art and likes quartzite. Oh, you're going to love this place. Found domestication possible with Kia. Anything is domesticatable as long as it's not intelligent. It uh, requires less than that now, but that's because the system is bugged. It only generally requires one generation now. But it used to, it used to require three. Yes. Can you request dwarves from your capital with a messenger? No. You can only request uh, workers from places that you've captured or from places that are linked to you economically. So places that your character takes over or, or places that your fortress takes over or places that, uh, like, helixes that form around you. Uh, the color cobalt bracelets and... Uh, you like elves for their grace, by the way. <laughs> when possible, prefers to consume Tef beer and absolutely hates blood gnats. You you feel blessed? Blissful remember dining in a good bet dining room. Hold on. How low are your standards? You think this is a good dining room? What? The vampire mayor is never not going to get reelected. Um, let's just say that dwarves don't have a multi-party system. They have a single party system. It has a table and a chair and paved floors. I mean, the floors are pink. And there's seeds on the seat. I just think that's really funny that that's what they consider to be a good dining room. All right, let's do that. We'll do this. All right, so this area should, well, actually, no, it's not safe yet. I need to get one piece up here. God dang it. All right, well. And I'll just put a block right here. Starting your third ever fort in the middle of the mountains, I also need to place them here. Just trying to, like, have one safe area, basically. Also, mine out all this upwards. Mine out all this. Mine out all this. And I got that. And I got this. And I'm going to lock off one of them. I haven't decided which one yet. But I'm going to put a little bridge right here. Obviously a pink one. And also a little bridge right here. Obviously a pink one. But uh, yeah, good luck, Hexlin. Have fun. I have cheese to make cheese out of. Okay. Can I shear animal? Spin thread, please. Nope, I don't have any shearable animal. Okay. Well, can I milk animals? we go and make cheese milk stray yak cow what is the weight of quartzite like a quartzite boulder or a quartzite block quartzite block is 15 units of dorfus um i don't have any boulders on the map right now i'd have to go dig one up
by a necromancer creature. Is it listed as a wild animal in the creature screen? Like in the in the in the wild animal slash livestock screen, basically. I'm just going to um make a real quick manager's office. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh. Could just put the offices up here. I'm thinking office, office, office. As a night creature, but was in the others. What, what, what was it listed as? Was it listed as wild animal, hostile? Is I guess the question I'm asking. Somebody, so I live in an apartment, right? Somebody in my hallway is very angry. I just heard, oh, fuck. Why you gotta be like that? <laughs> Which I guess I'm just kind of amused sometimes about apartment living. Managed to kill it? Okay. Because it might just be a wild animal. Um, sometimes you just get wild populations of those things as livestock, quite literally. Okay, that's a very small puddle. Outside of sleeping. Um, sleeping. One of the uh, notes on the uh, roadmap, actually, there it's Half-Life, uh, is making healing more possible. <laughs> because if I'm being honest, right now it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Um... You just kind of say, good luck. <laughs> okay, so this over here is all going to be moved under here. because This is all seeds. I'm going to remove all of these barrels. So I'm going to go up to here and remove this. Milk animal. Make cheese. Never mind. Don't have anything to milk currently. Well, at the very least, we have some cheese. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What are the current things my dwarves are doing? I got several dwarves doing nothing. Okay, so I got three dwarves currently doing nothing. Let's just make another... Stoneworker shop and just plop her, plop her down right here. Let's get you making blocks too. Um, this is a untamed wilds biome. Uh, it's an untamed wilds biome and it's a desert, which is part of the reason I'm so deep underground. Um, I look at creatures. Apparently, it's just full of raisin, ra raisins, hmm. ravens. But there was giant grackles at one point, and a bunch of vultures stole my food early on. But it's fine. We recovered. But yeah, that that's one of the pot, like well-known issues actually um with adventure mode is just that it's impossible to heal. Cancels, cancels milk, animal, reason, no creature. Hmm. Oh, I know the problem right now. Gotta process plants. Is there world gen settings that make... Uh... Scared disabled dwarves more likely. Scarred disabled dwarves. What in the world do you mean by scarred disabled dwarves? Do you mean like when they migrate to your fortress? Is that what you're talking about? 
Because you don't get scarred disabled dwarves migrating to your fortress, really, unless they were in your previous fortress. That doesn't really happen in world gen, per se. Outside of adventurers with history. Could just make a loom, but I have to be careful about webs. Chad, am I imagining... So this is a question for people who played in version 47 and before. Am I imagining a feature where you could... S that I'm imagine I'm, I'm seemingly remembering used to be in the game where you could select a workshop and then set the, the amount of distance that they could travel to use that workshop? Or am I making this up in my dumb brain? Because I swear that used to be a thing in the game. Sometimes, who, who can cook because, uh, what, do you have two roommates or something? <laughs> cooking is a fun hobby. I enjoy cooking. You don't think you've seen it? Hmm. Could be, I can tell you for a fact it wasn't a DF hack thing, because I never used DF hack in version 47 for day-to-day -day gameplay. I mean, I had DF hack installed, but I never used it while I was just playing. So I can tell you for a fact it, it, this isn't like a weird DF hack Mandela effect thing. Oh, I know that exists in RimWorld, yeah, but no, this... And the reason I say it is because it, it looked like that blue expanding circle that looks like the, the, the Burroughs menu in the older versions. I know that exists in RimWorld too. But I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just like like faking myself into remembering this. But I I swear that used to be a thing. Okay, so let's um let's start digging out two pretty colors. Chat. Which one do you want me to prioritize? Uh, Kimberlite or quartzite? Or both. I mean, you you, you can say both. Pink than blue. Okay. Kimberlite might have diamonds. Yeah, I don't know. Diamonds are nowhere near as exciting as they used to be. Checkered floor could look nice. I could do that for the um, for the tavern. It's going to be the schwankiest prison fort ever. The other thing I kind of need to do is I should probably just go find lava. I can hold off irritating the caverns. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I'm going to be tiny office. And this tiny office is going to be my manager. Um, okay, so I need to make a militia commander already. Uh, or rather, I need to make a sheriff already. Um, so I get to figure out who the sheriff is going to be. But uh, start off with Logan the Miner, who's going to be my manager. Logam is also going to be the broker, and I will also make Logam into the bookkeeper. Those will all be split into different jobs eventually. And essentially, I'm going to here, and I'm going to cancel you. Currently, I only have 10 Quartzite, but we'll, we'll work our way through that. <laughs> Sheriff Burns. Hmm. All right, chat. So my current three contestant contestants are... 
Ashalot, Napalm Sideburns, and Wet Pet. Most popular name that I see said the most in Twitch chat gets the job. She likes some of my puppies? Okay. Definitely don't tell her about the part where I, I might have to eat some of them. <laughs> but uh, that's good. I do too. Well, I said napalm sideburns, wet pet, or uh, napalm. Wet pet or uh, ash, rather. But if you guys don't have an opinion, I'll just simply give it to uh, napalm, because napalm was the one who demanded it. Which means now we have the justice screen. How many cages do I need? Ch chains do I need to make you? One chain, okay. The construction of our prison beginneth. I should widen this just a little bit. Oh, did this priority two? Voting who, Sheriff? Yep. Um, we're also going to do this, and I'm going to do rock. Ah, uh, you know what? Actually, actually, make wooden chairs and wooden tables. We're just gonna do twenty. 20. And I'm just going to use tower cap, and I got to go chop down some more tower caps real quick. Um, there's some. Hello, Sly Omegas. It's going all right. How's things? You know, one of these days I will have individually told every single member of the entire community that yes, cavern trees count as mushroom, or mushroom trees in, count as trees towards the elves. Trees is trees. It doesn't matter if it grows above ground or below ground. The elves treasure all trees equally. One of these days. Today is not that day, though. <laughs> it's all good. I should, that's actually something I should probably just make a command for. I, but I, the part of the reason I don't is because I, I like to elaborate on my own dumb headcanon as to why. Uh, in, in real life, trees use my like um, mycelium to communicate. This is how you get living stumps. Uh, trees will um, basically like use the mushroom networks to send nutrients to other trees. So in my mind, the underground trees are the sign of a healthy forest above ground. And also, chopping down the trees down underground would be the, like, elven equivalent, or, like, the elven equivalent of you unplugging their internet. In the desert? Well, I mean, oh, hold on a second. Yes, we are in a desert right now, but there's a forest here and a forest here. How are these two forests going to com communicate through this desert if there isn't mushrooms underground? I mean, like... That's like asking, how in the world does Ireland have internet? There's an ocean in the middle. See? Perfect logic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really good Wi-Fi, true. <laughs> Underground communication mushrooms? Exactly! It's a it's an elven phone booth. Wait, the elves are Irish? 
No. <laughs> I'm not going to pin that on Ireland. I know I have Irish heritage. I don't think I have that much, <laughs> like, um, allowances. I'm trying to decide how big I should make these bedrooms. Chat, bigger or smaller bedrooms? What do you think? Never kill a mole. Very important. Huge? Big? Okay. In big and five. Obviously, Captain of the Gird is going to get first bedroom. You know, I think I'm going to do walls out of quartzite and floors out of Gabbro because I'm just going to have way more Gabbro. Let's do like that. And this is this because otherwise this would take a very, 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 very long time. Bab. <laughs> You're typing me. First two bedrooms. This one's a bit too big. First three bedrooms. Done. Never kill a mole. You know, pudding. But it's okay. Because those of us beneath the soil welcome you when your time cometh. Prepare thy body. Oh, uh, no, completely unrelated, sentient. But you should prepare thy body. Uh, it, it angers the people beneath the... Yeah, it, 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 it angers those beneath the soil if you kill a mole. TLDR, you had to be there. <laughs> a couple days ago, I, I played a video game, or a couple weeks ago, I played a video game that and accidentally started a, a cult in, in the process. And it was fun! It was a great time. Can't wait to play can't wait to play through it again on Halloween. Except get all the bad endings. It was a good time. You wonder if the queen will ever visit my fort? Well, the queen's still alive, so as long as she doesn't get killed somehow by the behind the scenes um you know, fighting or whatnot. Uh, it is certainly plausible the queen could eventually join my fort, even. Rough almond dines. Did I not make a jeweler shop? I thought I did. And who is my wood? Where, where, where my woodcutter? My woodcutter is also my expedition leader, who also happens to be uh, one of my like, you know, this dwarf job. So let's move this job to the sheriff, because I think that a sheriff running around with an axe is both hysterical and significantly more threatening. So we're gonna, we're gonna move the um, the wacky thingy with axe job to the sheriff. And also, I need to move the the dormitory underground very badly. So sorry, sheriff, but you're gonna have a shitty night's sleep. How do you handle your trade depot with cavern sieves? You, are you asking how do you trade with cavern sieves? 
what what is there to handle? I, I don't get it. Because are you asking how I defend it with soldiers? If you're asking how I trade with them, you don't. Running a little bit low on the foodstuffs again. Dwarves are too busy currently. Where does your trade happen? Is that the question? Oh, I mean, late game, I would put it closer to the surface. Um, but you have to get the trade. I mean, this is going to be like the same answer that I give to almost every Dwarf Fortress related question. It's different in every single fortress. Like, I, I very rarely do the same thing exactly twice. This isn't a game with a meta, at least not one that I would ever give a shit about. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of a... Nah. Thing, I guess. It's not something I care about. Yeah, no, the, the, the caverns will just, the, the trade kit wagons will just walk down to the level that you're on and trade with you um, until you have a baron. And then they'll bring wagons, at which point they'll complain if they don't have access. But yeah, I would probably just move up to them because it doesn't take that long to run up to the surface. No, they can't. King of the Pudding. At least not that I've ever seen, and if they can, that is brand new information to me. But I've, I've absolutely never once in any situation nor discussion seen a trade ca ca cavern, ca ca trade caravan appear in the caverns. Sorry, that was a weirdly difficult sentence to if say. If anyone is searching for a nice rum, I can recommend Matthew Salem Grand Reserva. That sounds like a rum. Cheers, Fanyogs. Thank you very much for the 17th month. What's the occasion for drinking said rum? Uh-oh. I made a wall out of the wrong material. I committed a crime. I hope I made this wall out of the right material. Unless you can make rock bins? No, you don't. You can, however, make steel bins and metal bins, which are significantly better because than even normal bins. Because if for some reason you need to get all of the stuff out of the bin in a hurry, you can simply melt the bin. You can already make them out of wood, which is an infinite resource, so... If I lost five pounds, my doctor would be very upset with me. There's so many puppies in this fort. I'm gonna have to start breaking hearts. Oh shit, we got a new uh, baby yak. Speaking of baby animals. Just a smaller yak. See? We got yak, 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 and mini yaks. Two of them, in fact. Got a boy yak and a, ba and a lady yak. Speaking of yaks, where's my idiot with an axe? Dude. I guess you're just prioritizing making a bed. And you know what? Honestly, I respect it, but like, come on, dude. So first one goes to expedition leader. So 
think. Ah, I mean, that's good. Fan Yogs. It's kind of funny seeing somebody putting in both, but I, um, I generally weigh about uh, 46 kilos, I think, in conversion. That's a conversion I'm not good at for some reason. I'm skinny. It's still an infinite resource. Stone isn't an infinite resource. Because I know what I'm doing and I don't care about threats in the caverns, Ethan. So you, you, you stated noob here. Why isn't he doing a thing? Because I've played this game long enough that this game isn't difficult in any situation. Like, the hardest, it, there is no hard mode in Dwarf Fortress. There's just, are you willing to deal with tedious stuff mode, right? And the idea, at least for me, with Dwarf Fortress, and the way I enjoy playing this game the most, is orchestrating disaster. Because the game's disasters that the game inflicts on you in intentionally are all preventable and avoidable with the correct precautions. That's boring. Right? Like, this is a sandbox game about making your own fun, largely. Even if you are playing, sorry, optimally, right? So I intentionally orchestrate failure in my fortresses. It doesn't matter how much I want the fortress to succeed. I will intentionally leave holes and way for, ways for things to get in and kill my fort. Because that's fun. Or alternatively, I will intentionally put my dwarves at risk of violent death. Because, again, that's fun. I enjoy that kind of gameplay. That is part of the game to me, is waiting for inevitable collapse. And if I don't do it, the game doesn't have the tools to do it for me. Although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, a supply caravan from the Emerald Irons is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft stores. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. And also, you know... This is just a side note, but I, I do have people watching the stream, which means if I were to play this game 100% optimally, literally nothing interesting would ever happen. And believe it or not, I like to keep my chat entertained. Um, trying to see what I can sell them. I really don't have much. Kind of thinking about just selling them, like, the cave spider silk. The giant cave spider silk. Pigtail cloth, because I, I will have more pretty soon. And the cheaper gems. I will keep the, the nicer gems. I like how the freaking Duke consort shows up. That's interesting. I guess the, um, oh shit! It's telling Arthur's husband. Look at that. Good friends with Scobbled and Good Charles and Sanny and Shark Jumping Walrus and MMO Junkie. Toadie! Toadie's still alive. Shout out to Toadie. Woo! -hoo. What else we got here? Has no kills. Likes abstract discussions. All right. The legends grow, Tellin. Hate this keyboard so f much. What? Why? Just mistyples. It's okay. We're on, we're on the internet.
Um, it's not that they don't spawn. They show up when certain requirements are met. Simply put, I'm not going to be meeting those requirements anytime soon. Ribbit? What's up, Chestnut? You move from YouTube to here. I think it's interesting how many workplaces block Twitch but don't block YouTube. That's always, like, going to be a fascinating little thing to me. It's actually starting to look like a fort in here. Uh, they meet with True Freak, uh, meets with the Duke Kivish of Dreamy Addicts, and they say, I'm your liaison from Mountain Homes. Let's discuss your situation. What request do you have of our merchants? Um. Hmm. What requests do I have of your merchants? Uh, let me see something. Pets, 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 pets. I always check the pets section. Um, no animals. I, I, I mean, let, let's just request yak cows. And... I think I'll say iron anvils for right now. Actually, shit. I should have said plant variety. Oh, well. Large gems is what they want from me. Okay. It's going to take the rest of the traders a little bit of time to get in, but see if there's anybody I recognize. Nope, not really. Just a couple mace dwarves and two merchants. No, they don't have dragons to trade. That's kind of what I was checking for. And Twitch has bathtub streams. YouTube has nude yoga. If, like, if like the reasoning is, like, YouTube has useful things and Twitch is just, like, not useful, I beg to differ. <laughs> but, okay. I think it's more because, you, like, Twitch is primarily known for gaming, video games, and stuff. <sighs> Trust me, you can go watch a lady sit in a bathtub on YouTube, too. <laughs> I love how people always jump to sexism. It's kind of cute, actually. It's like, oh, God forbid a lady use her body for profit. All right. Um, think of the children. Whatever are, going, are they going to do? All right, let's see. What, what do you have? They have a guinea cock and a mule. Barrels. Okay. I might actually just buy the food from them. Because food variety is good. That's the gaming category on most content filters. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Because the majority of the content on Twitch is, like, video games and then also outdoor tourism. There's still a bug where dwarves can't fulfill be with friends and family. That's not a bug. So, yes, it's still there. <laughs> Calling it a bug, though, is very inaccurate for what it actually is. There's a dead cave swallow in this door. Lovely. This is going to be assigned to the sheriff. Also, like, Twitch has been blocked long before at workplaces, uh, before uh, even the IRL categories existed. Way before 
like, you know, more grown up oriented streams started existing. You know, I'll tell you this, just to imprint myself on dwarf logic. I'm a chronically lonely person who is absolutely horrific at going out and making friends. So I can relate to a dwarf like that, which is why a dwarf like that, does, like, here's the thing, right? People look at this list and they go, oh God, I need to make sure all of these needs are met. That's not true. Only, and it's way more obvious when you're playing adventure mode because you also have to meet the needs. Most of those needs don't actually need to be met, right? They only need a handful of them met to become focused. And once they're focused, they're more or less good. So it's just a matter of getting the dwarf to being focused, right? And if you can get a dwarf focused, they're solid, right? They don't need any more needs met. So people see all of those needs and they go, oh God, I have to meet all of them. No, you don't. No, no, you, you just need to get the dwarf to be able to be in a focused state, right? And because of this, I think a lot of people, it's, it's one of the reasons why I'm very, very happy that they got rid of the idlers counter, because the idlers counter just made people prioritize completely the wrong things in the game. They assumed that, oh, because there's an idlers counter, I need to make sure that no dwarves are not working. All dwarves must work at all time. No, it's, it's not the way the game works. Generally, you want maybe 20% of your fort to be working. The rest should all be socializing somewhere or spending time in the tavern or reading or learning or hanging out in a guild hall or doing something completely unrelated. Okay, so what kind of ore do I have in the map right now? Uh, let's just do some stone. I think I got lemonite. Let's find out. I got hematite and limonite. L luminite. I need to figure out where I'm going to put my forge. Huh. Score. Because the thing about dwarves, right, is... Dwarf Fortress is a goal game that is trying to simulate reality, right? So if it's a game that's trying to simulate reality, reality is a collection of people that are imperfect, right? Dwarves are not perfect, far from it. Dwarves have needs and desires that can't be fulfilled. Dwarves have um, situations and tragedies that can't be fixed, right? And it's the player's job to compensate for that. Like, is there ways that they could make the need uh, for dwarves to be with family better and make more sense? Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that on a fundamental level. I think that there should be more ways for the player to be able to satisfy some of those needs because there is always going to be situations where they're not able to satisfy every, satisfy every single possible need, right? Like, I, the one that I always go back to that I would love to see is I would absolutely love to see the ability for dwarves to, or for, for uh, the messengers to basically be letter carriers or being able to, like, assign a letter carrier. And it would give me a reason to actually take part in the paper making system in this game because then dwarves could write letters and the they, you could make like a stall for it and then dwarves would go collect them all and they could run off to the family or far away friends and write letters to them. And that that could be a way that they maybe could satisfy a little bit of that need. Um, maybe you could get like a second trade caravan once a year that was literally just le like a letter carrier, like a male dwarf, ma ma mailman, ma male, male, male dwarf or something. And uh, like, I've heard ideas like these thrown around for years with this game. And I think that those are ways that you could improve systems that already exist in the game. But I don't think a dwarf automatically needing to be with family is automatically breaking it. So this might be lava. It might not be. Let's see. Yay! Hell yeah. I'm very happy right now, chat. Well, 
it's set. This is where my forge is gonna be. <laughs> What's up, Amongst Junk? We struck Hot Rock. I'm kind of happy there are no cats in this fort right now because there would be dead, like, cave birds everywhere. <laughs> this fortress attracted no migrants this season. We'll get some um, in spring, probably. Uh, dwarves already do talk to, to one another. Um, I think more players just need to realize that it's actually important for them to let their dwarves hang out in the tavern. And no, that's not wasting time. I think that's part of it. But that's one of the reasons why it's so good that they got rid of the idlers thing. Okay, well, I need to go up to here and fill all this in. There's a tree there. Should I just chop all these trees down? But like winding back around to the conversation from the other day about how sometimes you get bad information about Dwarf Fortress, dwarves didn't always need downtime. I mean, for a very, I would say practically a majority of this game's existence, dwarves didn't need downtime at all because stress worked completely differently in, a pre in previous versions of this game. So. Also mining these out. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Please feel free to just simply block my existence if you don't want to see me. Or I recommend not watching my shorts. Stingray, what what uh, what dwarf would you like? I don't actually have that many to select from. Anymore. We have Zacid or Logum. Or um, locum, actually. There, there's three. Blacksmith, manager, or miner? You headed out, hangman? Ah, well, there. I think I figured out then why you keep seeing them is because you keep clicking them. <laughs> I figured out your problem. <laughs> Smith! Got Excuse me. Um, Stingray. Stingray is uneasy after being unable to acquire something for too long. She is an optimist and she is prone to hatreds and often develops negative feelings, relies on the advice of others during decision making, and is bashful. Prefers that everyone live with... Uh, prefers that everyone... I can read. She prefers that, to present herself modestly, and she isn't particularly curious about the world. She does not often feel lustful. She prefers that everyone lives as harmoniously as possible. She is grateful when others help her out, and she tries to return favors. She, is, she has little interest in joking around and generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity, is, isn't particularly ambitious, uh, finds obligations confining, though she is conflicted by this for more than one reason. She, when she's thinking, she be, her body becomes very still. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. Doesn't really care about anything anymore. Welcome to the fort. Uh, Dorf is his points now. Um, and the reason for that is, if I were to just be like, yeah, you guys can all have dwarves, uh, there'd be no dwarves available, because we literally just started a new fort. So. Let's just make 10 beds. And Shadow Observer wants you to post beers. I 
thought I dug over into that for a second. I was very perplexed. I was like, how did I manage that? Also, Sanyi, just a heads up, I think your dwarf is still alive in the world. I really wish I knew why sometimes dwarves' sprites just disappeared. A bit odd. I'm actually also quite surprised that nobody has started getting less happy. Like, in general, the dwarves in this fort are pretty happy. <laughs> like, we've got four as happy as can get and two just neutral, which are the most recent migrants. I think I'll just put this here right now, and I will just make this for metal ores. No ore up in here. Well, that's a shame. There's also hematite in this layer, which is good. It's too many puppies in this fortress. <laughs> this is becoming a, like, a weird joke. Also, I need to check something. Did I never assign the office to my, oh. Here I am wondering why the manager stuff ain't, why, why I don't have like my any of my stuff counters because I never assigned this to my manager. Well, now you can go do your job. Yeah, I need to start making puppy stuff. And I'm just going to make a magma smelter right here. All right. Can't put it directly on top. I always forget this for some reason. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many hours I have in this game. I always assume I'm, I can build directly on top of it. When it comes to lava. Running low on booze again. Yeah, it is a pretty cool cavern and bark. This is going to end up being a pretty rad fort, I think. Can't wait to, like, reenact re Helm's Deep here with cavern creatures. And also, let's check the news. Okay, so we are, like, actively just attacking this place. Good Charles is now a holy burial. Nivik, um, the holy crypt of the cult of ghosts. You know, this is also another thing that I should do more, especially now that adventure mode is getting close again, um, is specifically not completely kill fortresses before I move on to the next one, because it gives you a lot of, like, descriptions of, like, what's happening in the world with still alive dwarves, you know? And I think that that stuff's pretty cool. Okay, there is still an evil goblin fort all the way up here. And we do still have these two mountain halls. This is actually where the, um, what's it called? This is where the, uh, one of the Gorlax came from. We are the same faction. It is a very near embark to the same fortress, uh, we named the fortress Slap Rock the Crimson Will of Smiths. 
because I realized halfway through naming the fortress when we were going for a super serious, serious name for serious people, we realized that we could name a fortress this. Um, <laughs> so after we all finished dying of hysterical laughter, we, I, I want, I said I wanted to tone it down a little bit. And so now instead of being, you know, will I, I, we, we were naming things, various things about slapping stuff, uh, because you know, it's, it's, it's fucking v Valentine's day. So we were getting like, name it like slap bottom or something. Um, and I was like, at this point, I should just name it Will Smith. And then I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and I, 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 and I realized I could name the fortress Will Smith. Possibly one of the greatest, um, naming Eureka moments I've had in my entire Dwarf Fortress playing history, even. Very seriously. The most seriously. All right, let's um. I like how that's still my my temple. Um, let's uh move. Uh, let's just make a pen pasture here, and I'm just gonna type in puppy. Cause I need these puppies. Out of here. See ya, merchants. What's the fort symbol? Oh boy. I should like engrave it somewhere because <laughs> it's a bit long. Um, hmm. Dang it. I don't quite have enough blocks to do that. What if I just did this? <laughs> That's a risky question. Not that risky. Actually, here, why don't I just make a statue of it? Let's make it out of sandstone. And specify image, existing image, group symbol. Uh, it's the Vault of Obeying. And it is, uh, the artwork is a superiorly designed image of a human, a goblin, a dwarf, and an elf, and emo frozen dive, our queen Gorlack, uh, and a diamond, and a coin, and a wave, and a meat cleaver, and a prepared meal. The Gorlack is laughing, the diamond is striking down the goblin, the coin is striking down the human, the wave is burning the elf, and the dwarf is admiring the Gorlack, and the Gorlack is re raising the meat cleaver, and I, it, it's actually, like, not for all of it. It doesn't fit. It's too long. Shit. Um. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll, we'll make that, and then I'll, I'll read the full thing. <laughs> How do you engrave specific stuff? You pause the game and click before it designates it. So, like, I would pause the game, click this, right click, and then click it. It's not exactly straightforward. Then you can click specify image. I also kind of like the cliffhanger where that left off. What are most of my dwarves currently doing at this exact moment? Oh, they're all... Okay. Kind of wish I could, you know, automate... Kimberlite, but I can't. <laughs> you're making Gabriel blocks, you're making a sandstone statue, you're updating stockpile records, you're brewing drinks from plants. You're, wear you're dwelling upon wearing old clothing. Mate, you're no longer wearing old clothing. I know that you, in the in the last fort, obviously had a horrible moment where clothing rotted off your body, but you're safe now. You live somewhere better that no longer has bad clothing in that way. I mean, we definitely still have bad clothing, but, like, come on. Jess! Jess 
Ray Jazz Jam 100 Stroke L. Welcome to the Jazz Ray Dino Dance. Welcome to the very, very, very normal. Oh no, <laughs> we get the slash me too. Me Dino Dance Jazz Ray Jazz Jam. Normally named Fortress of Slap Rock. Jazz Jam Jazz Ray Dino Dance. Which was, you know what, since I was just talking about it. This fort, this is what this fort was almost named. Sell and Jess, thank you very much for the resubs for 27 months and 42 months. Jess, thank you very much for the raid. JSOG, hello. Flamethrower, hello. Infinity Simplex, hello. Andy Star Phoenix, what's up? I think you guys know the drill. Yeah, we almost did this. Jess raid, but you forgot to copy the thing. Hi, silly. So, yeah. <laughs> because I realized I could name a fortress Will Smith. But uh, hello, Raiders. How you all doing? This is a br brand new fortress named Slap Rock. Completely unrelated to a certain celebrity. And, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's cozy. It's in the caverns. The whole idea is we are... Um, building a underground prison. You beat two levels of Tomb Raider Day. Yeah, those came out, didn't they? I really, you know, I am so worried about Crystal Dynamics just as a studio right now because they are like one of those wholly owned Embracer Corp nightmares. I'm very worried about them as a studio, just in general. But anyway, to those of you who don't know Jess, you should go to give Jess a follow. She's a, a, a good friend of the channel. Um, a Somebody who always magically appears whenever I'm in Vegas and uh, streams a variety of good video games and has cute pets and a pet cam. Multiple, even. And uh, I'm blind. Most of you probably know me. Uh, I play way too much Dwarf Fortress and sometimes chat lets me play other games. And then I yell about why cassettes are still cool in 2024. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I, 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 I'll be honest. I saw those pop, those Tomb Raider games pop up, and I had like this wave of nostalgia. Of, like the one time I went over to a friend's house and played like five hours of one of those Tomb Raider games. I was like, man, this game, those games still look pretty cool. Still cool. Still cool. All this time later. We have a couple puppies in this fort. Bit of a puppy infestation. It's kind of horrifying, actually. Okay, never mind. I can't actually do this. The puppies are too busy following their parents. But we're going to process some plants, and we're also going to uh, make some cheese using our yaks. It's a lot of stockpile records to update there, dude. Do you want to practice a martial art? Hmm. You know, I think I could probably put the entirety of our base squad into the military. Let's just make a militia commander real quick. Hmm. I'm going to give it to Slippery John. It's actually pretty neat. It's just a largely up slash, like, like, convenience of life thing, right? I have no idea what these words are all doing. You're making doors. Okay, well, that's good. Someone has to. You think you're playing more tomorrow? Makes sense. When the Fire Nation attacks, puppies will be solved. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when the blob of fire who shoots flame made of flame with a trunk made of flame that undulates flamingly, arrives. That's it. As son is, uh, should be some kind of leader for a group of nature. <laughs> True. A lot of made-up dwarf fortress names can sound funny like that. All right. Is that uh, statue done yet? Yes, it is. Um, now, the question is, where, where do put I statue? Um... Maybe everybody needs the image of our fort in their bedroom. It is a terrifying image. We can put it next to the chains and bars. 
The better question is, why is there a dead bird in this doorway? I don't even have a cat. On the same engine, and you can swap between both. Oh, I, I love it when games do that. It's always fun. Oops. Yeah, that's always cool. I, I like it when remasters do that. Probably part of the reason that Dwarf Fortress gets mischaracterized as a remaster all the time. It's because the door is sky blue. <laughs> that's a funnier statement than it should be, and I feel bad laughing at it. <laughs> it's like, you know, birds flying into windows kind of deal. It's like morbidly funny. Like you kind of feel bad, but you can't help but cackle. You guys want to see one of the most well thought out Dwarf Fortress reviews I've ever seen? Hold on, let me just screenshot it. Obviously, you guys can go find it because it's the most recent one. It's one of the most thought provoking, intelligently worded, smart person reviews I've ever seen. There it is. <laughs> Somebody had to think for the first time while playing a video game. Oh my god, the horror. Thought-provoking? Yep. Oh, it provoked thoughts. What the fuck? I mean, I feel the same way. <laughs> you know, I, I, there, there's a weird part of me that's wanted to make one of those videos that's just, like, reading negative reviews of Dwarf Fortress. The thing is, I don't actually want to incentivize people making negative reviews. So I'm, like, stuck in, like, this weird hole of, like, man, that would be hysterical if I just made a video of me just reading a bunch of shitty reviews. But also, like, man, that would be really bad because maybe I would inspire more people to write shitty reviews. And I... Mm. All right, well, I have now acquired one piece of lignite. I need to make another wheelbarrow. Maybe two more even. Actually, let's just do this. Let's just make, eh, not 45, five. You wish you could play for the first time again? I feel that way about a lot of games. Dwarf Fortress included, actually. Although I don't actually wish I could play Dwarf Fortress for the first time again, because then I wouldn't have this channel. <laughs> and also, when I was properly learning Dwarf Fortress, uh, I was a very bad, crappy time in my life, so. Well, uh, would you be in a bad place if you spend your time writing bad reviews of one of the best games out there? Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you. Although, let's do Lemonite first, because it's above it. There we go. Let the smelting begin. And boom, done. I guess I could just make a wood furnace and go that route. Probably the way to do it, but I don't know. I kind of don't really want to use charcoal <laughs> because it is going to aggravate the caverns. Just kind of skimming around to see if there's any other lava pockets around. That or like, how much further down could lava really be? How did I get magma there? Uh, it was there. I just found it. I'm not actually joking. So um, these little 
Somebody in chat a while ago called them Kinder Surprise Eggs, and I've been calling them that ever since. These little gem clusters sometimes just have lava in them. Charcoal aggravates the caverns. Chopping down trees aggravates cavern creatures. Similar to on the surface. But I do have quite a bit of... Quite a, quite a lot of logs right now, so it's not a huge issue. What? Society flourishes when lawbreakers are punished. <laughs> well... At least the dwarves are uh, playing the part. Can demons pop out of those? A lot of fun things can pop out of those. I've seen them called Kinder Surprise Eggs, Fun Boxes, Death Traps, Noob Traps, Old Player Confusers. Nobody said that, I just made that one up, but... <laughs> Judge Dredd, Sounding Dwarf. I mean, the, the entire goal of this fortress is to build a giant prison. So yeah, Judge Dredd, indeed. That's going to be one of my... That's probably going to end up being my mayor's office. This is going to be Captain of the Guard's office. This is going to be Captain of the Guard's dining hall. And this is going to be a bridge connecting the two sides together. It's going to take a while for them to dig it out, but it'll be cool once it's done, I swear. What speech to text is he using, please? Are you asking because of my username? Because I'm visually impaired. I'm not completely blind. I'm not using any speech to text. And if you're asking about in like Twitch chat, um, that would be whatever Streamlabs uses. Prison for who? Eh. Crime committers. A thingy that writes what you say. Well, that's not speech to text. Um, go to Google and type in closed captions OBS. I'm sure you can find it. Pretty easy to find. It's an OBS plugin, which Twitch has a native support for. It just uses Google um, voice to text basically. I like that this dwarf just, like, dropped this boulder here. I just, like, gave up.
Yeah, no, I, 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 I figured it out. You need your ADHD drugs. You should take your ADHD drugs. Especially if they're prescribed. You shouldn't take them if they're not. But... If we're talking prescribed ADHD drugs, yes, you should absolutely be taking your ADHD drugs. No. I mean, if you need your own, then you need your own. You don't need somebody else's. I'm not your comrade, Rook. You are an audience member in my chat. It's not quite how that relationship there works. Exactly. What, what, uh, I struggle not to say your old username anymore. Um, for some reason still. What Antronax said. Also because your older name was easier for me to pronounce. <laughs> and I still have it as a nickname next to you. People who go changing their usernames, SMH. That's cool. You're a very strange person to talk with. So I would recommend restarting the way you, this conversation is going and being a more, how do I say this? I hate to say the word normal, person to talk with. Less of a pain in the ass? Sure. Less meme -y? Certainly. People don't speak like that. Less cringe? I mean, I guess you could say that. I mean, I'm clearly not the only person who feels this way, right? <laughs> Don't overthink it, pal. I ain't your pal, buddy. I ain't your buddy, friend. Uh, I have Coloboma of the retina and the iris in both eyes. I ain't your guy, buddy. Oh, all my chairs are completed. That's good. I am a streamer, though. So I can be your streamer, friend. You know, it's funny, I, I like I think I can count on one hand the number of times I've actually watched South Park <laughs> in any capacity, like period. I'm, I've never really been a South Park person. I've seen the South Park movie, so I understand the context for Blame Canada, but that's about it. I know that Kenny dies in every episode. <laughs> I've seen a handful of random episodes here and there, but I've never been much of a South Park person. Someone's getting criticized? You must just have really bad timing. I think this is like the first time this happened today. I mean, I've been live for seven hours and 17 minutes. The odds that somebody does something very strange and gets a bunch of question marks thrown at them uh, is pretty good. <laughs> Blame Canada was funny. Eh, most of that movie is pretty funny. Got a lot of good bits in it. Although I will say to any streamer who insists that the best content they ever created was of one of the South Park games, and by that I mean the recent RPGs, not that god-awful thing that was on the N64. Um, like, you know, the, wh wh whatever the fuck, the, uh, the, 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 the crack of something or another, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the great, I don't even. Um, I can't even remember the name of those video games, but to any, like, person who makes videos or streams on the internet who says that that is the best content they've ever made, congratulations, their content's extremely boring, because the only content you actually get from the game is the jokes the game makes itself. And you're officially now a React streamer.
Fractured butthole. That was it. Great device. I was close. I had the right idea. Wrong wordage, but... Did I embark directly into the cavern? No, I spent like an hour digging down into it through a really, 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 really big aquifer. It's actually a desert embark. And that's a save file. Broken but solid. There we go. Probably eat lunch and then take a nap, ice hockey player. I'm just guessing. No starting animals? Uh, where do you think all these fucking puppies came from? <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, I brought yaks. That's what I brought. Find a cavern and your yaks didn't starve. Hey, they weren't like my horse and my camel. <laughs> Do dwarves use the table in their room if it's assigned as a dining room and assigned to them? Yes. I had a camel and a horse, but they didn't make it. They almost made it. The camel made it like meters. Like it was like five stairways away or something. <laughs> camel still swimming? What? <laughs> I don't get the context for that. Oh, machine waters. No, the, that 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 camel drowned, didn't it? <laughs> Speaking of forts, I said I would finish and didn't. Machine waters. <laughs> I should check how the frames are on that port, actually. These aren't going to be bedrooms, by the way, though. These, these are actually just going to be offices. Just getting out and ahead because I'm going to need a lot of offices. All right, Napalm Sideburns Sheriff Sideburns, um, for short. It's going to get this stuck out, and this is going to be Napalm's office, and this is going to be Napalm's dining hall. And I need a lot more doors as well. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually done a deep embark, which is the DF hack command that lets you direct to like dive directly into caverns. I don't believe I've ever actually done that. This is a weird tower cap top. What? <laughs> Why does it have like a billion tiny caps on top of it? It's really weird looking. <laughs> Also, who's the least pop, the least happy dwarf in the fort? Napalm Sideburns is. Worried about the scarcity of cages. Okay, and chains. Well, we're working on that there, dude. Currently, I'm worried about the scarcity of hands that I have to complete all of these tasks that I'm being told to complete. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. I'm glad your biggest problem is cages. Here, what, here's what I will do. I will grab a rope, and I will make it into a prison. <laughs> Boink. There you go. You happy now? Actually, I think I'm pretty sure that's all he needs. One of one. Yep. Uh, we did get a migrant wave. We got two. Very small migrant wave. The problem is, is this embark happened on the... Well, because it scrolls two weeks forward. It started on week two of spring. So we missed the first trade caravan. And we missed the first guaranteed migrant wave. So we missed the guaranteed migrant waves, and we missed the the, the first trade caravan. Um, we got our second guaranteed migrant wave um, on year two, uh, and now I've traded. So we'll we should start getting migrants as of spring now. If you see off the fortress, yes, they'll just stand at the edge of the map, going, "Well, the fortress will still. Why why is doors locked? Please on un door lock. Please unlock door, please." I am his loss. Please unlock door. I showed you my doorway. Please respond. I 
want to do tower cap, cap floors, and then we'll do quartzite on the edges. Better question, if you sealed off the fort from the rest of the cave yet? Um, no. And I'm not going to. What makes you think I will? I mean, for starters, I don't have enough population for that to really be an issue. So it doesn't matter to begin with. I should actually put these doors in, though. Thought I was going to do that a while ago, and then didn't. From any fort? Fuck if I know. <laughs> I think probably the most memorable one because of uh, Valentine's Day today uh, is I had a scepter called the Pink Impaler made out of pink gems. But I don't know. Artifacts are artifacts. I get a billion of them. You know, okay. We'll just do it this way then. All right, that's in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm smart. And good at video games. Was that a crow? Is there a raven in the caverns? How did you get down here? Or sorry, not, not, not a crow. Is that a raven? Is there a raven in the caverns and how the hell did you get down here? Well, I, I didn't see it long enough, but. Fell moods aren't common because people are like good at the video game. <laughs> Fell moods are pretty common in um, Deep Space's fort because Deep Space insists on um, playing it on the line where the fortress is about to crumble at all times, which I respect. But even I don't play that way, right? Where you just like willingly accept that just horrible amounts of destruction could come into the fort at all times. Like I talk about leaving the fortress open to disaster. Wow, it is probably actually a raven. I talk about leaving the fortress open to disaster. Deep Space actually plays during constant disaster. Like, long story short, like, he'll just have, like, a dwarf die in the middle of his fort, and he'll be like, oh, that's a shame. Anyways, and then, like, four years later, that dwarf's ghost will still be there, and he'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> it's like, ha, what? Dude, what? You for real? It's, it's very funny. Sends golden tickets to disaster. Yeah, no, he tries to see how many ups, like maximum pissed off dwarfs he can balance without the fort collapsing. I mean, it's it's a very entertaining way to play, if you are like a end game dwarf fortress player where you finally cease to care about actually managing an efficient fortress. I sort of care. I care more than that. I just feel bad. I think is more the reality. Let's do a wood furnace right here. This is going to be my baby metal industry that isn't going to do much. And unrelated from the J-pop band. Is this going to cancel because all the puppies are standing on it? I swear. No? Okay. Okay. Basically, I'm just going to make one of each, and it's going to be a very slow build. And then once once I actually have some population, we'll go down to the lava sea and build a real forge. No oh, more chaos. Wonderful. I mean, I had a fort that we did for Halloween last year where I didn't memorialize a single dwarf. All bodies went into the lava, and I wanted to see how long I could 
balance the chaos. And it got to the point where that fortress, while it was ending, was literally just every 30 to 90 seconds, a dwarf would die to a ghost. Just constantly. It was like, dead. A couple minutes ago, dead. A couple minutes ago, dead. A couple minutes, it's just like, it just started to snowball at a point. It was something else. <laughs> I like uh, Japanese metal bands, but I do not like baby metal. I respect baby metal because they promote good Japanese metal bands, but I'm not a big fan of... Um, I'm not a big fan of idol culture, like, period, and I don't like that style of band when it's, like, four singers and a backing track or, like, five singers and a backing track or, like, four singers and two backing musicians and a back... That doesn't do it for me. No, I need a, I need a band fronted... If the if it's not a band, I I, I I don't care for it, really. At least when it comes to metal. Um, there's certainly types of music where I don't care, but baby metal just don't do it for me. I have no idea what that is. Black flag, redneck. I'm a fan of black flag. <laughs> All right, charcoal. That's what I was gonna do. Eh, maybe not 80. Let's do 40 charcoal. I'm not going to need too much. And um, I'm actually going to go to this stockpile and just remove the bars and blocks. And an ad break just hit chat. I'm going to go grab my lunch because it is 4.30 and my tummy is grumbling. I will be back in like, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes tops. I'm just going to go grab my sandwich. Japanese metal band. Not familiar at all. A Slipknot enjoyer? Yes, I do enjoy a Slipknot from time to time. Chat, talk amongst yourselves and behave yourselves, BRB. The streamer hath returneth. Obviously, I still need to turn the camera back on, but I've sat back down. Well, come on. This is this is my chat room, not the pulse of the maggots or whatever. As a fellow maggot, yes. I think I'm also going to stand up. Hold on. I don't eat countries. Nerds.
jokes aside, though, I barely ever eat meat during the week. So no, it's um same as yesterday. Avocado, fried onion, cheese, lettuce. That's it. Oh, uh, spicy mustard. It's got more than three ingredients. What are you talking about? Fine meals don't need meat. Fine meals just need three ingredients. Actually, technically, it's a lavish meal. Okay, so we got charcoal going. Which means I can make some pig iron bars, which we'll do. And that's going to take a while for them to haul it, but it's okay. That's set up and ready. Let's go down to here. This is going to be the uh, the sheriff, soon to be captain of the guards, quarters. Or rather, office. Which currently is just a single chain outside. But for those of you who missed the start of this fort, this is going to be a prison fort. The biggest, most valuable, most well-maintained part of this fort is going to be a prison. That tends to happen because, like, dad make or gives kid a lot of money and then is like, hey, go, you know, band, whatnot. Um, okay, who isn't named yet? So, Bonesaw, I've got Logan the manager or Zasset the miner. Who do you want? Those are your two options. Unfortunately, they're rather limited. You need to go to bed? All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Not a bad idea, actually. I'm puffing him. Okay, just let me finish eating my sandwich. And then I'll read this dwarf. Although, this dwarf was in the previous fort already. Yep. It'd be funny if this dwarf was friends with your past self. We actually experienced trauma in the past. Yeah, because you were in the old fort from 502. You know, having had... Okay, you know what was one of the most interesting meals I've ever had? This was a vegan meal, which is why I say it was interesting. It was a, like, rice dish. And it had marinated watermelon as like a fish texture replacement. They fucking nailed the fish texture. It was kind of crazy. Like they literally made watermelon mouthfeel wise mimic sashimi. It's kind of wild. Nothing, no. I mean, they are a legendary miner. What's funny is the gremlin in my fort had read more books than this dwarf. You know, I realize this is a typo in the YouTube chat, but somebody said, my millennial bran. Okay, so we all know what raisin bran is, right? What's millennial bran? I know it's a typo. Um, so, <clears throat> Logam Rope Wasp. Oh, that's a good name. Um, finds humor in most situations, often acts with compassion, doesn't seek out excitement, prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible, is very humble, and tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things. She tends to consider what others think of her after having her clothes rot off her body in 507 and occasionally overindulges. I did a really good job managing the last fort and you can't tell me otherwise, chat room. Needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time and doesn't really care about anything anymore. That was you before. There you go. <laughs> 
It contains Tide Pods, just avocado toast. True, like brand bread with avocado. You absolutely hate it when your clothes brought off your body. Yeah. <laughs> Personally finds the acquisition and use of power at Hornton would have all masters toppled, would have the world operate in, com in complete harmony without a without the least bit of strife or disorder, sees those that attempt to maintain a dignified and proper behavior as vain and offensive, values elo eloquence, and is put off by family, and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. And this dream was long realized. We were a previous member of the Metalsmiths Guild, the Armors Guild, and the Miners Guild. And you're now the manager, manager. Why are you manager twice? What? Broker and bookkeeper of the fort. Old pants are so comfortable, though. As somebody who's currently wearing a pair of jeans that are about 15 years old. Yeah, I agree. Be comfy. It's like the old t-shirt that I, for some reason, still have that I just insist on sleeping in now. Also, I'm going to move my manager up to here. And this would also actually allow me to do this, which is something else I kind of want to do with this fort, which is swap out the bookkeeper for somebody else. Let's actually give it to the expedition leaders so that you actually need an office. And Napalm Sideburns needs his office, which is going to go down here. So I will just assign that real quick. You have a 20-year-old t-shirt from freshman year of high, sc high school that you still sleep in? It's going to disintegrate someday. You know, if it does start to disintegrate, just stitch it up, cut the sleeves off, and make it into a pillow. Pro tip. From somebody who owns way too many band shirts. What's a leggy? Kind of actual question. Is it bad to double up the bookkeeper and manager? I always do it early game. Is it bad? Mm -hmm. If it is, I always do it. I'm just splitting them for funsies. It's like armies, but longer. Okay. Got it, I think. <laughs> ah. True. I mean, when Radu says things, you kind of just have to accept it's Radu saying things and not actually think about what Radu is saying. Because if you try and think about what Radu is saying, it's very confusing. So I, I've met Radu in, in real life, and uh, me and one of my mods were having a pretty consistent debate all the way to TwitchCon where we ended up meeting up with him about whether or not his accent was real. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I won't say who was voting in either in each direction, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and the dwarves work very hard, so they their clothes last shorter. I mean, their dwarves are short, so their clothes clothes are shorter. So thus, the clothes lifespan is shorter because they're shorter. But uh, in actuality, I, I would I would say that it's not that 
dwarves work very hard, so their clothes don't last as long. I would say it's more likely that dwarves simply don't have changes of clothes. Like, think about it this way. If you never washed or maintained any of your clothing and you wore the same clothing nonstop, including while showering, fighting, falling into mines, mining, getting completely covered in muck and bathed with your clothes on, imagine how long your clothes would last. Sounds like daily life for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just called working in like a um, in a job where you have an assigned uniform and not having time to do laundry every day. <laughs> is what's that called? Is what that's called? It's called having a corporate job with a uniform and not having time to do laundry. That that is actually what that's called. I speak with experience. It's hellish, by the way. <laughs> This has to still honestly be one of the slowest migrant milk buildups I've ever had in a fortress. And you're just sitting here making trickle. We we'll have to start building these dwarves a tavern soon. I'm thinking the tavern goes up here next to all the offices. And crafting all going to go down here eventually. Matter of, maybe I'll finally do the thing that I always say that I'm going to do in forts, which I never actually do, which is just start putting bedrooms literally everywhere. Actually, a lot of the cause of clothing disintegrating in Dwarf Fortress is fights. Because whenever armor, armor, whenever armor is damaged, um, it... Well, like, whenever armor blocks damage, it the armor takes the damage. Same with clothing. So if, like, somebody tantrums and punches a dwarf, it'll damage their clothes. Which is why if you read combat logs, you'll actually see some pretty anime-esque, like, clothing exploding off of dwarves. Because, like, you got punched in the stomach. It's like, dwarf gets punched in stomach. Clothing explodes off dwarf. Bedrooms literally everywhere sounds great. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I could just put a bunch down here on this lowest level. Put, like, a bedroom here. Uh, move, go. I mean, for, like, an open cavern fort, like, that's... I could put bedrooms along the top up here. I could put bedrooms over here. I could put bedrooms over here. I could put I could put bedroom over there. I could put a bedroom there. I could put a bedroom there. This could be a bedroom. See that? That, that could be a bedroom. Nope. It will not break your game. Although you can break your game with DF hack. <laughs> but uh, adding DF hack inherently like doesn't break. It's it's like running a dis it's it's like asking is running cheat engine on a computer something that can break your game? No, but you can break your game with cheat engine. Because cheat engine is literally the closest analog I have to the way DF hack works. Because they are the same type of software. Although DF hack is a lot more polished looking, but And I and doesn't give you malware. And I'm not certain that Cheat Engine doesn't give you malware in the current year. It very well might. Actually just gonna pause all these. So I have two more dwarves doing things around Z Foot. So I'm gonna pause this. What, broken your game with Cheat Engine? Shark jumping waters? I mean, like, don't don't use commands like Armok's Blessing, as an example. Which just, like, maxes out all of the traits of all of your dwarves instantly. Because if you save afterwards, yeah, your, your, your save is done. Well, not done, but it's just going to be that way forever. And unless that's something you want, eh. Maybe don't do that. Hope Fort Day has been fun. It's been good. I like how the captain of the guard is yelling at somebody in charge. I need more chains! 
Although, what are you upset about now? Decent meals. I mean... Air. I could just make a kitchen. What I really need to do is just make that tavern that I was saying I was going to make a minute ago and then, like, kind of didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up this. I'm going to dig out a good chunk of this, I think. A good chunk of this. I what shape this is going to take. Hi, Hobo, how are you? Yeet. Don't give yourself 100 million pigtail clothes for another example. Yeah, I would advise against that. Above ground crops underground. Some sort of sun lamp. If you dig a really big... Okay, so, like, I would have to dig a really big hole to do that here. But if you, like... Okay, so two life hacks about Dwarf Fortress, right? See here? Like, this is underground, technically. Because um, it's in a cavern, right? If I were to just channel all the way down and expose this to sunlight, I could grow above ground crops if above ground crops would grow here. Above ground crops won't grow, grow here, so it's completely redundant. Now... If I, me, streamer, were to, how do I word this? Uh, also, um, tell you another secret. You, you can dig out multiple layers like this. Sun goes through floors. So if you really want to cheat, you really want to grow above ground crops underground. Let's say you have a stairwell here, right? Well, let's say you go all the way up to the surface and you do this. You dig out two of these, right? And then you go two of these, and then you go two of these, and then you go two of these, two of these, all the way down, and you just make a little stairway go right next to it, you'll get two patches of grass growing underground, and you can grow two patches of um, above-ground crop, crops in your caverns. Yeah, no, so the way sunlight works in the game currently is bonkers and buggy as all fuck, but if you desperately are going, I want to grow stuff underground, that is a way that you can do it. Seems like a lot of work. It's less work than, like, getting lava to the surface, which is stuff I do every other fort. Your dwarves don't know how to make bread, so that's your first problem. Trust me, avocado is the least of your issues there. At least the dwarves are generally very happy right now. You also wish you could replant trees? They regrow on their own. Although tree saplings can get killed by stuff that walks over stuff all the time. Like, see all these? These are all saplings. All of these. So these are all going to turn into full-grown trees soon. But there is actually a reason you can't grow trees. It's because they're kind of like a free wall. I mean, if you play the video game Odd Realm, the developer had to, like, rebalance trees, like, four times because the meta for that game for a bit there was literally just plant a square of trees around your fort, and then you have an infinitely 100% impenetrable fort. Um. Oh, totally. I mean, like, I, I've done stuff like that before. Usually if I'm going to dig that far, though, I go all out, and instead I just actually channel all the way down and then put glass on top of it so that it's believable as a greenhouse. That's usually what I actually do. How are we doing on clothing, by the way? You know, I might actually just unforbid these. Go collect webs, please. And also, let's go down here and just say, yo, you, please process plants, thanks. Maybe don't actually do that on a uh, thing. Milk animal on repeat, make cheese on repeat. Get to it. And you're going to keep making pig iron bar. Like a dwarven greenhouse. Yeah, I mean, I I've done that before. I don't, us I don't use the if sun goes through floors thing because that that kind of goes against my brain. It, like it, there, there's, if it ruins my immersion, I don't do it. And that's something that ruins my immersion pretty badly. So 
All right, Stingray, you, you now have your own bed. I accidentally canceled that job. I didn't do that intentionally, but it was done in the manager, so it'll reassign itself. All right, uh, you need a dining room, you need a weapon rack and an armor stand, a chest and a cabinet. I'm just going to put a dining hall up here. Wherever the captain, oh there, it's, it's still listed as sheriff, not captain of the guard, and that's gonna throw me off for a long while, I think. I can't remember the last time I had a captain of the guard this early in a fortress. Instead of making walls and farming on the surface, why would you do... Uh, uh, just gonna let you know that blind that you're gonna have to do a long stream tomorrow. No, I'm not. I can't because I have a thing to lead, to to go to at six. So also just gonna let you know, Baka, you're not my boss. You have zero control over me and cannot tell me what to do. That's it. <laughs> also, you're a Baka. Glass. Bleh. Why do I have to do a long stream tomorrow? What did I miss? But no, I will be ending at five tomorrow. So I will be ending around now tomorrow. I'm just imagining like a pig-shaped iron. Whenever I see the words pig iron, I always think of like a like a clothing iron. It's kind of a funny mental image generally. I mean, I'm sure you could go to Walmart right now and buy a clothing iron that's pink. So, Lanix, thanks for the raid. Appreciate you. Hope your stream was good. Cast iron makes more sense. That's the term for it, so what can you do? Um, dwarf, what? <laughs> How did okay? I have a question. Very important question. How long has this dwarf been down here? What's your climbing skill? You don't have any climbing skill. I refuse to believe this. I'm <laughs> glad you didn't take that dwarf. I may have noticed they were stuck here sooner. What? D d there you go. Okay. Um. So. Oh, does it still use the original? I know that Jess was in here and she was saying that she was playing that too. Does it still use the original control scheme then? Why was the stream silent? Um... What do you mean, why was the stream silent? I'm confused. 
Rescue mission? Not much. I mean, it's more like notice. Th I think the dwarf was just climbing so that fortress overseer would notice and then like let them back in. Lanix's stream was. Uh, wait, hold on. Why? Why didn't you tell Lanix that their stream was silent if their stream was silent? <laughs> like, was Lanix muted the whole stream or something? Oh, you did. Oh. But then you're. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> well. But yeah, I, I I certainly know the feeling of being mildly miffed by uh you know cave system looks nice i'm quite happy with it about uh just things on stream not going as planned part of the reason i generally try games before i stream them now actually I think of Jess, have you seen her hair? Uh, she increased in power. Uh, no, I have not, actually. I know she raided me today, but. Did she go blonde or something? Is her power level way higher? Is, is, that where, is this like a Dragon Ball reference? Is that what's happening? <laughs> because no, I didn't see what the scouter said about her power level. Kind of, sort of, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't need to do that just yet. Most of the fort is still open. My expedition meter is just, leader is just constantly having meetings with the captain of the guard, which is kind of funny. What do I need to do for you? Need to f you want to fight specifically? Chat, what's the weapon of choice for this fort? Please don't say something that isn't makeable by me. Spear, hammer, hammer. Okay, currently made of steel, because I don't really want to make steel hammers. But maces are, are pretty cool. I haven't actually, have we seen Galena yet? I think the only Galena I saw was actually in the aquifer. <laughs> um, hmm. Slappy unarmed gauntlet's an option. I said weapon. Mace or hammer? Well, I've got steel, so... Hmm. Obsidian sword. That. Have you ever actually tried using those? They're only slightly better than wooden swords. Yeah, but it's funny. They're like a, you make this because you settled somewhere that has absolutely no metal weapon. Not bad for mass filling weapon traps. Yeah, I guess. I'd rather use like sand, make glass or something. <clears throat> I think I might just go with axes. Let's make axes. Let's just go with axes. Why not? Why not axes? I haven't done axes in a while. I've done a lot of swords. I've done a lot of spears. I haven't done axes. But I think I'm going to do axe axes. Speaking of, True Freak is getting the axe again.
<laughs> yeah, Jade's a gem. Why, do they make weapons out of jade? Actually, now that I think about it. Good morning, Stone. This has been a very slow progress for it. Hope you snoozed good. Oh, I'm still making floors, duh. Got to bed an hour before you started. Damn. That's a rare occurrence. Bored, bored after a lack of abstract thinking for too long. I'm kind of thinking abstractly about making my prison on this side double up as a library. So I'm kind of looking at this central room and going, wouldn't it be pretty cool if there was like a library around here? I think that would be pretty cool. I think that'd be really cool actually. You went through a lot of effort to find obsidian in one of your first few forts because you thought obsidian weapons would be cool. Imagine you're surprised when they were not cool. You know what's cool to do with obsidian? Making obsidian gems. That is actually my favorite thing to do with obsidian because they make pretty cool looking like large gems, but obsidian is probably my least favorite material in the game because I think it's way too dark of a color for this tile set. I like it in classic, but in this tile set, it looks like assets are missing to me. Uh, although that's partially because I keep my, my um, monitors at minimum contrast on minimum brightness, right? So it's like, they're really, 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 really dark color that just feels wrong in the game's color palette. So I, I actually really don't like obsidian outside of using them for like encrusting stuff. A wooden spear is a, is a pointy stick. Wooden weapons also have absolutely no use in the game right now, which is a shame. I personally feel that, um, I personally feel that we need a an old feature to make a return to the game. Um, I think we need training injuries to return to the game and training uniforms to return to the game, but the UI needs work and the game needs mechanical under the hood work before that can happen. Got some dogs growing up, which means it's time to do the thing that'll make the viewer from earlier's daughter cry, probably. I wanna do, okay, where do, where do I wanna do kitchens, actually? Maybe up here? Hmm. This would actually be a really good farming area instead of down in here. Training injuries. So when you train with a weapon, there's a chance that you'll stab yourself with different weapons having different risks. Like as, as an example, the first time you use nunchucks, it's like an eight out of 10% chance that you smack yourself in the side of the face and give yourself or give yourself a bloody nose or a black eye. Um, and that's what training injuries are. Dwarf Fortress has training weapons. It has wooden weapons with the idea that you would use them for training. But because sparring is 100% non-lethal and there's absolutely no chance of your dwarves taking damage while sparring, there's 0%, there's a zero reason to use them whatsoever. So because there's absolutely no reason to use them, there's no reason for them to exist in the first place. I think right now I'm literally just gonna put a butcher shop right here. I'm not gonna slaughter all of them, don't worry too, too much, but I am gonna start slaughtering them.
Do we even have a craft store shop set up right now? I think I can make some bone crafts. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of different things they could do. And some of these mechanics, like I said, sort of used to be in the game. <clears throat> All right, so chat room, cross your fingers and hope that I get a migrant wave now that it's spring. Because if I don't get a migrant wave, I'm going to start getting worried. Because I really hope we get a migrant wave and I really hope the population goes up to like 20%. 